my screen. Boom, there we go. Hey everyone, welcome to the live. Hello, awesome. Hi, hi everybody. 22 people here right off the bat. Good to see you all. Uh, could anybody hear what I was saying or was it just uh, like completely dead? Because I was talking for like a minute while it was a black screen. Not sure if you could hear what I was saying. Man, hey everybody. So good to see you all. Black screen, yes. Nothing, okay, cool. Very good. No audio. It was quiet and blank, but can everybody hear me now? Is there is there currently audio? Audio. Yeah, it looks like the mic's working. Not now, just earlier. Okay. Thank you, Donkey Defense. So reliable. All good. All right. So in today's live, uh, I'm going to give this a shot once on the weekend. I'm going to probably do it again on a weekday evening just to see if anybody gets value out of this, see how many people show up. Uh, if it's something that you guys want to see more of, I'll definitely keep doing it. Just kind of experimenting with it now. Give you guys a direct line to me. So if there are any questions that you guys wanted to ask me about anything that's ever happened on the channel, any of my videos, uh, anything specifically to concealed carry, to red dots, to shot show, to my opinions on you know, any firearm or anything in the industry, or you want to ask me about like my nerdy stuff in the background, feel free. All those topics are completely on limits. They are green light go. Uh, but in the meantime, I will uh, do a couple of quick channel announcements that are really cool. Will this be available later? Yes, it will be. Yep. So this should be recorded and uploaded to YouTube and you can watch the whole thing later if you're currently busy. Um, announcement number one, I already had the ammo sponsor true shot. They send me just kind of a couple boxes of any caliber that I need here and there. It helps out the channel, especially like I might be doing a video on 308 coming up. I, my revolver stuff, 38 special 357 mag, that ammo is really expensive. So if they can send me one or two boxes of 357 mag, that really helps. But that also applies to nine millimeter. So I was only getting like a couple of boxes, but have a new ammo sponsor that I'll be announcing on the channel, an actual manufacturer that they're going to be sending me 500 rounds a month, which is going to allow me to do a lot more uh, like concealed carry drills and comparisons. You know, how much of a difference does this gun make? You know, red dot versus no red dot. Uh, does the way you grip a gun make a difference? You know, thumbs forward versus teacup versus holding your wrist. See, actually on a timer and on a drill, how much of a difference it makes. So really looking forward to that. Um, also, uh, I think in this video, I'm going to address my evolving opinions on red dot sites. I might do a dedicated video, but I kind of want to, you know, discuss it here first. Make sure I'm caught up on chat. Yeah, sweet. Interested in revolvers too. Yeah, if you have any revolver questions, feel free to throw them out. I'm going to keep an eye on chat. So any questions that I see that pop up uh, that... I want to answer. Um, I'll be sure to get to those. Um, this is, you know, a Q and A, and the Q stands for question. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about my opinions on red dot sites really quick, uh, because I get so many questions. Even though I've done a couple of videos on it, do I need a red dot for my pistol? And <laughs> Brett is the revolver nerd, final boss, only second to Masada Yub. Yes, Masada Yub is like that hidden optional boss that is like a thousand times harder than any other boss in the game. Maybe Clint Smith too. He, uh, he knows his way around a wheel gun. Uh, so with red dots, do you need a red dot on your pistol? Absolutely not. Uh, that, that was the whole deal with those, you know, bright front sights, you know, like the orange front sight, the green front sight, all the people wanted that bright front sight, even the, you know, something like a brass sight that reflects light. And it was in order to shoot target focused a lot like a red dot. So people have been using iron sights like a red dot for a long time and obviously clapping bad guys and unfortunately good guys for a long time with red dot or with uh, iron sights. So no, you do not need one. Is it an advantage? It's a slight advantage. Just like adding anything to your pistol at all. It's a slight advantage. Um, 
So what maybe with the exception of stuff like, you know, a weapon light being able to identify a target in the dark. Um, outside of that, you can shoot a gun without grip texture. You can shoot a gun without a red dot. You can shoot a gun without sights completely. Everything, you're just adding up a bunch of small advantages for different situations. And I think that a red dot um, does allow a sig well, a slight but impactful difference. Um, I'm going to hit some comments here, and then I want to talk about kind of what my favorite red dot has become. Uh, what do you recommend for a first concealed carry gun for a very active person? I was thinking of the P365XL as I have above average size hands. Let's see if I can, I think I pop you up there. Boom. Hey, there we go. <clears throat> uh, above average size hands. Uh, I would say the P365 and 365XL, those are really, really thin grips. Uh, they're great guns, thin grips. Um, I would take a look at the uh, X macro. Uh, maybe like build out an X macro with a standard 365 length slide. Um, if you're active, you want to be able to bend over, you know, jump over things. Um, I would also look at the, this is kind of a spoiler coming up. I'd take a look at the Smith and Wesson shield plus because this has like front to back space. So if you have bigger hands, it fills more of your hand and allows some of that space on the side to be used for your support hand grip. Um, so if you're looking, if you're super active, um, and you're going to be doing exercising and bending over, and like I said, you know, hurdling over obstacles, things like that. Um, and also maybe you're probably going to be carrying without a belt. You'll want a lighter weight gun. I would look at the shield plus, and I would look at the X macro with a standard P365, uh, length slide. Another one to look at is the Glock 43X and Glock 48. <clears throat> Those are kind of smaller grips as well, but still, I think a larger circumference than the standard XL and 365. So that would, that'll kind of hopefully gives you a good jumping off point. Hopefully you can go into a gun store. Hopefully you have one nearby and you can hold the different ones right now. Honestly, I'm like, I'm pointing more people in the direction of the shield plus every day. Um, I just think it, I think it has a lot to offer. The only downside is it doesn't have a, uh, um, a rail to put a weapon light on there. That's like my only downside with the shield plus, uh, what else we got? Um, oh uh, yeah. If you have any, any other questions about that, if I didn't answer anything, just, uh, add another comment, just finished reading armed instinct. Let's pop this up. Pew. Does your girlfriend wife have a katana? I did my unboxing of STR nine MC today, but sent it back yesterday is still hitting high, even with rear sight bottomed out. Yeah. You know, it's, I I've kind of come to accept that every single gun, is likely to have issues. <laughs> it's like, I've just kind of tempered my expectations anytime I buy a gun where I'm like, okay, yep, I'm, I'm rolling a dice, uh, whether or not this is going to have issues. And yeah, that STR nine MC. Yeah. You bottom out the rear sight. It's still hitting high and you, you know, with different ammo, I, that's something I would definitely send it back. I'm sure they'll take care of you. They might even send you just a completely new gun altogether. Uh, those companies that ship from like over from Turkey, a lot of times they just have them sitting in the warehouse. It's cheaper to just send you a new one than it is to try to figure it out on their own. Uh, and no, my wife did not have a katana, but I do. And she knows how to use it. Uh, okay. What else we got? Oh, Hey, what's up? Uh, well, the passing of Gaston Glock with the, with the passing of Gaston Glock, what would you like to see as far as innovation with the Glock line in the near future? Great to see live Q and a. Well, it's great to see you live. Um, been a while since we chatted we should, we should catch up. Um, what innovation would I like to see from Glock? Uh, grip texture. I'd like to see, I'd like to see grip texture on Glocks. Um, sorry for the short answer, but it's like the only thing I want to see. Um, just get a tight shoots fanny pack and then you can carry whatever you want. Yeah. Check out tight shoots. They make great fanny, fanny packs for carry. They have a really cool, like magnetic taco shell system to protect the trigger guard that kind of Velcros in there. Um, I, if I were going to carry in a fanny pack, which I won't because my wife won't let me wear a fanny pack and I care what she thinks about me. Um, I'd, I'd get a tight shoots fanny pack. Massad gives a men's perspective from what I've seen about revolvers. I'm assuming not much available for women with hand issues and IWB, usually too snappy and not even six rounds Yeah, If you have any specific questions, maybe you've already asked now, uh, if you have any specific questions about revolvers, uh, feel free to ask them. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, because you know, obviously my wife is a shooter as well. So I do get to see the women's perspective on firearms, you know, through her, because anything I get, she's also a shooter. She shoots too. Um, 
Yeah, because carrying IWB a revolver as a lady, there are certainly ways to do it. If you have, you know, any questions about that, you want to me to go more go go more in depth uh, on holsters and clips and stuff like that, how you can carry in which revolver, uh, feel free to ask. P365 grips are thinner in diameter. That yeah, exactly. Shield Plus to go all day long. Yeah, you know it's up absolutely because Shield Plus is your current EDC. Very nice, man. Uh, a solution for the Glock knuckle. Yeah, this is a thing. Um, this is this is like a real thing. I have just built up such an insane callus. You can probably even see I have like a bump. I have a bump on my finger there permanently <laughs> uh, from I've gotten so much Glock knuckle. It's just a callus, a callus, a callus, a callus, a callus is built up. That might just be what it takes. Uh, if you don't shoot super often, if it's not really your thing, then putting a Band-Aid on that knuckle before shooting can help. Uh, I will also say getting it cut, uh, getting an undercut, like a deeper undercut in your Glock or whatever gun, because there are some guns this is just the closest thing to me. You can see how the Shield Plus does a deep undercut there. If you look at the bottom of the trigger guard and then go all the way back to the grip, you can see that big empty space there. Um, that really helps getting rid of the Glock knuckle. So yeah, on Glock, maybe that's another innovation from Glock, right? Let's see, not only grip texture, but also uh, some undercutting because Glock knuckles uh, is a real thing. You split open your knuckle. I mean, uh, people who don't know about Glock knuckle just don't shoot enough. Uh, what else we got? I'm digging my compact dagger with the upgrades you have on. Yeah, I have a micro dagger headed my way. So uh, finally, looking forward to reviewing that, seeing what I think of the micro dagger. Because uh, I reviewed the micro dagger magazines and I had good luck with those. Them TSAS 2011s are live. Yeah, I've been seeing them around. I am waiting on a call from my local shop. Uh, I'm specifically, I want to get the, uh, the the Mac, right? Like the, the 2011 style. Um that is being imported by SDS because I think that has the biggest potential. The TSOS 2011s, if I see one, I'll get one. Uh, these budget 2011s are easy enough to buy and they, they hold their value really well. So I'm not hesitant at all about testing them on the channel. Uh, Bursa 1911. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll get one when I can. I might actually try to get a T&E on that one. Uh, obviously the biggest concern is it's filled with MIM parts. And for those of you who don't know, that's metal injection molded parts. And there's just questions about durability when it comes to MIM parts. They're mostly fine, but it's easy to mess them up. So, and if you don't do them right, they can break. The good news is they typically break pretty fast. So as long as you vet your stuff for reliability, it's not an issue, but I'm interested that the ones at the show, the Bursa 1911s were fit really well. How did you feel about the MR 920 P at the show? Um, at SHOT Show. Uh, I felt it was okay. Um, yeah, it was fine. I, I didn't really have any complaints about it. I I prefer different kinds of comps, more effective comps on pistols than what Shadow Systems is putting out. Uh, I think it's going to be a good gun though. I didn't have any issues with it. I shot it at range day. It functioned fine. It feels good. It's, you know, nothing crazy. It's not this giant compensator. Uh, Sig X5 Legion. Oh yeah. Right on, man. You mentioned you like the new PDP steel frame compact. Do you think it's carryable despite the weight? Do I think it's carryable? Dis I mean, like, do you know what I carry daily? I carry massive crazy stuff. Uh, so I would have no reservations about carrying it. Uh, as long as you have a good belt and a good holster, you can, and you know, you, you don't mind the weight uh, that does help support the weight. You can carry whatever you want. Like I've been carrying full size pistols for, I want to say two years. I kind of inched my way up. Um, if anybody wants to hear about kind of like my concealed carry journey, you know, just ask me in the comments. If things die down, I can dig in, dig into my history of concealed carry. Uh, fanny pack and tight jeans all day. That's what donkey defense is about. Um, although maybe shorts, not jeans. Those bull armory tax are impossible to buy. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but the five inch ported tax went live. I think, uh, what was that a week or two ago? And everybody was freaking out buying them. That was an exciting thing to see them go live. But I have a suspicion. I don't have any proof, but I have a suspicion that the reason the, I mean, bulls have always kind of been difficult to find, but the reason the tax are really hard to find right now, I suspect they might be getting ready to roll some other stuff out. I don't know when it could be in the next, you know, year, two years, three years. I don't know. 
I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, they they are probably working on some different stuff. That's just that's my speculation as to why they're impossible to buy. Uh, I read Ohio State Police are going to PDPs. I have not read that, but I'm not surprised. They probably got them super cheap, and they're not bad. They could do they could seriously do much worse than a PDP. Do you have a preference for plus P variants versus stand? Oh, I see. These are my kind of questions, guys. These are the, this is the min maxing our concealed carry bills that I builds that I really enjoy. Um, it depends. Uh, I, so there are two self-defense loads that I particularly like. One is going to be the federal HST 124 grain plus P. And number two is going to be the federal HST standard pressure 147 grain. Those are my two favorites. Uh, the 124 standard pressures are also good. And Spear Gold Dot 124 plus P's are also good. So those are kind of my nine millimeter recommendations for, you know, kind of standard use. I have different recommendations for people who struggle with arthritis or have weaker hands. But those are my, you know, if you're just like a normal, normal, you know, strong person, that's what I recommend. But my preference for plus P in that 124 loading is that it still gets very good penetration, but that little bit of extra velocity uh, ensures more consistent expansion and will allow it to expand to its maximum diameter of the hollow point at that velocity going through tissue and getting that great penetration. So yes, I do have a preference for plus P variants. Um, I also have a preference for hot, hot, hot 357 Magnum. Uh, over carrying kind of like your store bought 357 mag um, and same with 38 special. So anyone wants to ask questions about that, feel free. I just don't want to like waste your time talking about stuff you don't care about heading into work. We just wanted to say, I love the content, man. Take care. Sorry. You have to go to work on Saturday, but I appreciate you. I, I love your comments. So keep it coming. STR nine MC super efficient size weight ratio capacity was fully reliable. Yeah. That's the thing is that Stoger was super reliable. Uh, also going to look at the budget option of the X macro, see how that is. New 357 and two, nice man. I like that 357. I like turtles. I have the money, but can't find one single bull armory 2011 to buy anywhere. I feel you, man. Uh, they're going to shut you down on live. I hope not. I think I'm still live. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> YouTube. Hi, I recommend your channel a lot. Thank you so much. I, uh, that, that means a lot. I put a lot of work into the channel. So I enjoy being able to reach a lot of people and help as many people as I can, uh, especially when there are just so many shills on YouTube. I just want to make sure you guys are getting an honest consumer point of view on a lot of this stuff. Um, and also like not a tactical dude. I just, I'm just a dude with an iPhone that got really good at shooting pistols. Um, any news on the Staccato C? Yeah, uh, I heard that it had issues um, on the live fire range that no one's talking about. But I also talked to the people at Staccato and they said they're not going to release it until it's 100%. So yeah, just a matter of they're working out the kinks right now. Uh, so I would guess as soon as they can. If I were just a betting person, I'd bet probably May. Uh, we'll see. I, other than that, it felt great in hand. I, I, think, I think it has some serious potential. The only bummer is obviously switching out magazines. Uh, SAS2 Tech Pro and didn't notice any hot spots after shooting 250 rounds. The magwell pin stuck out a bit and may hurt your, your little tummy during carry. What areas were you concerned with? So uh, I don't want to point a gun that's definitely not loaded on YouTube around. Um, so this is another gun that I have in the works right now, Springfield Prodigy. So the hot spots that I was talking about on the bull armory were this spot right here uh, at least on mine they didn't round that corner as much as they could but the biggest spot was actually on the grip safety pet hair uh the grip safety ring oh this is hard to do right here that little pokey out right there even on the prodigy they rounded off but on my uh, bull armory they did not i do agree with you about the uh, mainspring housing pin though that does stick out. Now, keep in mind, those were not hot spots that I had. Just one of those things, you, you know, you hand it to your wife, hand it to your dad, hand it to your buddy who doesn't shoot very often and they, you know, complain about hot spots. So, a 1911 preference bull SAS tack, I'm assuming 4.25, uh, platypus, staccato P, other range toy, and for tactical training class, and for tactical training classes. Um, I'd say those are my, those would be my top three. 
Um, I'd say if you're locked in, if you have like a ton of Glock magazines and you don't have the budget to buy a crap ton of 2011 magazines that are expensive, then just go with the platypus. It, it's, I, I haven't reviewed it yet. Did get my hands on it. Know a lot of people who have run it, nothing but good things to hear about it. I hear that the impulse is kind of a little sharper than on the Staccato P and the Bull, probably because it doesn't have the polymer grip frame. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I kind of want to hold off on my opinions until I do the review on the channel, thoroughly vet it. But those would be my top three that I would recommend, assuming you don't have like Atlas Gunworks money. Um, uh, you, you can't go wrong. I think it depends on what magazine ecosystem you want to enter into. If you know you're going to buy a lot of Bull Armories, you know, go Bull. If you know you're going to buy a lot of Staccatos or just 2011s in general, get a Staccato. Uh, kind of my blanket recommendation is just Staccato. It's, you know, made in America, best warranty on the planet. Um, magazines are kind of easy to find now. And I don't know if you guys know, but Checkmate, the magazine manufacturer, is making the OEM mags for Staccato. Met them at SHOT Show, and now they're selling them just through Checkmate. So you might be able to save a couple of bucks buying uh, actual OEM magazines just through Checkmate. Uh, yeah, like I said, if you're into Glock mags, Platypus all day. Stealth Arms is a great company. Tech Pro 5-inch. Uh, were you one of the ones who got the 5-inch? Uh, it was incredibly smooth and fast on the range. I'm a novice shooter and was able to rapidly put rounds on target 5 to 10 yards with almost no misses. My man or woman. Don't want to judge. Uh, recommendation for a trigger for a Glock that makes a difference but doesn't cost too much. Uh, man, I the second I post this question right here, look in the comments because everybody's probably going to give their two cents. Um, I think you could get by with just, I have to be careful about talking about this on YouTube. Um, but I would say, do your research about what connector to change in your gun. And you could just keep your standard trigger shoe. If you don't like the trigger shoe, I would look at overwatch precision. That's kind of, if I'm swapping a shoe, I'm going for that one. Um, yeah. Cause obviously Johnny Glocks is my preferred Glock trigger, but you get what you pay for. History of your CCW. Uh, I, man, a lot of, how, how many questions am I? Okay, I'm, I'm a little behind. So uh, I'm going to circle back to that one because that's going to be a longer one. I want to make sure I get to get to everyone. But thank you for asking. I something I, I'm probably going to just do a full video on that at some point. Uh, I've got the Bull M5, the OG 4.25 cross compatible mags. If anyone's seriously interested, no, don't talk about that on YouTube. Um, how often do you recommend a beginner should go to a range and how many rounds? Yeah, okay, so if you are beginning shooting, uh, this is hard as much as possible, right? Like I, when I got really good, I was living, well, not really good. When I started to get, I was really good. When I started to get phenomenal, I lived right across the street from the Scottsdale Gun Club and I was there every single day. And while I was stuck to an indoor range and an indoor lane, it allowed, allowed me to hone my marksmanship skills and I was allowed, obviously, to rapid fire because uh, I don't live in a FUD area, but that really allowed me to hone it in. But the one thing I will say, if you are a beginner, the more you're there, the better, but it's not going to do you any good if you're not applying good technique. So I would make sure you're squared away. If you don't have the money to, to you know, take a class, which if you take a class, be sure to thoroughly vet the instructor, make sure they are up to date on the latest trends, because there are a lot of dudes out there teaching stuff from 20 years ago that is good enough to clap a bad guy, but it's not going to be to your biggest advantage. So I would make sure that you vet an instructor, uh, take a lesson, and then apply what you learn from that instructor, from that class, whatever. Make sure you're applying that as often as you can. Uh, every day is ideal. Every day is not practical for most people. Um, if you don't have the money for an instructor and you just kind of want to get to know Look, or there's so much great free information on YouTube about shooting technique. You want to look at like Jerry Mitchellick stuff, like find people who are actually amazing shooters, um, like actual competition shooters and the, just absorb the free information from them. You will learn so much. Be really careful taking instruction from Tacta Bros because, uh, you know, one out of every 100 of them actually understands how to shoot a pistol. So I would stick with famous competition shooters who are offering free information and apply it. Uh, if you, oh yeah. So anyways, to go back to your question, uh, how many rounds I'd say box of ammo minimum 50 rounds, uh, and go as often as you can. If that's once a week, great. If that's once every other week, fine. If you can go twice a week, that's awesome. You don't have to be there long. It doesn't take you long to get through a box of ammo just to make sure you're keeping with it. Dry fire practice is going to be your best friend because it doesn't cost you anything. Just make sure you do it safely. 
Uh, if you don't have a staccato or bull armory SAS2, what would be your option for concealed carry? Okay, so like if I'm not carrying a 2011, what would I carry? Oh, um, probably a Langdon Tactical Beretta 92. Uh, if not that, whew, probably a Smith & Wesson M&P, some variant of that with an Apex trigger. 147 HST, my man. Uh, what's your first option optic for CCW? <laughs> the Hollow Sun 507 comp. It's a huge window. Some people think that, you know, that big dot is not going to be good for concealed carry, but the advantages that it offers are insane. It's durable enough for concealed carry, more durable than the SRO. Uh, so if you're carrying like a compact full-size gun, 507 comp, if you're carrying a slimline gun, Hollow Sun EPS carry. Easy question. Hello, first time catching you live. Well, it's my first time catching myself live as well. Uh, goes without saying, but thanks for the great content. You're so welcome. I'm, I'm just honestly glad. Thank you for your opinions and content. Love your channel. Thank you. Your honesty is the reason I'm here. Thank you, man. Um, I Like I said, I put a lot of work into this channel and it, I just Seeing the appreciation makes it feel like I'm not just uploading my stuff into the abyss. I uh, just ordered the Hunter Constantine belt based on your review. Excellent belt. If he can find a way to make the uh, attachment kind of like a quick detach instead of like this hook fishing for the loops, he's going to have the best hands down the best belt ever made. That is, it is truly a great, comfortable, sturdy belt that can is a jack of all trades. It can do anything. What are some of your favorite drills that have been most impactful on improving your shooting? Uh, start with the build drill. Uh, I And don't do the build drill that everybody does on the internet that's at like, you know, three yards. And then they claim it's at seven yards. Actually measure it off and shoot a seven yard build drill. That is, uh, beep, timer goes off, six shots in the A zone as fast as you can. That's a great place to start. From there, I like the five by five drill. That's basically just um, a slightly more demanding build drill. Uh, you can you can Google the target and, and it's great. Also, I really like the fast drill, uh, F-A-S-T. You can Google that target as well. That is beep from the draw, two shots in a square, reload from slide lock, four shots in a bigger circle. Uh, this is gonna teach you everything you need to know. I equate it to you're learning how to ski or snowboard and you go to like, you know, like, like a black, like, like a diamond run. And you just like fall down the hill 10 times until you figure out how to ski or snowboard. It's, I, I, it's a trial by fire. Just make sure you're squared away on your technique for holstering and uh, drawing so that you don't shoot yourself. Uh, yeah. Oh, and obviously like the tier one concealed three sevens drill. If, if you do that drill on video, if you get the patch or the coin, you are, you are hundred percent good by me. Like I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. Uh, getting that coin is still one of my largest shooting accomplishments. That was very hard. I heard Glock is getting ready to release the gen six, basically gen five with finger grooves. <laughs> I would not be, so I don't think that would surprise anybody. Uh, do you try the CCW hybrid battle belt of Neo mag? And what is your, what are your thoughts? I have not tried that, but my thoughts are, I think it's promising. I'd like to try it. Uh, any more video game guns? Uh, what like, videos coming up of video game guns. I don't maybe probably the revolver stuff like the, you know, hand cannon, that would probably be the next thing coming up. I definitely want to do more of that though. It just doesn't do very well for some reason. Uh, I still need to tap into that nerd gun culture that is playing, you know, video games and watching streams on YouTube. I, YouTube needs to show my videos to them. And then like my samurai edge video is starting to pick up. Someone must have done some sort of samurai edge video and it's recommending it. Um, can't handle a gun on a live YouTube chat. Really? What? I thought that was only on Twitch. Oh, well, uh, I'm still going folks, so they can't stop me. What's your opinion on three o'clock outside the waistband CCW? I carry appendix, but I compete OWB. So I kind of want to go OWB all the way. If you can conceal it, I say, go for it. Um, the only problem is a lot of people need to cover up at three o'clock outside the waistband for concealed carry with a cover garment, like a, you know, jacket or an overshirt or something like that it slows down your draw. So I would just be aware of that. Uh, also be aware that you can't protect your gun as well as you can from appendix. One of the thing, one of the reasons I like appendix is just practicality. If you're in a crowded area, you control who is contacting your gun. But if you're in a crowded area and it's at three o'clock or behind the hip, you know, you might accidentally clunk into someone like, you know, crash into some like, you know, eight year old kid's head clunk. 
Um, so I like having control over. So just know you're losing the advantages of appendix, which is if you practice, 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 you can be faster than uh, three o'clock. Just keep in mind, you still have to clear the cover garment. Um, so yeah, I have no reservations about that carry however you want. Um, the only thing I don't really recommend is small the back carry. Um, I think that's the only one I don't really recommend. Even cross draw has its applications, especially with ladies. Um, let's see here. Any thoughts on the FN reflex or have you been able to look at one? Yes, it is insanely overpriced for what it is. And the internal hammer fired system gives it a terrible trigger. Probably that trigger. Boom. There you go. Uh, I am so going to get a staccato XC in a couple months. Absolutely, man. Get it. What self-defense 357 mag load do you recommend in a K frame that is safe as well as what is the preferred 38 special load? Okay. So it depends on the K frame, right? Like, uh, well, this is a 586 L comps. This is an L frame, but like, obviously they make the carry comp. Nope. I held it up. That, that, that was airsoft. That was, that was a gun in Minecraft. Um, so the, uh, a K frame, Ah oh, man, I, I the heavier the bullet, the better, right? So like 158 grain 357 mag is going to be safe. If it's an older K frame that has the flat forcing cone, uh, if you have one of the newer ones that has the round forcing cone, like that airsoft gun I just held up, um, then you can shoot whatever you want. Like I run like the the Buffalo bore 125 grain, like heavy loads, absolute screamers. The Barnes Tac XPD. Uh, 125 grain is also really good. So in my, uh, old K frame, I'll carry those 125 grain Barnes tech XPD rounds. They're not as heavy as the Buffalo board. And I know I can probably get through six rounds without blowing up my gun. Uh, so yeah, to play it on the safe side, you could carry, you know, the, the 142 grain, the 158 grain, the heavier, the better 38 special is going to, Oh, I'm gonna have to, ooh, I'm gonna have to look off the top of my head. It's the, um, Winchester Ranger plus P, whatever that is. Uh, that's the one, uh, man, the, over a hundred people in here, guys, I'm getting through these comments best I can. MP seven, the Tommy built TP M TP seven thoughts. Uh, I think it looks promising. Again, I'm going to kind of reserve my thoughts until I can actually shoot one. A lot of people handle this stuff, but they don't shoot it. Uh, but I think, no, I think it looks cool. Have you tried the echelon? Yes, I have. It is punchy. It needs a DPM reco reduction system. Uh, this is great advice for the person who asked about the Glock trigger. Um, abolish the ATF. Yes, but can't just do that because then the FBI takes over and we're even worse. Uh, can't say because I'm working. I want to thank you for all the unbiased reviews. I did learn a lot. Oh, thanks, man. So nice. I also just bought a TAC Pro 5-inch. It's still on the way to my FFL. How would you compare the recoil impulse to a 20, of a 2011 to a 5-inch striker gun like an X5 Legion? Uh, it's usually better. Um, X5 Legion, especially like the P320s have pretty chonky slides. So yeah, I think you're really, really going to love it. What compromises do I need to make to feed my ongoing HK fetish? <laughs> do buy as many as you can. What your build your time with a Draco instant. I have like aim bot aim. I just turn around and it's not even a build drill. build drill in the A zone on the head with the Draco. Why isn't the USP your carry choice over bread 92? It boils down to, well, keep in mind. Not Beretta 92, a Langdon Tactical Beretta 92. The Langdon Tactical can do more with the trigger on a Beretta than they can on an HK. Um, that is just a fact. On top of that, uh, the I don't know, just more updated features. I know you can get the USP optic cut now, but you still have to get a rail adapter and stuff like that. Uh, Beretta 92, heavier gun, also holds down recoil impulse. USP is not a bad choice by any means. Um, like I, I would carry a USP every day of my life. If someone was like, you know, Gun to your head. You have to carry USP every day of your life. I would do it in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even be upset about it. Hoping for a bowl this year. I wonder if the war changed our production. I'm not sure, honestly, because uh, honestly, they're like always geared up <laughs> for war. So I, I don't know. Uh, you made so many videos on the, it's because I love the USP. I adore the USP uh, because HK hates you. Yes. Uh, do, do, do. As a smaller handed dude who didn't just want a Glock, is Daniel Defense H9 a crazy pick for my first gun? Uh, I'm going to, hesitantly say that you're, it's going to feel good in your hands. I don't know how it's going to shoot or how it's going to function, but it's going to feel great in your hands. That's, I think it's going to be a great option for smaller handed people. Um, do, do, do. So you'd be yeah, as undershoot shirt and button up shirt going over it. Yeah. That would allow you to clear it very quickly. Um, so as long as you're committed to wearing that every day, then you are good to go. Um, also, yes, dude, your profile pick is amazing. Deus X 
for life. Still replay it probably once a year, once every other year, the original Deus Ex. Um, I'd love to see you compete in IDPA with your EDC. Very fun. Yeah, I used to. I used to a lot. Uh, speaking of nerd guns, I built a Marlin 1895 and got it laser engraved and Cerakote to be Jurassic World themed with the color scheme of the Raptor Blue. Thing kicks like a mule. That sounds like an awesome setup. That <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun. What do you think the sweet spot is for a competition gun? 30 or 40 ounce? Pros and cons, right? Lighter weight gun, you can transition faster uh, between targets. Uh, heavier gun is going to have typically less muzzle rise. So pros and cons to both. Uh, I think if you're if you're strong, it doesn't matter, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, can you please speak on the Radiant Afterburner on the G17 versus 45, 19, and how much softer it is? It's hard to tell. G17 might be a little softer. Uh, enough to make a difference? Not really. Uh, maybe like, like a 5% difference. At most a 10% difference, but honestly, that's probably a little crazy. Still, perform great on both. Get a DPM soft captured system if you have a Gen 4 or 5 to go with the Afterburner. Um, and get the soft system for Gen 3 if you're running the Afterburner. It, it, absolute game changer. AIWB doesn't work for me, and I've tried over 10 different holsters. Uh, I would be so interested to get my hands on you. No, to um, play around with like clips and ride height and position at appendix. But honestly, it just doesn't work for some people. Uh, 100%. Like there's no shame in being like, I can't appendix carry. Yeah, that's that's why we have like a million different holsters to pick from. Uh, just make sure you practice, practice, practice to get as fast as possible and be really safe with reholstering. Jack Burton, thank you so much, man. That is super nice. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, support like that it makes it makes all the difference on this channel. It makes it worth it. Um, have you watched Radian's recoil test video? Do you think it's an accurate way of measuring recoil mitigation? Um, yeah, I, I think it's a good way to sell recoil mi mitigation. Like I, I <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's like putting a gun in a vice and shooting it. It's a good way to get objective data, but I don't really know if it tells you everything that you need to know. I can tell you that the Radiant Ramjet Afterburner works really great. <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, I, you know, I know Parker Mountain Machine also puts their stuff in a vice and like it's objective data. I'm just going to scroll down, make sure I'm, oh man, yeah, man, whew, I'm loving all the engagement guys. This is awesome. I'm, I'm here for you as long as you want to go. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Parker Mountain Machine also puts their stuff in a vice and and shoots it. Uh, like I said, it's a good way to get objective data, but I don't know how much of a difference it makes in human hands. Everybody holds a gun a certain way. Everyone has different hands. Everybody has different strength in their arms and their wrists and their hands. Some people lock their wrists when they shoot. Some, I mean, you should. Some people don't. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the best way to get an idea of how much it works is put it in uh, an inexperienced shooter's hands and an extremely experienced shooter's hands. And watch what it does compared to a stock gun. I think that would give you better information personally. Uh, DDH9, probably fine. Just know no matter what you choose, you will eventually... Yeah, this is good advice. Um, yeah, that seriously. So many people end up back at Glock. Just be aware that Glock is one of the guns that is more susceptible to limp wrist malfunction. So be aware of that. Um, you, you have to make sure your technique is on point. Any thoughts on the Daniel H9 for CCW? Not until I put a thousand rounds through it. I, I, I'm going to say no until you or I put a thousand rounds through it. Was the torque spec for Bull Armory, TAC 4.25 or the five inch optic plate? Ugh, uh, usually it's kind of in that 12 to 15 inch pound area. Um, and a lot of times that's, yeah, it's tough because you put, you, I recommend you put a dab of blue Loctite on those screws. And on the Bull Armory, the right hand screws are like super, super short as not to hit the extractor. You put too much on those, the blue Loctite will go into the extractor channel and can cause malfunctions because it gets stopped up. So um, I would say kind of that maybe like a 13 inch pound with blue Loctite, you'd be good to go. Um, I I like to ride the red line of torque sometimes, uh, but make sure you have a torque driver. That's the most important thing. Uh, I've been watching you for a while now and have been really enjoying your channel. I'll be building a samurai edge at some point and using your recipe. Uh, dude, Having that samurai edge is so dope, uh, but sometimes it hurts me looking at what's almost a, uh, you know, just a cosmetic, cosmetically different Beretta for like almost three times the price of a standard Beretta, uh, but still awesome. 15 inch pounds for the hollow sun. Yep. There you go. 15 inch. Boom. Put a tiny, tiny, tiny dab of blue Loctite on there. What are your thoughts on the HK VP9? I think it's a great gun. Uh, I think that 
it again benefits from a DPM recoil reduction system. I think it's uh, slightly on the snappier side, but I think it's great for bigger handed people because you get all uh, three of those panels, right? Side panels, back straps, uh, two MOA or six MOA for an EPS carry, man, it's personal preference. Um, so people who like to run bigger MOA dots, they're afraid of like losing the dot, right? Cause you shoot target focused. Um, and at least you should be, if you're shooting staring at the dot, man, you're gonna have a hard time, but you shoot target focused with a, you know, six MOA and you're just blazing switching between targets and stuff. No matter how bright it is, no matter how fast you're moving, it's easier to maintain that dot. But I typically recommend two MOA for concealed carry because there's so much at stake for your precision, right? A miss in competition or a C zone in competition, um, is just a penalty, uh, a miss or a C zone in, you know, real life and a defensive encounter to, that it could cost you everything. So I, I like to have the option for a very precise, not to say you can't shoot precisely with a six MOA dot, right? Just if you need to take a shot at distance, some sort of active shooter who's wearing armor and you need to make a headshot at 25 yards. I know lightning strike stuff guys, but I do. And, or, you know, you're making a tight shot. Um, you know, people are running around and you have the one shot to save lives. Uh, I just prefer to have the smaller dot for precision. Just my opinion can't go wrong either way. If you have an astigmatism and you're not wearing a corrective lens, six MOA is probably going to be easier to see with the astigmatism. Any long gun content in the future? Absolutely. Yes. Just uh, it's, I love, 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 love handguns. They are my passion. I have, you know, ARs. I have like a scar 17 S I have, uh, it's like, I have long range, like 300 wind mag. I, I have shot. So I've, I've shotguns, a lot of sporting shotguns. Um, like I have a lot of long guns. It's just like, I just, I get so excited about pistols because it's what I use every single day of my life. But yes, long gun content in the future, uh, hoping to get some, uh, some AR content on the channel. Uh, just one of those things. It's kind of, I feel like I need to get creative about how to do an AR 15 video just because, it's like the most common rifle in America. How do you spin that to make it, you know, <laughs> interesting? All the revolver content has me wanting a new six inch Python, LOL. <laughs> dude, join, join the wheel gun club, my dude. Uh, is, yeah, the, the as far as the new Colt stuff goes, like it is what it is. It's no longer craftsman hand making um, like a customized clock <laughs> of a gun. It is now kind of on the edge of mass production, right? And along with that and the numbers that they're pumping out, there are going to be quality control issues. So I would just kind of like get it, expect you might need to send it back. Um, and just know that you're not getting something, something super, 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 super like crazy nice, but you're going to get something you can enjoy. So yeah, absolutely, man. Goral, uh, opinion on the HKP 30, it rocks, especially with the Langdon tactical stuff, especially, especially with lazy wolf work done to it. But no, I really like the P 30. I think it's a, I think it's a great gun. Um, I, I have no reservations about it. Great gun. Don't get H9 as first gun. That's honestly probably good advice. But I will say, if you get a gun that you're excited about as a beginner, you're going to be more likely to shoot it. So get whatever excites you. Just be aware that uh, this comment is probably pretty good advice because if it starts choking, you're not going to be having a good time. Might go run the H9 tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. Nine versus 40. They they both do the job. You just get more chances with nine. Uh, but if I hate it, I'll just sell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shadow two compact. Right on, man. Uh, thoughts on if Staccato will redo the PXL, et cetera, with a slimmer V3 grip like the new C. It's only a matter of time. That's my opinion. Uh, dude, thank you again. This is what makes it worthwhile. Uh, it's stuff like this. I'm going to keep coming back and doing these live Q and A's. So really, really appreciate the support. You're, uh, you're, you're really helping the channel out. I do. I don't know. I just, I, I see this kind of stuff and I'm like, okay, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not wasting my time. Uh, then why make the seat? Yeah, exactly. Good morning from Guam. What's up? Yeah, seriously, all of my brothers and sisters across the world that love firearms, you are welcome here. Great to see you. Uh, do you plan to get a platypus? Absolutely. I'm waiting for the new grip texture and the bull barrels to go live. The second it goes live, it's on the way. Everyone smash that like. Thanks for the reminder. That's that's great. A uh, recoil tests are like gel tests with ammo. It's data point for comparisons, but it's very little to do with how the ammo will perform again. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's, it's a, it's a data point to see how different things compare to each other, but 
that is honestly the best analogy for that. Because if you don't know, when you're doing ballistics gelatin tests and you're shooting a ballistics gelatin block, that's not exactly what it's going to do in human tissue. That's not how far it's going to make into human tissue, right? Um, that is just a, you know, way to compare all of the different rounds and how they compare against one another. So a lot of people will look at a gelatin block, see the penetration expansion, be like, that's what it's going to do in, you know, organic tissue with muscle and cartilage and bone. Uh, no, but yeah, that very great analogy with those recoil tests. I'm waiting on someone doing the thousand round view of the T sauce 800 night stock or 2011. Yeah, I know. God, kind of like me too. Kind of. Um, uh, if I can, honestly, if I can get my hands on one from my local shop, I will, I'll do it. Uh, six MOA easier to pick up immediately and get on target quickly. It's decent advice. It really is. Um, people overthink the dot size. It's one of those things you'll get one dot and real, you know, get one dot and then your buddy will have a different dot. And then that's the only way you'll kind of know what you prefer is actually putting live rounds down range behind each size dot. Do you agree with T-Rex arms in their statement about radian ramjet on Glock 19 equals Glock 17 recoil mitigation? Not familiar. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not much of a, uh, like, I don't, I don't watch YouTube, uh, like gun content as much as some other people. It's one of those things kind of when you're a creator and you're living in the space, you kind of get burnt out. You like, kind of go out of your way to avoid it. But I'm assuming he probably says that like the Glock 17 recoil mitigation is better than the Glock 19 with the ramjet. If that's the case, and I'm sure I'll scroll down like, you know, 10 more comments and you'll let me know. Uh, but yeah, I would probably agree. It's, it's a small difference. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Let me know what, what he said, and then I'll let you know my opinion. DPM systems for Glock 19 gen five really improve recoil and affect reliability. Uh, really? No, kind of yes. And it's, it really is like the final change that you make to a gun. If you are min maxing its performance for concealed carry. So, uh, it makes a little bit of a difference, but you make a bunch of little bit of differences and it makes a big difference. So if you're running a compensator, I would say, yes, it makes a, a sizable difference. If you're not running a comp, a little bit of a difference. As far as reliability goes, um, most of the time it's going to improve reliability because it reduces the odds of a limp wrist malfunction, but always vet your stuff for reliability. Whenever you change something like a spring in a gun, it can cause problems just with the physics of the gun. So whatever you decide to do, whatever people say on the internet, it's just their experience. Always vet it for yourself. But I do recommend DPM systems. Blurry 4.25 comp versus Staccato XC. I don't think they're making the 4.25 comp anymore. Uh, or even versus the standard for, I'm assuming, 0.25 pros and cons. Love your channel. Staccato XC is the best gun on the planet. Nothing, as far as a production gun goes, nothing beats it. Oh, here we go. That was the, that's the correction. Um, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're hard to compare, right? The Bull Armory, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things like my video on the Bull Armory uh, explaining why I decided to carry the Bull over the Staccato XC. It just boiled down to the weight of the gun and it being able to come out of the holster just a little bit faster. But the Staccato XC is the best gun on the planet. It just depends on what you want to do with it, I think. Uh, Staccato XC, like I said, in the production world, nothing beats it. Thanks for your contents. What are your thoughts on the Stoger STR9MC? I think it's great. Did a review on it, and I love it. think it's excellent for the money. Really want a fun wheel gun. Uh, it is hard to beat the Smith & Wesson 929 8-shot 9mm for the win. Absolutely. A yeah. 9-shot revolver, or 9mm uh, revolvers are... So much fun. Just be aware of potential crimp jump. That is semi-auto, you know, cartridges are not crimped with revolvers in mind. And because of that, if you're, if it's a lighter, smaller, like, you know, one of those Ruger LCRs in nine millimeter and you're shooting it, pop, 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 the bullets can actually move forward out of the casings, uh, in the following chambers. So it's just something to be aware of, but that is a lot of fun. If you're looking for a fun, fun, fun time, a practical time, you know, eight shots of nine millimeter, you can get that in a much smaller package in a semi-auto, but it is a good time. How old were you when you wrote your two books? I'm hoping to try out the TSOS DS carry. It looks great for the money. Also Stingray carry in God's caliber, <laughs> 30 ounce on the, yeah. Uh, how old were old Ryan when I wrote my two books? Uh, I think it was a couple years ago. So not, not too long ago. I'm, just, I'm working on a full length novel and have been ever since. I just, I'm making it the best it can be because I want a publishing deal. Um, and yeah, the TSOS DS carry does look great for the money. I'm interested to try it out. Uh, which one of my organs do I sell so I can afford a PX? Oh my God, dude, I, I feel the same exact way. There's too much good stuff, but this is one of my top picks. I, I want it so bad. If you had $2,300 and couldn't buy one 20, 
and couldn't buy but one 2011 in a EDC or battle comp, what would you choose and why? Uh, and couldn't buy a 2011. Couldn't buy... Okay, so if you had 2300 and couldn't buy but one 2011, uh, it'd be the Bull Armory Tech 4.25. Like, if, if it was... Because with a staccato, I would just want to go XC. So that's out of the budget. So I would just default to Bull Armory. Easy. Recently purchased a Staccato C2. Will this pistol run Underwood 147 grade hard cast flat nose reliably? Yes, it will. I have, I've personally tested it. So yeah, if you want to carry that for uh, the Javelina <laughs> that you're that you're hiking out with, that will run just fine. T-Rex said it's about the same as a 17. Also, yeah, I basically just watch the gun content of people I know. Yeah, exactly. But your average gun tuber has no interest to me anymore. Uh, yeah, I, once you start creating content in the space, it's just, it becomes work all of a sudden. And watching those videos is no longer fun. It just kind of feels like work. Um, uh, oh yeah, so I would agree that it's about the same. Like I said, if anything, it's a 5% difference, which is basically the same. Uh, organic gel, not clear, gives very close. Organic gel, right. Um, but yeah, again, not through bone. Yeah, so similar, but not the same, right? And getting some spicy comments in here. Oh my God, was that one? Oh no, just everything. My God, man, I love you guys asking all these questions. I was get, like getting ready to filibuster. Um, when getting a new gun and it has problems, how many chances should you give the new manufacturer to fix it? And if it's one you've been excited for, should that affect how many attempts you give them? Man, I give them one chance. Uh, if I love, love, love it, I'll give it two chances and sell it. Uh, no, I. It, it's tough, right? I, I give them maximum two chances. Uh, I gave Canik three chances on the MC9 and they couldn't do it. And uh, that's when I realized three chances was too many. So yeah, I'll give them, I'll give them one chance. And my second chance is really nasty and irritated. Um, thanks again for all the amazing content. You're welcome. Thank you for your amazing comments. You are the best. Um, I can't purchase a new HK USB. I can purchase a new H HK USB expert and an HK USB elite for the same price. Any familiarity and recommendation for either of the, uh, either of these is, um, it depends on what you want to do with it. The Elite has a super long barrel. If you plan on not carrying it and only shooting it at the range or like, you know, competition holster, uh, then yeah, the Elite is super dope. Um, the Expert is going to be a little better for use for anything. Uh, but the Elite, the length of the barrel is definitely going to limit what you can do with it. So if it were me, I'd go Elite just because I think it's a little rarer and a little cooler and I like getting the rarer, cooler thing. But if you want the more practical choice, I'd go with the Expert. Colt Python, if you can afford 38, 357. Yeah, it's not a bad choice. What do you think about the Stealth Arms Platypus? I think it's super cool and I'm going to be getting one. Uh, I think that their build quality is insane. I have no idea how they're selling it for as cheap as they're selling it. Uh, it is truly an impressive firearm in the way that they do their online builder. They are the future of the American firearm industry. Um, I, think I think they're the spearhead. I'm really excited to test out the gun. IBG 45 set up with Radian Ramjet DPM soft captured spring. Absolutely. Johnny Glock's combat. So basically you have my gun thousand rounds, no issues. If I could only recommend one upgrade from it, I would say DPM recoil spring. Okay. So there you go. There's, there's an objective opinion. Uh, yeah, th that's the setup is incredible guys that like, if you have a Glock do this, um, in nine millimeter, <laughs> sorry. Coming from always shooting Glock staccatos, is there any revolver content coming in the near future? I bought a Smith & Wesson model 66-4 just because you inspired me. Yes, I have so much revolver content coming up. I'm just waiting for ammo. I'm waiting for holsters. I have some custom holsters coming in. Um, but I have the rarest gun that I own. It's a Lou Horton 1 of 300, uh, 681. And it's like a quad ported seven shot L frame. So excited for that one. What else? Uh, the 586 l comp modern production both of those got worked over by nelson ford uh oh my god and um the model 629 no dash 44 magnum with the most beautiful wood stocks ever the revolver content's gonna be really heavy this year i'm just i'm waiting on stuff for production uh let's see here man i'm finally catching up with comments guys you are awesome for someone who is new to 2011s and is interested in picking up only one to live and train with, what do you recommend? I know you swear by the XC. Are those custom 2011s like Atlas worth it? Mm, man, uh, put me on the spot with with opinions on 2011s. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that takes a second to, to say something to trigger a bunch of people that you kind of didn't mean. Uh, yeah, the I think that I stand by the Staccato XC is the best bang for the buck 
with a 2011 Atlas fit and finish is superior, no doubt. But as far as shootability and reliability and performance, I know I said three ands, I'm sorry, uh, goes the Staccato XC. If you're going to get one, own one, have one, get that. And I would get, I would go one pound up in a recoil spring. Uh, it comes with a seven pound that is super, super soft. And it works great unless you grip the gun really hard like I do. Then it just kind of like floats and oscillates because the recoil spring is too light. So I would get that and then buy a spare eight pound recoil spring. Uh, you'll be 100% set. Uh, I've had zero issues with the XC. I do want to do a disclaimer though. Staccato is pumping out in so much volume. I have been seeing more frequent quality control issues with Staccato. So it's one of the, I know you're spending a lot of money, but just be aware you get one, you might have to send it back one time. They have the best customer service ever, but something to be aware of if you're buying a Staccato um, in today's day and age. Where was I at with comments? Doo -doo -doo. Uh, what's your go-to home defense gun or guns? Uh, I have a 300 blackout with a can on it that I put supers through. That's uh, that's my go-to. Uh, actually, uh, it's uh, I did a review on it. It's the Q Sugar Weasel is the one that I'm currently I'm currently running for home defense. Uh, got the um, got a weapon light on there with a switch, <laughs> not a switch, but a a light switch, an activation switch, um, and an aim point H1 on there, an older H1 that I had for like eight years and never changed the batteries on kind of seeing how far I can take it. So yeah, 300 blackout with soups and a can. Uh, if you don't know soups, you, th you talk, think I'm talking about like soup cans. It's, it's super sonic. Um, I like, I like the rifle rounds, not the pistol caliber, uh, rounds that perform like pistol caliber, the subsonics. I sent my Springfield Prodigy 4.25 back for warranty. They sent back an unreliable paperweight all three times. Don't tell me that. Cause I'm, I'm, Literally tomorrow, I'm going out to the range. That's when I'm running the Prodigy hard. But, you know, I'll tell you what happens. Um, so, yeah, thanks for the data point. That is, that's unfortunate, man. I'm sorry to hear that. It sucks spending that much money on a gun and it doesn't work. I'm about to snag one. Hey, yeah. Uh, just got an Access Elite thanks to your comparison video. Awesome, man. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's it's still my favorite holster. It's what I carry every day. The Arc Division Reactor seems to be an incredible ported slide for the Glock platform. And, and... I agree. It does look really cool. I've never run it, but it looks super cool. They got that cyberpunk aesthetic. If you're in a DPM spring on an MNP 2.0 thoughts. Yes, I have. I love it. Uh, so I have a metal frame competitor, MNP competitor that needed that DPM spring. In my review for the competitor, you can check it out. Um, that metal frame. Uh, does, so with a, when you have a polymer frame on a gun and that, you know, you have the recoil impulse, the slide hits the rear, uh, the polymer frame slightly, just a little bit absorbs it, kind of absorbs the vibration uh, and dampens the recoil just a tad. And with that metal frame, you get that very sharp, it hits the metal and the metal doesn't absorb the recoil, it transfers it. Uh, so the DPM spring cushions the slide and makes it shoot like a top. So yes, I do recommend DPM springs for MNP 2.0s. It's the second thing I would do to an M and third thing I would do to an MNP after uh, getting a metal optic plate and putting an apex trigger in it. Which companies have been less than awesome customer service and fixing things? Which revolvers do you have a good amount of experience with? Interested to hear your new ammo connection, getting some hop for the 357 vid. Oh yeah. Um, uh, less than awesome customer service right off the bat, uh, Remington, they're gone. Taurus, they're still there. Um, Walther is really weird. The customer service guy's really grumpy. He's <laughs> a really grumpy dude. Uh, and they fix things and don't tell you what was wrong. Uh, but they're fast at the very least. Um, God, I, I, uh, I feel like there's one more that I had a really bad experience with the, the, oh, oh duh, Canik, of course. Yeah. Pretty much all the Turkish stuff. With the exception of TSOS, TSOS was a pain in the butt because you have to like send in your ID and like, you know, it's a UPS ground shipping label and all this terrible stuff, but uh, really nice guys over, over at SDS imports. Uh, but yeah, Canic Century Arms, woo, um, which revolvers you have a good amount of experience with? Almost all of them. Um, I, I have so many revolvers. I can't even get through it. I have a 19C at stove pipes. Glock said use Wolf Spring and Magazine for more tension and ideas about changing the guide rod. Hate having to use 147 grain to be reliable. So first of all, uh, Glock should have better customer service than that. They're probably just, you probably got a lazy person. 19C should run and it should run everything. Uh, if it were me, I would get a DPM recoil reduction system. I'd get the soft or the adjustable. I would actually, I would get the adjustable uh, and then play around with spring weights on that. That would probably be good. But if you've tried other magazines, 
and it's still stove piping, then it's not a magazine issue. Um, I would, I would change the recoil spring. Um, personally, I would get a DPM system, of course, because I love it. No, for a fact, USP elite can be carried in a shoulder rig. You're right. It can a uh, vertical shoulder rig though, right? Not the Miami classic. Wait till you get the stealth arms. Yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Uh, any chance of getting a review? Maybe, maybe I I'm backed up on video. So it wouldn't be until later this year if I decided to do it. Uh, advice for first time getting a 2011, uh, by, mm, uh, I have two pieces of advice. If you know you want, if you've rented one and you've shot it or you shot at buddies and you know, you love it buy once cry once get a staccato or a bull armory, um, or an at, you know, or up right. Atlas gun works, uh, and above like uh, even the, the more boutique shops. Um, if you're not sure and you can't rent one, you don't have like a big range nearby, you don't know anyone who has one, then get something cheap, uh, with knowing that you're you know, buying twice and crying twice, uh, that you're going to have to get something better, but the new TSA seemed like a good entry point, uh, for that. But yeah, first time getting a 2011, I would say, uh, it seems like a lot of people will go with like a staccato P and then they'll regret it and they'll sell it and they'll get like the C2, the C or the XC. So I would say, start with just like any gun purchase. What do you want to do with it? Um, because that's the, the P people get it. And they're like, I don't know what to do with this. Like I'm not going to conceal carry it, but it doesn't shoot as well as the XC. So uh, I kind of got the, the, the middle child. So yeah, think about what you want to do with it. 110 grain Varmageddon soups, man. Uh, uh, yes, but I don't like how little penetration they get, but they are explosive. <laughs> Oh man, it's, it's moments like this where I'm like, I'm like, I have to remind myself that I'm live and I, I need to be careful about what I say. Cause I can't edit it out later, but I tend to agree. If I have the Langdon P30, do I need a staccato? It depends. Do you want a staccato? If so, the answer is yes. Cause they're really two different animals. Um, three to 3.2 K to spend on a 2011 top choice. Thanks again. Um, I, I don't want to do this to you, but I would save up for an XC. Buy once, cry once. That being said, uh, if if that's where you're at, I think you could probably swing what a comped, like staccato P or a comped C2. I'd probably go comped C2. That sh I think that's within that budget. Um, but if you can find a bull armory in stock, man, that's that's also right up there. Uh, but yeah, you can't go wrong with staccato or bull, no matter what you get. Speaking of revolver content, I recently picked up a Rock Island M238 Special. I shot that at SHOT Show on an impulse buy. Really impressed with it. The grips are atrocious, but pac my grips fixed it. Yeah, no, it was it was impressive. I just have concerns about how it's going to hold up, how its timing and stuff is going to hold up. Man, right when I start to catch up on comments, you guys, uh, you, you keep going. I love it. Love the engagement. Thank you so much for all the comments, guys. Uh, what is your opinion on an AK rifle and an AK variant in an AR style, like a CMMG or Zap 92 style? Which would you rather have? I'd rather just have an AK, to be honest. Um, uh, yeah, that's tough. That, I would. I, I. I hate to cop out, but I would just if I'm getting an AK, I'm getting an AK. The uh, PO one for CCW, but I'm choosing between platypus to add for CCW or more ammo and some kit like a ballistic helmet. Thoughts. Uh, I would say, I mean, again, this depends on you and what you want to do. Do you know that you want a 2011 style pistol, a double stack 1911? Do you know that's something you want to carry for a fact? Uh, if so, there's no reason not to add the platypus. It's like an, an awesome gun. Um, it also depends on what your magazine ecosystem currently looks like. If you have a bunch of Glock magazines, then yeah, you're set. You're good to go. Um, but honestly, more ammo and kit, probably the smarter choice. Uh, so it depends. Do you want to go emotional and add the platypus or do you want to go smart and get the ammo and the kit? So the Western customer service is terrible nowadays. Had to send my MMP PC model back twice and still didn't get the issue fixed and had to do it myself. Yeah, honestly, customer service is suffering everywhere. Smith, not a good look. They're mostly they're grumpy and they'll fix it, but every once in a while this will happen and it's really frustrating. Uh, it's one of those reasons why I still recommend I recommend the pistols MPs over Glocks, but I recommend the company Glock over Smith and Wesson for this exact reason. Because if you have a problem, they'll take care of you. What all would you recommend doing to a staccato CS? Leaving it alone. Uh, <laughs> no, you can do whatever you want to it. I just, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, a lot of people want to take the snap out of it by porting it. That's fine. Your muzzle velocity is already crap out of that small barrel anyways. Just vet it for reliability if you decide to do that. And be aware, 
you are voiding your warranty. So if it were me, I wouldn't do anything to the CS. Uh, but so that's my recommend. You asked for my recommend my recommendation. That's my recommendation. Do you struggle with support hand grip on revolvers? I don't feel like I can hold on to a J frame or LCR. Then do some grip strength training, boy. Uh, no, it's no, just get, get strong, homie, get strong and you will be fine. Uh, but I definitely, I understand what you're saying. Um, with my support hand, I basically, I have, it's an on and off switch. There's, there's no in between. It is, my hand is open and my hand is closed 5,000% and I clamp on. Uh, so I just kind of do that with everything. I will say, um, okay, maybe what you're talking about is actually gripping the tech. Man, I wish I could hold guns up. Like now you guys got, I'm gonna have to look this up now. I thought that was just Twitch, but uh, what do I know? I'm like resistant to technology sometimes. So uh, using your support hand, if you're contacting the grip of the revolver, yeah, it's going to slip. So what I do is I actually uh, grip my hand on the revolver and clamp down. That's that's what I do. I You know what? Maybe I need to do a video on revolver shooting technique. Hello, Brett. Great job on the live Q&A. Just woke up 5 a.m. here. We'll watch the whole video later. All right. Well, when you're watching it later and you get to this point, just know I give you a thumbs up. I think you're an awesome person. Staccato P Heritage for the win. Yes, that is a great gun. Um, uh, did you run DPM systems in your bull armor yet? No, but I have them. I, I have them. I think we talked about it, right? Uh, I have not run them yet, mostly because I've been carrying my bull. Obviously I had shot show and stuff like that. And I don't want to get my carry gun dirty. Um, so I like alternate, right? Like I'm shooting my staccato, carrying my bull. And then I switch and train with my bull and carry my staccato and then clean and switch, clean and switch. I like to always have a clean 2011 to carry. Thoughts on Liberty Defense, 50 grain, 2,400 feet per second for self-defense. Yes, not enough penetration. And I, that's going to, yikes, that's going to set some people off. Uh, thoughts on G9 Defense, 80 grain hollow point Grantham used for carry ammo 9 millimeter. Yes, not enough penetration. Again, that is going to trigger some people, but it is what it is. I like tried and true proven in real life use in human tissue repeatedly. That's what, that's what I go for. Um, so HSTs and spear gold dots, I think those are the only two that I brands that I would consider carrying. Um, I just, I, when you get that lightweight, yes, the dude, they're explosive. Trust me. I know those high velocity, low weight rounds are explosive, but even when you get into 10 millimeter and you're getting into the lighter God, I'm going to mess it up. But what is it like one? Oh man. One th yeah, 130 grain, 140 grain. I don't remember, but the lighter weight, like Underwood screamers and 10 millimeter, it's just like on contact, they expand and explode. Um, just doesn't get the penetration that I like. I want to reach and punch through vital organs, um, through heavy clothing. If, if it hits a bone, I want that thing to slip around and keep going or break and go as far as it can. Um, the lighter weight stuff, just, it opens up way too fast upon contact. If the sky was falling and it was a <laughs> oh donkey, uh, and it was a Tuesday at nine twenty three a.m., would you prefer a nineteen eleven or a grenade launcher to fight the zombie hordes? I think it depends on where I'm at. Am I in a building? If so, nineteen eleven. Am I not in a building? If so, probably grenade launcher. Get up on a roof and go to town. Although the uh, shockwave from the explosions might collapse the building, so maybe not on a building. Maybe on a, on a fort. Currently waiting on my delivery of Magtech ammo. Been there. Masterpiece Arms DS9 is in the 3000 to 3200 price point. Yes, it is. <laughs> like trying to like point to stuff while everything is mirrored. Uh, yeah, that, that's in there. I haven't personally tested it, but it seems okay. If you want an AK and want it to be more ergonomic, you're spending a lot of money and making it front heavy in comparison to the AR platform. Yeah, I trust me. I hear you, man. I hear you. If I'm going with an AR platform and I want 762 by 39 capability or not capability, but performance, I'm probably just going to go 300 blackout, but I'm already in that ecosystem. So I, I feel you. I just, again, my personal opinion, if I'm getting an AK, I'm getting an AK. Just here to say hi. Hi, Dozer. I think you're really cool. Uh, did you notice a shot show that CZ was featuring the TS2 racing green in their booth and it was discontinued in 2023? Uh, WTF is going on with Colt. I mean, CZ these days. That's a really cheeky comment because everybody knows that CZ bought Colt, but Colt is kind of running the show now, which is really, really strange. Uh, yes, I did see them feature that. Who knows why? I mean, it's C CZ buying Colt had us all excited for what was going to happen with Colt. I don't think anybody saw that CZ buying Colt would make us worried for CZ. Like, yikes. Uh, hope you're feeling awesome. Man, what a nice fellow. Yes, I am feeling awesome today. I hope you're feeling awesome as well. Uh, what MOA do you prefer for CCW in competition? 
in that one to like 3.25 MOA range. Uh, that's just, it's, it's a personal preference thing. I just prefer the little bit of precision. If I was running competition only, I'd be running a much bigger dot because you're running into fictional John Wick situations where you're shooting like a million targets really, really fast, uh, all target focused, all just like, just absolutely shredding target to target to target. I would want the bigger dot so that I would not lose it in competition. Um, so for CCW, definitely that I I'm hesitant to recommend one MOA, but I like it. But yeah, that one to 3.25 MOA dot for CCW and for competition, I would go bigger. Depends on the competition. But if we're talking like USPSA action shooting, I'd go bigger. Where does Wilson F SFX fit in quality wise with other high end 2011 type makes? Uh, it fits in pretty well. It's, it's, it's different because it's a more rounded feel, right? Some people call it more ergonomic. I don't. Uh, it, it's, it's a more rounded kind of like the, you know, obviously the Kimber KDS 9C is mimicking that. Uh, it, it feels different. It's one of those things where if you hold a 2011, you're like, man, I wish this wasn't so square than that. But yeah, Wilson combat quality wise is, is typically good. I've seen some hiccups recently with new people kind of entering Wilson, but for the most part, they're very good. I, I recommend it. I, I don't see any issues with it. Any chance of seeing TRP operator or the new TRP on your channel soon? Probably not. Probably not. Um, I don't know, man. It's it's one of those things where if you are seeing stuff pop up like a million channels all at once, the odds of you seeing it on my channel is pretty slim. Um, I, I And the thing is, it's a bummer because I would love to get in on that action where it's like Springfield sends everybody the new TRP or TRP operator. Um, and you like the, the algorithm rewards that. And it's really nice. I'm just, I'm not sent that stuff by manufacturers. Uh Although I do, this is kind of an exciting announcement for the channel too. If anyone's still here almost an hour later, um, I have partnered with my uh, local gun shop that I've been going to since I was a small child. So this is actually a really big moment, but Bear Arms, Firearms in Scottsdale. Um, so I, I have an opportunity there to shoot the new stuff as it becomes available on the consumer market. So very much like some of the uh, like honest video game channels that review video games, my reviews are going to be for that kind of stuff will be coming out a few weeks after all of the pre-production shills get their videos out. So uh, probably not this time around, but whenever like new releases moving forward, um, I will probably do if I, one, if I'm interested and think you guys will be interested. Uh, so maybe I didn't mean to go on that long. Jeez. Um, please review the MMP Spectre. MMP Spectre series. We talked about steel frames and I want to know what your inputs are on their new release. Thank you. I'm gonna have to Google MP Spectre series. Tried a PSA Saber 13.7 with quad rail. What a piece of blank. Rail screws fell out, candid front side. Yeah. Uh, first PSA, never again. Uh, but yeah, well, duh, BCM, of course. Like they're awesome. Uh, I mean, PSA, the, they do what they do, right? They know they their goal is to arm as many people as possible. And that is to make it as cheap as possible. And because of that, stuff like this is going to be more likely to happen with them. Doesn't make them a bad company, but it's something to be aware of as a consumer. Um, yes, just to add that in there for the dude in the $3,000 to $3,200 price range. And maybe DPM options, spring tweaks for the TRP. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to show tuning DPM systems on YouTube because it is modifying a firearm and they, they don't like that. Uh, but yeah, I more DPM content to come at least. Do you think stockpiling self-defense ammo is worth it in a true SHTF situation or will a higher stock of FMJ suffice? Big question. I mean, it depends on what's in your budget. Like make sure you have food and water. Uh, and if in order to have all that stuff, if FMJs are in your budget and then it pokes holes, right? In an SHTF, we're not gonna have hospitals. Like, it, you know, someone gets poked. I think there's a certain psychological element to I can't get to a hospital, right? So I think there's a psychological output of a psychological aspect of SHTF that will actually increase psychological stops in an, in a shit hits the fan situation. Um, that being said, ideally, stockpiling self defense is going to be the best because it's going to be more likely to stop somebody from doing what they're doing. Uh, but FMJs, like I said, I'd rather have FMJ. I'd rather have like three thousand rounds, three thousand, thirty thousand rounds of FMJ uh, sitting there for a worst case scenario than have nothing of either or like a box of self-defense ammo. Um, had a really great experience with Smith & Wesson customer service. Yeah, I see, this is the thing. It's, 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 it can be inconsistent. Started having malfunctions with my first gen MP9. Uh, first gen, so was that a while ago? 
uh, because they used to be really, really good. Looking to purchase my first AR-15, any suggestions on where to start sub 1500? Honestly, like people in the con, this is one of those things where I'll say my thing and then like a million people are like, no, that's stupid. Do my thing. Um, I mean, it's in, in that price range. I'm trying to think, I know like a lot of pistol prices off the top of my head because I'm always buying them. But in that $1,500 range, I, I know like budget wise, like an MP sport, like that's what everybody starts with. And then they end up getting something nicer. Uh, $1,500 would, would BCM be in 1500? I feel like they're more expensive than that. I don't know. I, in the comments for suitable here, let me know what your pick is for that $1,500 range. Um, Cause like, obviously there's like the SIG tread and like the Springfield Armory Saint that are in kind of that more like thousand dollar region. Uh, for accessibility thoughts on the apollo i'm assuming you mean the apollo 11 the uh live free armory 2011 man the ones i saw at shot show were, were fit together real rough um it did not did not provide confidence in the platform itself i know um also sponsored by true shot ammo blue gene operator ran his and it ran flawlessly until he put hollow points in it and then it started choking um so my thoughts on it i don't know like it Range toy. Those are my thoughts. Range toy. Uh, Underwood Extreme Defender in lighter weight 10 millimeter still has excellent penetration, 115 grain. I might have to look into that. Um, yeah, excellent penetration in what though? Like that. That's that's my argument. Excellent penetration in 10% ballistic skeleton, or you know, excellent penetration in tissue. Has anybody shot anybody with 115 grain, 10 millimeter in a lighter weight? I don't know. Uh, hello from Kentucky. Hello from Arizona. How do you feel about bullpups and bullpup conversions? I have played with those. I think bullpups are super cool. I think that they are prone to having really terrible triggers. So like, yeah, you kind of have to have to deal with that. It's nice to have the, the short overall length with the muzzle velocity from, you know, like a longer barrel in the same size package. Um, yeah, it just depends on if you want to deal with it. Like uh, some bullpups are kind of finicky. Uh, you, you know, you have to vet your stuff for reliability. So like a lot of these bullpups will break. There's just, it's, it's one of those things. There's more stuff to break on them. So I think they're really cool. I would vet it for reliability and be aware that you might have to buy something aftermarket for the trigger bullpup conversions. Uh, they're fun to play with. I, I would say it's, that's a fun time. I don't think I would use it for, for serious stuff. Talk me out of sending my Springfield 1911 to Nighthawk. I will not send your Springfield 1911 to Nighthawk, um, or figure out how much that's going to cost. And then instead sell your Springfield 1911 and upgrade to something better anyways. The world needs more revolver videos from you. Just saying I have 100, they're coming. Trust me, they're coming. I have probably like five revolver videos on the way. I'm just waiting on ammo, holsters, a bunch of stuff that I need for production. I'm not liking what Colt is doing with CZ and Dan Wesson. I agree. Although as far as Dan Wesson goes, I did see that they're putting optic cuts on like the more of the Dan Wesson. So like the Bruin and 10 millimeter, that got me kind of excited, but I hear what you're saying. And I agree. DPM and my port of 43 X works great. Love to hear it. God, I love P I love converting people to DPMs imported and compensated guns. They are the best. So a lot of BCM in Ukraine. So now we know why they're always sold out <laughs> and can put to bed calling them a budget rifle. Yeah. No, i I've had no problems with BCM. Did FN come out with any new pistols for SHOT Show? Yes. And I'm trying to remember what it was because it was underwhelming. Was it the full size compensated 509? Did they, did they have a new 10 millimeter too? I don't know. Either way, it didn't. Nothing caught my attention. For me, the staccato I like most is the XL. No comp, long barrel, amazing trigger. That is my second favorite. I love, love, love that gun. I just have a soft spot for compensators. Uh, do you like the Holosun 507 comp? It is my favorite red dot. Uh, in my filibustering material I was preparing when I thought that nobody was going to be commenting, uh, it was going to be talking about how the Holosun 507 comp is my current favorite red dot, despite uh, the lack of tactical advantages that a closed emitter dot has. The advantages in performance shootability wise when you're shooting at a higher performance level, the 507 comp is just it, man. I'm, I'm going to start putting those on all of my stuff. I'm going to keep some hard duty optics like the RMR HD um, and like the, the, the Aimpoint Acro P2. I'm keeping those on like my, on, on guns to obviously test. And if I ever find myself next to a grenade going off, it's nice to have that kind of stuff. But the 507 comp is going on all the stuff I shoot frequently. CZ released a Shadow 2 compact six months ago and Colt has yet to put it on the CZ USA website. Are you serious? My God. Yeah, you have all you have all the tea. You're spilling the tea about CZ. I, I, I'm digging it. 
Hollow, hollow Sun Comp gives you all the options of reticles. Good choice. Yeah, but I only really like the one, and I wish we could get it in a bigger dot MOA. Springfield's loss. I agree, man. Thoughts on Langdon Tactical uh, versus Shadow 2 for CO competition? Currently run the Shadow 2 with brass grips for balance and love it. Interested in the LTT, though. It's going to be hard to beat that Shadow 2 with brass grips. It's going to be really hard. Uh, it's just different. I would say it's not better, but it's different. Uh, if you're looking for a different experience, then yeah. I mean, I I love what Langdon does. I would probably get a um, a model of Beretta that is more suited to competition. I don't know what uh, division you're shooting in or what competition even, but I would get whichever Beretta is best for that, and I would send it to Langdon and have him work his magic if you're looking for something different but the shadow to brass grips hard one to beat glock customer service is always good wink yeah uh most most of the time psa saber upper is the same price of a standard bcm oh okay well there you go bcm absolutely arrow precision yes arrow precision donkey defense he he knows all the good stuff bcm has uppers with bcg included for 800 right now there you go so there are all of your recommendations for ars right there um, yeah, arrow precision. It's one of those things you're live on camera and there's pressure and you're like, ah, all of a sudden I forgot everything that I know. I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, I think I paid about 1500 for a complete BCM. Yeah. Use arrows lower now. Yeah. And BCM uppers there. That's a good, that's a good option too. Uh, first gen MMP nine, this was about six months ago. Oh, okay. So see, this is, that just goes to show Smith and Wesson can be inconsistent. If you're getting bad customer service from Smith, just like hang up and call back another time and get a different person. <laughs> just like, you know, trying to dispute your cable bill. Uh, you can get a BCM upper for 800 rapid charging handle 90 lower. Yeah. This is all, all good advice. Halo devs know the future of bullpups way back in 2001. What I want is I want a 10 gauge top loading pump shotgun. That's what I want. Um, and I also want like, um, like one of the Magnum pistols. I've gotten close, but yeah, Halo Bungie knew what was up. 1500 for Nighthawk work plus cost of Springfield. Hmm. Yeah, you're getting into the territory of some of some better options there. Because the thing is with the Springfield, what are you can do like go through it and have like forged parts put in. You can just start with a Dan Wesson. Um, but yeah, I, here's the thing: Springfield makes great exoskeletons for 1911s and 2011s. Um, so if you want to take that exoskeleton and hand it off to Nighthawk and have them work their magic, I say go for it. Uh, any HKs in your CCW lineup? HK 45C and USP 9C here. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll carry my USP 45 or USP 9. C, uh, just to, just to mix it up. Plus I know it's going to work. Oracle arms, 2311. Any thoughts? Yes. I think it has potential. I would love to get one of my hands. Um, it just, it's difficult. I want the, I want the pro model with the ports. Uh, I really enjoyed shooting that shot. I need to shoot it more because watching the footage back of everything I shot at industry day at the range, I'm like watching the recoil impulse. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. It, it functioned well. Excellent fit and finish. Excellent uh, internal design of the pistol. I was really impressed with it. The guy broke it down and showed me all the stuff. And we nerded out over. We like nerding out over that stuff. I think that's a lot of potential. I I want to get one of my hands and put it through its paces so I can tell you guys whether or not to buy it. My local FFL recently raised a transfer fee. Oh god, that's the worst. But I mean, I understand from their perspective too because it sucks for them. Reasonable price for a transfer fee. They did this due to PSA and them not being able to make a profit. Yeah, no, I. I'm going to be honest with you. Everybody's raising their transfer fees. Uh, usually a new gun store will open up and they'll be like $20 transfer fees to get people in the door. And then they're like, oh my God, this is terrible. We're not making any money. People are just using us. And then they'll raise it to 50. But I've even seen 60. I've seen the upwards of 80 in Scottsdale. Uh, so I think 20 was like a, I think you, I hope you took advantage of that for as long as you could. But 50, unfortunately, seems reasonable to me. Sorry. Good thoughts on the FMJ versus SD ammo, considering the three to five times cost of SD. I'd rather have three to five. Yeah, I agree. Honestly, that, I think that's sound logic. Uh, first of all, why not both, right? Maybe get you know a thousand of self-defense, just not to use, not to cycle through your gun, but to store and then get you know like 3,000 of FMJ. I think that's kind of a good... That way, it's like if the SHTF situation goes on for a while, you have the self-defense ammo, but if it's like permanent, you'll have a bunch of FMJs that obviously are lethal. Uh, I wish someone would tell the truth on how terrible the trigger is on the Daniel defense pistol. Okay. Here's the thing though. I don't think it's a terrible trigger. I think it's a heavy trigger. I think there's a difference. Uh, it is short, crisp reset was decent, at least on the one that I handled. It was a heavy trigger though. Uh, I think that's going to be a problem for them. They, they have a, you know, a 1911 and Glock baby. It's like some full metal alchemist, like chimera stuff that they're putting together there. But 
uh, they, I think they, that trigger needs to be, needs to be lighter. The one that I held probably had like a nine pound trigger. Uh, and they said they're shooting for five. I think they need to shoot for four. Uh, but I think that a lot of it is, you know, cover your butt. <laughs> Over a hundred people in here. Nice work. I, I didn't know what to expect. So this is, this is pretty, pretty neat. Uh, by the way, Captain Phil is saying howdy to pistol Pete. Um, Daniel defense is way overpriced. It'll come down. It always does. So dude, so what are your impressions of the Terran tactical copperhead G 34? I think it's really cool. Uh, I think it's a lot to spend on a Glock, but you know, if you want a nice Glock, I think it's cool. Um, for air 15, what about Geisley? Yeah. Uh, shout out buddies Geisley. That's that's, that seems to be a decent choice. Again, it's one of those things where like a lot of these people are all using the same parts. It's just, you know, how are they putting it together? Uh, but yeah, guys, Lee, uh, that, the one that I shot was really good. I'm just not quite sure of the price range on that. I'm not like, I am a handgun nerd and I own, like I said, a lot of rifles. I know a lot of the specs of the rifles, uh, but since I'm not buying them all the time, I, I'm, the prices aren't off the top of my head. You have an HK SP five. No, I don't. I wish I did. I do not. I every time I have the money for an SP5, I buy a 2011. Uh, I'm a Grand Power fanboy. Can't wait to see you review one. Yes, I. Man, there's been enough demand that I'm keeping an eye out for a Grand Power. Are you planning to review the PSA Dagger Micro? There was even a Gucci version, I believe. There was a Gucci version of the Saber Dagger at Shot, which I'm really excited for. Uh, I do have a PSA mi uh, Micro Dagger on the way, I, and it's the like G48 length with the integral like X Macro compensator on there. So yes, I will be reviewing that. It's probably going to be a month out, maybe two months. Uh, thoughts on the best hollow points for EDC? Yep, touched on this earlier. Short answer, uh, if, if you just want my opinion on what's the best, uh, Federal HST 124 plus P or Federal HST 147 grain. Either one of those is good to go. If you can't find HSTs, get Spear Gold dot 124 plus P. Do you still like and use the Radiant Ramjet Afterburner? Yes, uh, I, I don't really shoot Glocks without it anymore. Uh, except obviously for like 10 mil and stuff like that. But yes, uh, 100%. Oh, shit. Keep bumping this microphone. Uh, Radian Ramjet Afterburner and uh, uh, DPM soft captured system in a Gen 4 or Gen 5 or the soft system in a Gen 3. Uh, best combination on a Glock. It makes the Glock shoot like a more expensive, more expensive gun. I almost said nicer gun. More expensive gun. Don't want to trigger anybody. Someone got it. I appreciate you. Uh, ever watch student of the American rifle with good old Chad, his knowledge and build videos are great. Demonstrate that ARs are not Legos. Yes. And it, quality information. I recommend everyone checks it out. Uh, I'm interested in Walter PDP steel frame for USPSA for easy maintenance and reliability. I think that's a, I think those are decent pros for using one for competition. Absolutely. Uh, that is a great reason. Um, uh, I can't speak to reliability cause I haven't tested it. I, t I'm, I've been in the middle of a P Walter PDP. SD pro review for a long time. And I did have reliabilities off the bat with that. Pretty sure it was magazine related. I uh, had to send it back to Walther actually. Uh, so I would vet it, vet it for reliability, but it seems like once they're, once it's how it's supposed to be, it's a, it's very reliable, but yes, the PDP steel frame, super dope. I like it way better than the standard PDP, but it's also like twice the price. So any chance for Langdon HKP 30 on your channel? Yes, there is a chance if I can source one locally uh, because it's just, it's, everyone's asked me for like $2,000, $3,000, $2,000, $3,000, or $3,000 guns. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm, I don't make a lot of money on YouTube. So, and I, I try to, at the very least break even on the channel. I'm I've, I've started breaking even. I, I appreciate you guys so much. Like the more you subscribe, the more you share, the more, the more my videos are seen, the more they're liked, the more comments that are left, all that engagement. That's all thanks to you guys grows the channel. The more the channel grows, the more opportunities I have for sponsorships. Uh, which helps offset the demonetized videos on YouTube. So I've, I've really figured out mostly what to avoid to be demonetized on YouTube. So I've, I've been getting decent ad revenue, but yes, I do. Like there's so many guns I want to feature on the channel. This is one of them. Uh, honestly, if anybody is in the Phoenix or Scottsdale area and doesn't mind giving up their gun for like a week or two, uh, and they trust me to return it, uh, send me a DM on Instagram or reach out to the email on my profile. Uh, maybe we could feature some stuff on the channel because I, it's one of those things where it's like dropping like 10 grand on all these guns that people want for the channel just isn't feasible. So I do the best I can with horse trading guns, uh, 
with, you know, the deal I have with Bear Arms Firearms in Scottsdale now that is, uh, I get a little bit of benefit from, but not, not a lot. Uh, every little bit helps. So I appreciate you guys and your engagement. The more you engage with my videos, the more subscribers I get, uh, the more likely we are, man, I always point out it's mirrored. The more likely we are to get that P30 on the channel. Um, Turkey's opinion has videos showing the performance of Underwood Extreme Defender Penetrators and clear gel. This is what makes the USP OP as it can shoot 45 super out of the box. Yeah, 45 super is dope. Uh, I've noticed that you cover a lot of pistols. You're going to cover some rifles. Yes, rifle stuff is coming. It's just, I'm I'm a handgun nerd. I love, they're my favorite to shoot. Um, like some people even accuse me like, do you not lack assault weapons? Uh, no, I love, whew, bring them on. Take as many as you can give me. Uh, it's just, I'm a nerd about handguns. Uh, but yes, rifle content to come. I was talking to some companies at SHOT Show, hoping to get some rifle stuff uh, so I can feature it on the channel. It just, it's one of those things I, since I love handguns so much, I find interesting ways to spin videos uh, to make them interesting. And with rifles, I'm just like, okay, how many AR-15 rifles can exist on YouTube? So I just have to get more creative with them. Another huge obstacle for me on the channel is I'm so grateful for the range I have access to. I can reserve that big desert bay. I don't have to worry about anybody shooting me in the back or a bullet landing on my head. Uh, and I have the freedom to run that bay to an extent, but I can't shoot like fruit. I can't shoot Tannerite. And it, I'm limited with what I can do with like rifles and shotguns and stuff like that. You can only do so much in that, in that bay shooting paper and steel. Uh, so yes, long gun content to come. I, I have some ideas, definitely. Does the Glock 34 have a place in self-defense in your opinion? Yes, it does. Absolutely. Muzzle velocity from a G34 is awesome. Uh, yeah, I recommend the G34 for self-defense all day, all day long. Have you tried the LTT PX4? I have not, but oh my, people tease me. People tease me with this LTT PX4 all the time. Uh, I waited so long for my Beretta 92 to get fixed up the way I wanted it to from Langdon Tactical that I'm like, I honestly should have gotten started on the PX4 at LTT a long time ago, just because it would be done by now. But I'm like, I like, don't even want to wait. Don't even want to deal with it. Uh, but yes, LTT, I'm, God, it's over, it's over here. Uh, the LTT PX4, especially with the announcement of the GSD with the heavier barrel, absolutely it's on my list. When, when, I, when I have a couple Gs to drop, hands down, I'm getting one of those. Cannot wait. What is your day job? Uh... Uh, I worked in market research and brand naming for a really long time. Uh, nowadays I do YouTube and I do writing and I do consulting, uh, and I write in many different areas. So that's kind of what's keeping me going, but I was very, very lucky to have the gig that I had for as long as I had it. Uh, oh, and firearm instruction. Of course, I'm teaching people how to shoot very, very frequently. Um, it got to the point where it's like, I didn't want it to blow up because I don't want to be a firearm instructor. Um, like that's not, that's not my dream or my aspiration. I just really, I enjoy helping people shoot. Uh, so I didn't want it to blow up, but it got to the point where there were so many people asking that now I basically just do it on referral and that keeps me really, really busy. So yeah, very, very lucky, uh, with what I've gotten to do in my life. Uh, Geisley has great sales for the patriotic holiday. You're getting your first. Yep. Very good info. We plan on getting the Canic TTI. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if I can get one. If my local shop gets one in, I'll probably pick one up, but I'm not like seeking one out like a, like a heat seeking missile. How do you feel about your channel growth so far? Any sub goals for 2024? I feel very good about it. Uh, wow. I think a year ago I had, I have just maybe broken 20,000. And now we're over 80,000. And like the year before that, I was at like 1,500. So yeah, it's growing really well. Uh, YouTube's not making it easy. Uh, it's, and not just for gun channels, but the way the YouTube algorithm is right now, it is like everybody's feeling it. It's it's rough. It used to be if you posted a video on a topic, YouTube would, would like show it to people. And so you could like, I could do a video. I just like pick a gun out of my gun safe, do a video on it. People watch it. If you go back on my channel a couple of years ago, it's like, you know, P365. I was nobody. P365 video got like 60,000 views. It was crazy. And I like, I, you know, it wasn't something special. It had been out for a while. It's not like I did it at launch. I waited, a, you know, like a year or two. Now with the algorithm, it, your video has to be a slam dunk or it's going to bomb. And maybe you'll get a second chance, like three to six months after it's out. So it is, it is not easy. It's really hard. I am now at the point where I'm making decent enough money on here to, uh, make it worth my time. 
Uh, but the sponsorships are really, really the game changer. And I'm this close to 100K. So my sub goal for 2024 is 150K by the end of the year. And that is completely doable at this pace. Um, uh, hopefully 100K very soon. Did you shoot the Walther PDB 4 inch steel frame? I did. And it was one of my top guns at SHOT Show Industry Range Day. How's the 9MC holding up? Perfectly still recommend it. We've got you back to help you grow. Thank you so much. Recent subscriber, really enjoy your energy and great knowledge base. Thank you. Welcome to the channel. I really appreciate having you here. It's just great to have nice, decent gun owning people in the community. Appreciate all of you. Why does the P320 have so many problems? SIG having, <laughs> that, that's a big question. Uh, SIG having so many QC issues. I, I, I gotta be careful with that on YouTube. There people are coping hard, sold all my P320 and went to Glock thoughts. I do not trust the P320, especially appendix carry. I don't blame you. I do not blame you for not trusting the P320. Um, I don't like the P320 regardless of the issue. So that's why I kind of don't really have an opinion on it. Uh, I just say, do your research and make your decision accordingly. I've personally never had a P320 go off on me. So that's all I can say. That being said, I prefer other offerings than the P320. I do really like the P365 series though. Just be aware with those. I've seen them at very high round counts. I'm talking like 7,000 plus dead triggers. And I've even seen it happen at lower round counts, like 2,500 to dead trigger. So something to be aware of. I'm. It's one of those things, maybe it's user induced, right? Maybe someone took the FCU out and messed with it. Who knows? Um, but I don't blame you for getting away from P320 and going to a different manufacturer. I recommend Glock and Smith & Wesson M&Ps for striker guns right now. Uh, I live in Gilbert AZ. I wouldn't mind lending you some guns that you haven't reviewed yet. Yeah, like I said, hit me up on Instagram, uh, on DMs or via email. I just want to make sure that you are comfortable. I know uh, I completely understand being protective about your guns. So just kind of like let you know how it goes, how long I need it. Maybe we could figure something out. I have a P30L from Langdon Tactical. I could probably send out. Yeah, again, hit me up. Uh, which gunsmith cat is better, Rally or Mini? <laughs> I'm a simp for Rally. Uh, an FN 509C with 2K plus downrange, not one malfunction. Yeah, they're great, man. They're just expensive for what they are. I got a SIG P365 Spectre comp and just wasn't happy with it. Sold it and settled with a new Glock 29 Gen 5, the thumper, the lightning. Uh, checks all the boxes. Any chance for review? Not one on YouTube has Glock 29. Yeah, I wish I would have done a 29 review when I had one, honestly. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say maybe if my local shop gets a Gen 5 in, I might just do one because I still have some 10 millimeter left over from the G20 video. 17 L er day. You know what's up. You know what's up. Uh, the Spectre comp just wasn't what I thought it was. Might just not be a SIG guy though. I do like the 226 and 220. Yeah, it, that's the thing is helping someone pick out a gun is like helping someone pick out a pair of shoes. <laughs> it's like, oh man, this pair of shoes, best pair of shoes I've ever worn. You hand it to someone else and they're just like, this is the worst pair of shoes I've ever had. It's kind of what it is. I mean, it, really it's all just consumerism. At the end of the day, guns are just, you know, grips, triggers, sights. And as long as they are reliable, what else do you need? Skills with a Z. You Glock, your Glock 45 still running like a champ? Yes, of course it is. Honest feelings with the Daniel Defense H9. Heavy trigger. Uh, I have reservations about how it might perform reliability-wise, but it felt really good in hand. I'm excited what they're going to do with it. Uh, I've got the Canic Rival S. If they don't make a TTI version with the steel frame, it's a huge miss. I agree 100%. It's already a very nice shooting gun without the comp. I agree. If they do not do that Rival S TTI crossover, they are leaving money on the table. Um, but unfortunately the way the industry goes now is there's a lot of double dipping where, uh, you know, it's like they'll release the shittier version of something first and everybody buys it cause it's a new hotness. And then they release like the, the, the slightly better version. Everyone's like, Oh, that's the one I wanted. And they're like trying to sell the old one off and they're buying that one. And then they release the ultimate version. And then everyone's selling that. It's just, I don't blame them. It just sucks for us, but I agree 100%. Any thoughts on rerunning your online pistol class? How did the first round go? The first round went excellent. Uh, I, a lot of great feedback. So that was my beta launch of the live pistol class. And my intent with that was to, it was the cheapest it was ever going to be. And people could come with me as, come with me, it's a Mario. Uh, people would come with me while I'm creating the class live. And like I said, got excellent feedback. Everyone who was in there just, it was, it was absolute praise. One, it told me that it was, that the program that I built was good. And two, it told me people are interested. My intent with that is to have a, uh, a program that you can then buy. So, uh, I might do a live course again, uh, on that, probably another live course on a different subject, 
but I will be doing an online, uh, like a la carte course. Um, I'm still building it out. I don't want to say too much, but expect it this year. Um, probably in the next three months that that should be going live. And I'm very excited. It's going to be a very accessible way for people to learn how to most efficiently shoot a pistol because a lot of people, I could go off on a tangent about how people shoot pistols wrong. Um, if anyone wants to know, ask in the comments, uh, change. I don't know. I, I forgot what, what that was probably about. Do you own more DSA, SF or SA pistols? Like, look, like look back at my gun safe. That's a great question. I would say, oh man, I, nowadays I probably own more just like hammer fire pistols in general. Uh, like if you bundle up DASA and, 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 uh, and SA pistols, that would hands down be it. But if you're separating it by those three categories, it's probably even on all three accounts. It's probably the same amount of single action striker fire and double action single action. I definitely prefer hammer fire, but I have nothing against striker fire. Thoughts on dots on your preferred shit hits fan pistol, or would you go irons to avoid maintenance? Apologies for all that. Yeah, no, I, I feel like no shame talking about good old SHTF. Um, preferred optic, man. Again, it's one of those things where you're, you're live and you're like, I forgot everything that I know. Um, like obviously some stuff that comes to mind would be stuff that has really, really long battery life and that it's easy to change batteries, right? Cause you don't want to be like breaking Loctite and taking your RMR off of your gun. Uh, man, uh, I would say like, like an Acro P2 would be a really decent choice. Uh, I would even like dive into hollow. Sun. basically the moral of the story here for SHTF, I would go closed emitter. Um, if it's something that needs to last you forever, it's not that it's not even that it's more durable, that it's more resistant to adverse conditions. Um, so yeah, I'd probably go like Acro P2, hollow sun, like 509 T if you have a smaller gun an EPS or an EPS carry, like one of those, uh, is it would be my go-to. Uh, any chance of shadow systems, MR920? Yes, there is a chance. Uh, I, I would definitely like if my local shop gets one in, I will see what I can do to get one. Uh, what reliability issues are you foreseeing on the H9? May all of them. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'll believe it when I see it. Let me put it that way. I, I think that they probably did as much testing as they could, but like putting it into production like actual ramping up the tools to go into mass production, putting it all together and cranking it out in insane numbers. That's what it's going to take. So I'm, I'm at the point where as a YouTuber, I really want to get it right when it comes out. But at the same time, I get so much crap when I get one, when it comes out and it has problems because people are like, well, no, no, no. You just have to wait a year to buy it. So I'm, now I'm like, okay, well, what do I do? Do I get it new and share the problems or do I wait? And everyone's mad that I'm not doing it sooner but it's not going to have problems. But then what about the people who buy it new, load it up, put a magazine through it, and then put it in their nightstand and they have, you know, a ticking time bomb defending their home. So I don't know. I'm, we'll see. I'm as far as problems, you know, the typical failure to feed, failure to extract that kind of stuff. I don't see anything like major, like guns blowing up or anything. Uh, who's winning the Taylor Swift show tomorrow. Again, I'm live. I need to be really careful about what I'm saying. Cause I can't edit it out. Um, Let's just say, uh, not us, <laughs> we're not winning. Uh, sometimes with YouTube videos, I will increase the playback speed not needed here. Yeah. It's one of those things where I normally talk fast. Anyways, I talk fast. I think fast. I act fast. I'm like, you know, the wolf in Pulp Fiction, but, uh, yeah, live keeping up with comments. I'm, uh, I'm ramping it up as fast as I can. What's the fixed fix for low led T low left. Oh, low left. Probably what's the fix for low left shooting, uh, getting good. No. <laughs> Uh, no shot anticipation. Um, you need to grip with your support hand way harder and dry fire way more frequently and shoot more, get used to the gun going off. Uh, saw a video yesterday where DDH nine was key holding about 50% of the time. Just one example, but not good. Whoa. Yikes. Thinking about upgrading ear pro our sword is worth money over Walker razors. It depends on what you want to do with them. And I feel like that's like my go-to answer for all this stuff. It depends on what you want to do with them. Uh, I run Walker razors. If that tells you what I think. Um, but if you, you know, obviously you need communications or anything that's worth that extra money, then yeah, Sorton's are really nice. It's about as good as, well, about as good as it gets. 
Dry fire practice and proper grip. Yeah, dude. Whoa, nailed it. Pistol Pete, my man. Are you into the 3D printing 2A scene at all? Uh, I'm not into it, but I respect it. And I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very interested in it. Oh man, I'm almost caught up with comments, guys. I like your videos, dude. I like your comments, and uh, I like your name too. I think I think you're a really cool person. I appreciate you being here. Platypus lead times are gonna skyrocket when updates go live. Yes, they are. But I want that grip texture, <laughs> something fierce. But yeah, you're 100 right. All right, man. Okay, as far as I can see, I'm caught up on comments. Uh, like I said, I'm here as long as you guys want to be here. YouTube cuts me off at 12 hours. So definitely appreciate all the com uh, comments. I touched on earlier that the Hollow Sun 507 comp is now my favorite red dot. And it's just because when it comes to actual shooting performance, uh, when you have a, a high demand for performance, right? So you're coming out of the holster and shooting very quickly with precision, that 507 comp offers better durability than the SRO, no overhang, that is the my biggest problem with the SRO. Uh, and I find myself, like when I'm shooting one of my guns that doesn't have a 507 comp on it, I'm wishing that I had the 507 comp on it. So I'm gonna be adding a lot more of those to the channel. The only issue, props to Hunter Constantine, uh, he racked it off of, a, off of a plate rack, and there's just a little bit of a bulge on the exterior of the glass, that when you rack it off of something like a steel plate rack, uh, it will just shatter the glass. So Radian is coming out with their Guardian optic plate that has the guard on the end of it. And for once, like it's actually going to be a useful addition. So it's only going to be for Glock to begin with. But if people can start making that stuff for the 507 comp, honestly, more likely Hollow Sun's probably going to take that feedback and like build out the frame a little more. And then it's just going to be like the best open emitter optic on the planet. All right, we got some more comments. Yeah, like I said, I got I got filibuster material on guns for I was gonna say days, but probably for years. Uh, thoughts on direct mount green? Does Hellcat green dots Hellcat and Pro version? I don't know. I uh, if, it, if you can uh, punch up your grammar a little bit, uh, like I, you're wanting to know, like thoughts on direct mounting a green dot to a Hellcat and a Pro version. If that's the case, uh, sure. Go for it. Uh, uh, direct milling, direct mounting is always the best option. The only issue with it, the reason I don't direct mill any of my stuff anymore is now, uh, you know, I have I like to get the new stuff out on the channel, right? And having plates makes me future proof. So, like, if I was just me, I'd like direct mill for, I don't know, like RMR, right? And just run like you know all the hollow suns and all that kind of stuff. But then acro comes out and I'm like, okay, do I have to buy a new gun or a new slide to run this acro? But if I have a plate system, I can adapt to it. So it's future proofing it. So if you want to future proof your gun and update dots as they come out, uh, I would say run plates. But if you just want the sturdier, better version, you're committed to a dot footprint, then 100% direct mill it. Really like the idea of the closed hollow suns with the backup solar panel. Yeah, for sure. Uh, love my EPS carry, uh, especially if all your batteries crap the bed somehow. Absolutely. Uh, but the, the thing about the solar fail safe, right, is it works until it doesn't. So it is what it is. But yeah, there are the ones out there. Uh, hollow sun, man, I, I'm, I need to do a video soon on my thoughts on hollow sun because I had a very, very interesting interaction with them at SHOT Show uh, and honestly, a really impactful one. So I don't know if you guys care to hear about that. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear what my conversation with Hollow Sun was about. But at the end of the day, it's clear that they've won. <laughs> like they've won the optic race. Um, it, basically, they're doing what the firearm industry does, where a dot comes out and it has problems, and then you give them a few months, and then it's all fixed up and it works for the most part, right? Uh, and like all of the unlucky QC stuff I had was typically in new releases. Uh, and all the QC stuff I saw from friends, from patrons, from subscribers, they were usually newer releases. Like that first EPS carry I had, the shake awake stopped working. I've gotten like three EPSs since then with no issue. So yeah, I I could go off on how Hollow Sun has won and uh, the, the pros and cons of that. Uh, you leave it on the two MOA. Yeah, I do. Yeah, don't use anything else. Uh, favorite three double action, single action pistols. Okay. This is not my official list. Cause I like to, I like to put like actual thought into my lists. Uh, I, I, first of all, I love making lists. It's like one of my favorite things to do. I love ranking things I should say, but off the top of my head, 
it would be like HK USP Beretta 92 and CZ 75. Those, those series of pistols, uh, people roast me for not putting 226 in there. And uh, trust me, it's probably number four. Uh, I just got the 507. Oh, and the PX four G I just got the 507 comp on the new bull armory Tomahawk that comes ported, loving it. I'm glad you brought that up because I have a ported Tomahawk on the way to me. I'm picking it up on Monday and I'm really excited for it. So I'm, I, so how much, first of all, how much have you shot it? Like, is, is it, you said you're loving it. How many rounds do you have through it? Is it really good? I'm really excited about mine. 1911 grip angle on essentially a Glock clone ported. It's got the, their updated grip texture. That's the same as like the, the bull tack series. Just everything on paper is amazing with that thing. I'd like to thank you. Your videos are really helpful as a new shooter from France. Oh, from France. Uh, keep up the good work. Wish you the best. Well, from the United States, I love you as France. We owe you for your help in the early days of our country. <laughs> Jokes aside, I love you, man. Thank you. And I'm so glad that you find the channel to be helpful. Bought two Smith & Wesson MP 10 millimeters. Both failed to feed. That's not the first time I've heard that. Sent them both back twice to Smith & Wesson. Still jam. Smith & Wesson refused to exchange them. Yes, I have heard that a lot. That's why I don't recommend the Smith & Wesson MMP 10 millimeter yet. Uh, the only modern production 10 millimeter that I recommend is the Gen 5 Glock 20. Uh, I, I want to give them time to work out the kinks with the 29 Gen 5. We, I want to see how they do on a larger scale because the G20 MOS Gen 5 on launch had issues. So, but MMP, man, I'm, I, I can't believe they're still having problems with that. They need to sort that out. Uh, Shadow one, shadow two, Berta 92 G. Uh, that's pistol Pete. You got good taste, my dude. Um, although I will say kind of a cop out shadow one and shadow two, not a very diverse list. Anyone tried micro dagger? Uh, yeah, I'm getting one soon. I'll let you know if anyone else has feel free to answer his question. Uh, thoughts on swamp Fox optics. I want to crack in, but I haven't put it through its paces yet. I don't like them, but I also don't have much time behind them. I've shot one and not a lot through it. I don't know. I just, I'm a buy once, cry once guy. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've hit the point where like hollow sun has become a buy once, cry once for the budget options. And it's typically better than the more expensive options. So it's one of those things. Swamp, Pop, Swamp Fox is going to have to absolutely bring it to compete with hollow sun. Cause I just default to hollow sun for my budget recommendations. Beretta 9mm USA, I appreciate you. Honestly, I appreciate all of your support. You were the first channel that really reached out to me and you were like, you know, very supportive. So I appreciate you. Um, you keep up the good work as well. Uh, man, if you want if you want to see someone with great taste in 1911s, check out Beretta 9mm USA's channel, although most of you probably already know about him. Um, ring it. Definitely want to hear about Hollow Sun. Um, Yep. And so do you. Uh, and then more talking about the, the Hollow Sun Solar Backup doesn't do anything if it's running off the battery mode as it should be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, MMP Spec Series. Uh, yeah, I'll, I have not shot one yet. I honestly have not even seen one yet, but it looks interesting. Again, I'm excited to see what they do with it. It's not how I would have set it up, but it looks interesting. I would probably go a different direction for an MNP right now, personally. Uh, yes, all solar and has been great. Good to hear that Hollow Sun's doing the solar right. Um, Swamp Fox just really, I don't know, man. Red Dot reviews, it's its hard. Something has to really catch my attention uh, for me to do a Red Dot review because there are so many, like everybody is jumping into the Red Dot game and Swamp Fox just had a great marketing budget to, um, and put a lot in people's hands to get the name out there. So we'll see. I'm not going to say no. Uh, I will say maybe the, the thing is they'll send me one in, in a heartbeat. They'll send me one. It's just, is it worth my time to review it when hollow suns are doing great? Uh, if someone else wants to hear the hollow sun, get any Vegas bunnies, uh, my wife, uh, hundred rounds just got it. Yes. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah. I'm interested to see how it goes. Okay. So I'm not glossing over the hollow sun conversation. I just want to make sure if there are any quick ones that I can answer really quick before di diving into a story I can get to, uh, armor HD versus hollow sun 507 comp. It uh, depends on what you want to do with it. Um, 
QC seems to be better than Hollow Sun, but is it? I've seen so many RMRs go back. Although I haven't seen many issues with the HD. Uh, between those two, it depends on what you want to do with it. Are you running it so hard that there are like bombs going off next to it? Or, you know, you're you're in a situation where you're, you're going to be in car crashes all the time, or you're jumping off a build, like any kind of crazy, uh, situation. Okay. Best example. Are you taking any classes where you're beating the absolute snot out of these things and you're doing it all the time, every single weekend throughout the year, then the RMR HD hands down. I do. And the, the biggest pro about the HD is it's front facing light sensor. That is amazing technology. It's my belief that that's going to be on every single red dot in the future. That's how good it is. Um, performance wise, if you were, if you're talking about like, I want to shoot the tier one concealed three sevens drill and break the world record with it, the hollow sun 507 comp is the way to go. Um, so ask yourself what you want to do with it. Me for everyday concealed carry the hollow sun 507 comp is durable enough. Um, it's, I would even call it significantly durable that the pros outweigh the cons. Uh, but I, those are like probably my top two choices. The HD is my durable choice. And I would say tactical choice. If you're running it in a, in a duty role, for example, and you know, you're constantly running weapon lights at night, you're having to like light people up or offhand lights, light people up. And it's like, you have, you know, street lamps and there's someone out in the dark or there's someone's under a street lamp and you're in the dark. If you're having those situations, the HD hands down is the tactical choice, but the 507 comp is the performance choice. Um, ba -ba -ba. any other quick questions before I get into the hollow sun story, uh, that I can answer really quick. A lot of these, okay. I'm just gonna, uh, well, I regret buying an acro P2 for 540 and having my Glock slide specifically milled for it. Yes, you probably will. Uh, that being said, it's not a bad choice. My recommendation is to get uh, go to a company that will do irons rear. I think Jaeger works will do irons rear because of the way the P2 is when you get it direct milled and irons forward, it doesn't, I don't have my P2 here. Uh, it doesn't have the ledge that like the hollow suns have. It's like flat screen up against the back of the slide. So if you bend over, you're going to tummy print the lens. And if you reholster, you're, you're going to thumb print the lens and that just muddies up the, the window. Uh, so I would go irons rear if I were doing a P2 on a Glock. Uh, it, it's a great site. You, if you know, you love the P2, I would do it, but you might regret it. Okay. Yeah, man. Lots of, lots of questions, but, uh, I'm going to hop into, this is not going to be a long story. I'm going to try to make it like 60 seconds or less. My conversation with hollow sun at shot show. So anybody who has watched all of my hollow sun videos, uh, they will know that my very first hollow sun video, the 507 K review back when I was a nobody, um, I'm not saying like, I'm like a super somebody now, but I, I had like no subscribers. Um, I made a joke in there that it was made in China because it is. And it was the old, like, you know, how do you keep your laundry so soft? Mr. Chang an ancient Chinese secret. I just put like hollow sun over that. I made a meme out of it. And I hollow sun reached out to me, said they wanted to talk to me. The review did really well for the channel. I was the first person on YouTube to have a 507 K review. I drew, I drove to Tucson. I drove like, you know, two hours, two and a half hours to Tucson to get that site two and a half hours back to then run it and review it as fast as I could. So, because they were the first ones, there's a store shop in Tucson. They were the first ones to get it in. Um, this story is going to be two minutes, not one minute. I'm realizing that now. Um, anyways, I did the video. It did really well for me. It got the attention of hollow sun and a rep reached out and said he wanted to talk to me. And I was very, very excited because I was, you know, kind of new to the YouTube scene. And I'm like, this is like my, the first company that's reached out to me. This is exciting. Like I love this site. It'd be cool if they could send me other sites. And then the rep proceeded to, um, tell me to censor the video. He wanted me to go in and edit out the part where I said that it was made in China because it wasn't fair to hollow sun. Uh, there were, you know, Americans working for hollow sun. And I, you know, basically I just made the rebuttal back of like, listen, if it's made in China, it's fair to say that it is. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, right? Like, you know, it's like, yeah, there's cheap stuff made in China, but there's also good stuff made in China. It was just something that I said. And he got like really rude with me and really short with me and uh, got to the point of pretty much trying to bully me on the phone. And I thought that that was just so disgusting um, and just so upsetting. And then I think he kind of realized what he had done and he was like, well, you know, I, you did a good video still. So maybe we can get you, you know, dealer pricing on future optics or something like that. Uh, so he was like, I'll add you to the media list. 
And then he got like really grumpy and hung up. And I was like, okay. Then when their next site came out, I emailed him and he pulled the, who do you think you are that you can get this site? And he was like really rude via email, like, like nasty, nasty. And that was my view of hollow sun was they were bullies. They didn't want, they were trying to hide that their products were made in China because they know that there are certain Americans that want to buy American made and that it would, you know, people would go to their competition and spend a little more to buy American made. Uh, and when you follow the money at hollow sun, you know, a lot of people think that hollow sun is, you know, like an American owned company manufacturing in China. I would encourage everybody to look into what's actually happening. So I was very hard on them. Like uh, granted I did have QC issues and I did share those. That was all honest, but I, man, I teased them so hard. I, I made memes in every one of my videos about how just horrible they were as a company. Like they were just a really terrible company who was making kind of the best red dots out there. Well, uh, absolute bro Hunter Constantine. I was talking to him at shot at the hollow sun booth. And he told me that that did not line up with his experience at all. And then he introduced me to somebody at hollow sun and, uh, somebody with more pull than the guy who called me. He was not surprised at all that I had the interaction with the guy I had an interaction with that guy. Um, they, that's not, I'm not the first person he did that to, and they moved him along and that is when I had a really long, I mean, probably nearly an hour conversation with the guy. And he was telling me about the values of Hollow Sun and their, their goals with products in the future and how that was not a representation of their company at all. Now, granted, they are still made in China. And that is what it is. I'll always be honest about that. And I'll always be honest about their QC issues right at the start. But it's one of those things where... Uh, it was a relief to see that a company doing so well is actually being run by good people. And that that one bad apple basically gave me this entire negative review of the company altogether. So I will say that the people working at hollow sun are really good people. There's a reason they are innovating so well. There's a reason they are making the best dots out there. And it's because they have great philosophies as a company when it comes to uh, making dots. So the most important stuff to hollow sun is that they, uh, people run their dots as hard as they can and let them know of any issues that they have so that they can fix them as quickly as possible. And they are very, very good about doing it. So that was my interaction with hollow sun. And it kind of made me 180 on my opinion of them as a company. But again, remember the QC issues at launch and made in China, all things to consider, but I don't think it can be denied that they're winning the red dot race. And like I said, it was a relief to see that the people who are winning, um, while obviously it may not be ideal, their location and manufacture, that at the very least, they care about making the best product possible, not making the cheapest product possible and trying to get your money. So I have a little more respect for hollow sun and I'm looking for, it, it makes me, uh, feel less bad for, you know, reviewing their products and giving them airtime. So I'm, I'm kind of having a 180 experience on hollow sun. Um, I think that rude guy at hollow sun got a job with Colt. I just, uh, I just moved ahead to pistol Pete. Uh, they changed their, your, they changed their tune, uh, because you're getting views. A hollow sun does reverse engineer USA designs and make it in China. I hear you. Uh, normally I would agree with that. But like talking with Hunter, because Hunter's sponsored by Hollow Sun, he was just honestly shocked because he is like a made in America guy too. I mean, like the Hunter Constantine belt, the reason it's expensive is because he he requires that every little piece on that belt be made in America. Um, Hollow Sun just, uh, like I know, I hear you, they got their start reverse engineering stuff. That being said, they're taking it further than anyone else. And they're innovating faster than anyone else. They are winning, if not have won the red dot race regardless of their location and manufacture. I, I think that if you are somebody who has a, a moral hang up about that, 100%, there are other options on the market. Trijicon is going to be the best made in America option right now. But it's it's hard to deny that Hollow Sun is, is moving the needle. They're leading the industry. Um, yeah, nobody care, Mr. Hollow Sun rep. Yeah. All right, let's head back up to some comments. If anyone has anything else to say about that, I'll get down to it. I just want to make sure I'm hitting everybody's comments. Uh, lots of DASA bills, full size, three issued out. Got A-Rex zero. Uh, yeah, A-Rex is great. I'd love to get one on the channel. 
Uh, what I meant by saying the comp has all the reticles was for anyone trying to decide on the size of their reticle choice. Yes, I know. I, but my problem with those reticles, if you want to go bigger in reticle, you're getting like, you know, the donut with the dot in it or the horseshoe, horseshoe with a dot in that, like that kind of stuff. I just want a bigger MOA dot. I'm sure though there's, there's enough that was made for competition and there's enough demand in the competition world. They'll get the bigger MOAs out there and then everybody can be happy. Uh, any recommendations for four o'clock? IWB holster for bull armory. Oh, that's a rough one. Um, so I carried behind the hip for most of my life before switching over to appendix carry four years ago now. God, man, time flies. Um, honestly, I, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to recommend. I'm sure someone in the comments carries four o'clock. Cause right now I'm like appendix carry holsters are on the brain. Um, I'm trying, like, I'm trying to think if any of the companies I like make like i like jm custom kydex i don't know i think they might make it behind the hip i love um tenacore i don't know if they make it behind the hip if they do that would be a good option uh, i as much as i love tier one concealed i don't really like their um behind the hip holster option uh, i just i yeah so i would say look into those companies and i'm sure someone in the comments will uh, will help you out with that one recommended concealed carry with a tucked shirt i did a whole video on carrying with a tucked shirt uh I would recommend checking that video out, looking forward on the channel. My feelings on it still apply, but now I wear that comfort concealment belt or the Hunter Constantine belt underneath the pants with the, with the discrete carry concept clips. Um, so definitely check out the video. Most of my thoughts still apply on that. Uh, shout out to Compact, Burner 92 g and SIG226. Those are all solid choices. No one's going to judge you for that. We touched on that one. I'm really struggling uh, learning to use red dots. I've been shooting irons for over 20 years and the transition is proving difficult. Yet that's totally normal. I just want to let you know that's normal. Uh, that's why I recommend all new people start with dots because if you learn on a dot, irons are easy. If you learn on irons, dots can be difficult, uh, especially depending on the way you learn how to shoot with irons. If you learn front sight focus or if you learn, you know, like looking at the sights, switching to a dot, a dot is a nightmare. Uh, so I would just say seek out good red dot instruction. Again, there's lots of free information on YouTube. I've done a couple of videos. Uh, I would check out my videos. Do you really need a red dot for concealed carry or for EDC? And you should get a red dot for EDC and concealed carry. I touch on it there. I would check out those videos. Um, that, that will help definitely. But uh, target focus is the way that you shoot a dot. So you don't want to be looking at the dot. If you see, if the dot looks like it's moving like this, it's because you're looking at the dot You want to be target focused, looking through the dot. Um, and as far as uh, a lot of people struggle finding the dot out of the holster, right? That's the big struggle. That's one of those things that would take me a long time to give you instruction on that via, you know, verbally. Right. Um, so yeah, definitely seek out those two videos. I think you'll find useful information in those vids, just know that your experience is completely normal. Thoughts on the new cheetah? I think it looks cool. I, I think that it could be, I think these new cheetahs are, could be a good option for somebody with weaker hand strength because I don't like the Smith and Wesson Shield EZ series because the grip safety is non-starter for me. Like I have seen, I know John Korea at Active Self Protection has touched on this. I have also seen personally with students that bring that gun to me, older, you know, women with, with arthritis they can't push that back strap in. So it defeats the entire purpose. And it's too bad because, you know, the magazine's easy to load. The slide is easy to rack. But I think the Cheetah could be a good option. Um, and plus, they're super cool. I have a Hollow Sun 503 and a Strike Eagle 1 to 6 by Vortex. And I can't understand why you would want a red dot. The LPVO does everything better. The only reason is to save weight. I mostly agree. I mostly agree. Um, I, I'm going to tell you why I like LPVOs. And that is for SHTF to my uh, SHTF buddy. Uh, I wear glasses, right? If, if let's say uh, all of my glasses shatter or I can't wear them on or I can't wear them on I, again, live, my brain is broken and I can't wear them for whatever reason I get a uh, um, correction, right? Uh, it corrects my poor eyesight in the magnification. Um, a magnifier with a dot. The reason that doesn't work is because I have a nasty astigmatism in my right eye. So yeah, the, the magnification can correct my vision, but that dot is just a mess. So that's the reason I like LPBOs. Um, just for kind of a worst case scenario. Uh, PSA micro dagger is for the pores. P2000 is the best compact. I I love, I have a soft spot for the P2000 SK. I love that little blaster. Uh-huh. 
Surefire X300U versus T, A versus B. And that's speaking of like getting our eyesight checked, this is like being at the optometrist. U or T, A or B, one or two, Surefire or Streamlight. Uh, I personally like the spill of the U for my purposes. Um, the T is, I mean, obviously you can't go wrong with either. I just prefer the spill of the U. Uh, a versus B depends on what you're putting it on. I'm, I run steel frame guns, so I'm getting B's most of the time. I have one, I have two A's. I have one A for my Glock and I have one A with the rail lock uh, on an AR. All the rest of mine are B's going on metal frame guns, steel frame, aluminum frame. Uh, yeah, that's my personal opinion. Lead and steel Pandora PB3 could give Hollow Sun a run for the money. I look forward to it. I love competition. Uh, turbo and only get the B model. A model seemed way too wobbly. Okay, see that I'm glad you bring this up. Uh, the A is going to be wobbly on a lot of guns. There are fixes for it. Uh, like on one of my Glocks, I have to put a piece of like black electrical tape on the back to go up against the trigger guard when I mount it so it doesn't wobble. Uh, but yeah, the turbo is totally solid. Again, for my purposes, like running a handgun EDC, I, I carry it EDC. I like the spill of the U. Uh, nobody care. Yeah, we went over that. <laughs> nobody care, Mr. Hollow Sun Rip. Uh, trade wife greater than yeah, traditional wife gr greater than gun bunny. Absolutely agreed. Uh, nobody talked about the halls and SES. It's a direct mount, no plates and more sleek than the 507. I have hangups about the window size. I think that rude got hollow sun, got a job with Colt. Yep. Went over that. Totally agreed. They, yep. Uh, on, you know what? I, like I said, after my experience with Hunter Constantine, I'm inclined to not believe that, but Hey, anything is possible. Langdon has reasonably priced G34. Any experience with it? Do not get Langdon Tactical Glocks. Uh, I'm not saying they're bad. Langdon Tactical are good people, good hardworking Americans that do great work. Their Glock trigger jobs are awful. Click around my channel, you'll find them. Uh, the circle dot works better for astigmatism. If you don't want a prism scope, I can tell you from experience. Yeah, it, it's true. I just, I, I like making a dot work. Uh, perfect backup gun on that cheetah. Yeah, could be. Depends on where you carry it. Regarding the China phobia some people have, I have the same level regarding Turkish clones. I'm sick of all the gross 12 gauge bullpups and hundreds of Glock clone skews. I will never own a Turk gun. And I totally respect that. That's the beauty of our free country and our free market. You can buy whatever you want or don't want. Totally understand your hangups about Turkey and China. Uh, Shadow 2 Compact is a really good shooter for its price. I agree. I think when I was at the um, CZ booth at SHOT Show and I was shooting all of the CZs and Dan Wessons, not even kidding, Shadow 2 Compact was the the gun that I shot best with. I was just like, ring, like just transitioning between steel, so lightweight, you can transition so fast. It's a great shooter. I would love to put a DPM kit in it. Stick with irons. A dot on a pistol does nothing inside 20 yards. Uh, I think it depends on who you are. I think a lot of people, that's probably true. A lot of people would probably shoot irons and a dot pretty much the same inside of 20 yards. Uh, there's a lot of potential for a dot as far as speed, while maintaining precision inside of 20 yards. Uh, so somewhat agree, mostly disagree. Most comfortable Penix carry holster that is low profile and thin. As far as the Penix carry holsters go, I recommend tier one concealed, Tenacore and JM custom Kydex. Uh, I would look into those. Uh, as far as comfort goes, I mean, it's hard to say. I don't know what your body looks like. Uh, if only I could just see every inch of your body head to toe, just really dig in there and, and see what you're made of. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's hard to help you with. Like I said, it's like help. It's like, what's the most comfortable pair of shoes for running backwards on a treadmill? Like I, I can tell you what works for me, uh, but you could check out those companies. Those are the ones I recommend. No Turk guns. Then you're missing a lot of great guns. Hey, uh, yeah. I just want to say that, that T sauce is making, fully forged 1911s accessible, not saying they're the best, but make makes great ones accessible. And I mean, most canics are phenomenal. I had obviously massive issues with my MC nine and a lot of people commented that their rival S's were, were a few of them were having issues as well. So be aware, but yeah, yeah Turkey, uh, really, really cheap labor and they make pretty nice guns. I really like the hollow sun primary arms, ACSS Vulcan reticle for dots. I agree when you're learning dot, like until you hit basically advanced dot usage where it just becomes a useless feature, I think it's great. I just don't want people to start relying on it as a crutch. That's my only concern. Um, not really dot though. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, the Vulcan, yeah, the, the Delta, that Delta is super dope. The, the tr triangle, uh, has a good video series talking about calibers for self-defense. He calls 380 marginal. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would rather somebody have a 380 than anything smaller than that though, or nothing at all. Yes, yes, yes. Got Jotaro Kujo over there. Uh, your spot on LVPO works without glasses. I thought I was on. Oh yeah, exactly. Yep. Spot on. Uh, do you shoot train with irons on pistols at all for if it's pouring rain or something? Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's no way I can put a dot on every single gun until I'm sponsored by Swamp Fox Optics. I can't put a dot on all of my pistols. Um, that being said, once you learn how to shoot a dot, irons are cake because you just shoot target focused and use the front shot as the dot. So yeah, shoot. I shoot irons frequently. Um, I, I shot irons, like obviously most of my entire life. I see I'm resistant to new technology, even like going live here and handling these comments and stuff. I'm like figuring this all out. I just, man, I like things the way they used to be. I wish we could go back to the nineties, um, and even the eighties and just li live life back then. But um, I was resistant to red dots for a long time. And I, it, a lot of good free info online. Uh, I taught myself dots really, really well. Uh, it, it, when you've been shooting irons your whole life, it can be a challenge to move over to a dot. That's why I recommend everyone who's new starts with the dot. You ever shoot any, uh, tank folio make nice. Yes. I had back, especially back in the day. Yeah. Yep. Tank folio. Great. Kind of like entry option for that style of gun. There, there's a holster option for you for that four o'clock. Uh, yep. Uh, wild that rating didn't drop anything for the 43 X or any color options for the 19. So I, I talked to the guy, Joshua at Radian for like an hour and a half. Uh, the colors, he was afraid he announced those a little too soon. Uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, it, it was great for hype, but that might've been a mistake. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't expect colors anytime soon. I think they're prioritizing getting actual product out there. And then when all of that settled down, the colors are going to come next. Uh, as far as the 43 X and 48. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't either. I can knowing Radian, they don't want at least modern Radian. They don't want to release anything until it's 100%. Those P365 afterburners and ramjets ran 100% all day. They don't want to show anything until it's hundred percent. And he showed me some of the challenges in making the Ramjet afterburner for the 365 stuff. You wouldn't even think of challenges. So I'm assuming that they are making sure they're 100% before they release. So give them time. They're a small shop. I have a CZ S 2 C from their custom shop, fantastic trigger and gun. One of my favorites. Yes. CZ custom is local to me. They're about I don't know, like 40 minutes for me. I stop in there like once a month and chat with the guys. Yep. Uh, what is your nine millimeter ammo brand to train? Do you trust remanufactured ammo and Turkish ammo? Mm. So my, I buy whatever's on sale that isn't awful. Right. So it's like my baseline, the cheapest I'll go is blazer brass. Um, yeah. So I, I like PMC bronze. I like, uh, I like Fiocchi, um, mag tech, all that kind of stuff. Like basically whatever I can get cheapest at the time is what I'll get remanufactured ammo. I typically do not trust unless I personally know the people who are making it. Even then I'm, I'm kind of hesitant. Um, I, as far as buying remanufactured, remanufactured ammo online, don't do it. Turkish ammo. I wouldn't, uh, ever have issues with slide stop override and ever tried the Cagworks slide stop. No, the way I grip a pistol and the size of my hands, I, I haven't really had an issue. Um, Cagworks slide stop is dope. If you have that issue though, it's good. If you don't mind, uh, scratching up your gun a little bit which doesn't bother me at all, unless it was like a one-off. <laughs> what are the, what are your thoughts on the hollow sun EPS and EPS carry? Would you run them on your guns? Been thinking about running them on mine. Yes, absolutely. Check out my EPS carry review. It is my, oh, the, it is now the only dot I recommend the EPS carry for those slim line and micro guns hands down. Uh, as far as the EPS goes, I have one on my Glock 19. I have one on my M and P competitor. Love them both. Uh, if you, if you're not looking for the biggest window ever and you want a nice, uh, compact, um, enclosed emitter dot, then yeah, hundred percent, not having a lot of money. I purchased a lot of $100 or less dots on Amazon and have been, and have been reliable so far. Let's me put dots on everything I own. Uh, I hear you. I just wouldn't, I think that's fine. If you're running them at the range, uh, if you haven't had those hundred dollars or less dots break yet, you're probably not shooting as much as I shoot. 
Um, which, like, no shade. It's just probably truth. Uh, thoughts on ported or comps on handguns? Yes. Comps, especially because they don't shred your arm with frag and spalling uh, when you shoot from an unconventional position. Uh, yes, ports and comps on handguns, yes, as long as you understand that ports can spit spalling that will uh, rip your eyeball out of your head um, if you're not wearing eye protection. And compensators, both of those, if you're willing to vet them both for reliability, right? Like that's, let's be honest, the physics of handguns, physics of guns and physics of honestly of life and the universe and, and the world are just so confusing sometimes that uh, a compensator that should work just won't be working. You're like, what is going on? And then it turns out you have a pig nose frame on your Glock and like, oh, I never would have guessed that. So uh, yes, if you vet it for reliability, vet your individual gun with your individual ported barrel or compensator for reliability, highly recommended, even for serious use. Let's be modern Amish. <laughs> yeah. Would you recommend to put a aftermarket trigger in an AR? I'm looking at the aim surplus drop in trigger. Yes, as long as you vet it afterwards and you're not an idiot installing it. Uh, I'm new to firearm ownership and I'm still waiting for my LTC. Why? You goody two shoes. Do you follow the rules that the criminals who want to kill you are not following? Uh, jokes aside. Yeah. Make sure you're hundred percent squared away in uh, drawing holstering and being really safe. So much responsibility comes with carrying. First of all, congratulations to being a new firearm owner. Welcome to the community and welcome to the everyday carry and, and concealed carry community. There is so much to learn. Uh, there's so much responsibility involved. I recommend you just absorb as much information as you can and do so much safe dry fire practice, getting your gun out, putting your gun back away, uh, and making sure you're doing it right. Looking the gun into the holster, uh, definitely absorb as much as you can, because if the moment comes where you need to use it, you could be putting everybody else around you in danger if you're not squared away. So welcome to the community. And I'm so excited that you decided to take that responsibility up. So definitely absorb as much as you can. 80s, how old are you? I'm waiting for people to figure that out. Like a vampire. Like, who knows? Uh, I, I will say I missed out on the 80s and I'm very bummed about it. Uh, but I pride myself in uh, appreciating the culture, including pop culture of the decades before me. I would only start with a dot if you can afford a top tier dot and, I, and don't mind maintenance and make sure it's mounted with lock. Yeah. Get a dot, but know everything that goes into it. Yeah, you have. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a bad time. It's going to make you hate dots. Recently bought Ramjet for a Gen 5, and they changed the design, and I'm not impressed. The comp actually spins freely around the barrel. Have you seen this yet? The, the, oh, my God. Does it really? Uh, that's something that I would have to dig into because, uh, I don't know, the one that I have, I got uh, a few months after launch, but... I don't know. I, I, as, I mean, as long as it runs, that's all I really care about. As long as it doesn't like spin freely around the barrel while you're shooting it. I don't know. I'd have to look into that. EPS carry is awesome. Yes, it is. Uh, they're reliable because you don't shoot much. Yeah, but basically what I said, but a little meaner. Uh, I'm new to firearm ownership and still waiting for my license to carry. Do you have any opinions on the Grey Guns P30 versus stock CZ P07? I know the triggers stock are very gritty. Am I missing anything? Uh, I think what you're missing being new to firearm ownership is that the gun, as long as it's reliable, doesn't matter. Pick the gun that gets you the most excited. If you look at a gun and you're like, oh my God, this guy, like, I can't wait to shoot this. Get that one to start. Because if you're excited to shoot your gun, you're going to shoot it more often. You're going to be more, you're going to be more excited to practice with it, to train with it, to learn on it. As far as um, cleaning up triggers, uh, like gritty triggers, heavy triggers, that kind of stuff. That's not, that's what you do after you're squared away on skills. And uh, if you think you're squared away on skills, get out one of those drills I mentioned earlier, get out the, the fast drill, um, do a five by five drill to start. Those are the easier ones. Uh, and then if you think you're really hot stuff, get out the tier one concealed three sevens drill. And then that can be an assessment of how squared away you actually are. So yeah, the gun itself doesn't really matter. Get whichever one uh, you are super stoked about. As far as my opinions on the gray guns, P30 gray guns does good work. They smooth stuff up really well. Stock PO seven, perfectly fine. Put one in my hands. I'll show, I'll show you how it goes. Thoughts on the CZP 10 C one of the best striker fire options out there. Uh, my recommendations probably go 
Uh, again, uh, keep in mind, I have two different sets of recommendations. People who are like, I want to buy my first handgun. What do I get? I don't want, like, I'm new and I don't know anything. And if I have a problem with it, I don't know what to do. And then there's like, hey, uh, I'm, I've been, I run guns five days a week, right? Like the two different sets of recommendations. But over here, thoughts on, my, on the P10C is I recommend Glock, Smith & Wesson MP, and then the CZ P10C for striker guns. So those are my thoughts. I think it's top three. Never use the aftermarket trigger on a home defense AR. Ask any lawyer. Show me one case where somebody has been convicted in a good shoot of having an aftermarket trigger, not just in their AR, but in any of their guns. And then I will consider it. Uh, Bushnell's, let's see, right in mid and Siley. Okay, Siley's good. Some of the bargain brand DOTD, you, you're correct for the range. Yeah, I do have two Hollis and 407Cs. Yeah, uh, I've, like, as far as, like, I know Siley is doing, is that how you say it? Is that another China optic? Uh, that's decent. I know people personally who have tested it They're thoroughly and they enjoy it. Any recommended comps for the Glock 19 that work with the OEM threaded barrel besides the Radian? I saw that your PMM comp changed the point of impact of your hollow point ammo. Yeah, see, this is the stuff that you don't think about. And this is the stuff that people who are reviewing guns don't think about is they just shoot it with like range ammo, right? Um, but yeah, the plus P defensive ammo really shifted point of impact. Uh, comps for the Glock 19 that work with the OEM threaded barrel. Uh, Harrington. Harrington Arms Compensators. Uh, I think that I, I really like their stuff. And they're they're easy. That I haven't had a single issue. They're very reliable. Um, just do your research on Loctite. 35. Interesting guess, but not correct. Uh, why does my January 1991-92 FS have a two white dot system built May 1990 and came with a 92F, 92SB, 92SB compact owner's manual? Only 200 through, still looks day one. Okay, so you bought this used and you're wondering what's going on with it. Uh, maybe there's a Beretta 92 historian in chat. If so, hook this guy up. Uh, the thing is, I wouldn't be too suspicious about that, to be honest, that very well could track. I would, that's something that I would have to do research on, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. He's 60. He made a deal with the devil. Again, interesting choice. Interesting, interesting, interesting guess. Close, but not, not quite. I have like the, I have like a, I'm like Benjamin Button or I have like the Andy Milanakis disease. Uh, ever try out the LTT striker control device for Glocks? Basically add the safety of DASA while reholstering. I'm currently running one just to try it out. Yes, and I highly recommend it. There's no reason not to have it. Let me put it that way. Uh, and, and for those of you who don't know, uh, it's a, a back plate that goes on the back of this slide of the Glock. And it's just like a little swing set on the back. And if the trigger starts to pull, it moves up and hits your thumb and you can actually hold it down and you know be like, oh crap, you know, I would have shot myself because I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, I think that people are like, well, you should be holstering safe safely anyways. My rebuttal back to that is if you are in a defensive encounter and you just took somebody's life, uh, justifiably and, uh, there are people bleeding on the ground and, uh, you have a, you know, a bullet lodged in your shoulder and one in your gut and adrenaline is pumping like crazy. And for some reason you're like, I'm going to holster my gun right now with a shaky hand covered in blood. And you just put it in there. You could, you could bang. And that that's no good. So I say there's no reason to not have it. I think it's a nice little backup piece of insurance to have. Uh, called Radian, they said people was having carbon lock. Oh, that makes sense. Yep, because uh, whenever I put a lot of rounds through it, I kind of bang it on the table to get it off. So that makes sense. Uh, I as long as it doesn't change the performance and as long as it doesn't have problems uh, with actual you know reliability shooting it, then I'd, I'd say that's probably an okay change. But yeah, carbon lock for people who don't. So I clean my guns about every thousand rounds carbon lock. Not a big issue with that. People who are running like 5,000 rounds. Yeah. Good luck getting that off. You have to soak that stuff like overnight. Will this be posted? To look back on later. Miss the first part of your answer to my question on appendix carry holsters. Yes, this will be posted later. Don't worry. As far as I know, again, like I'm not really a technology guy. So yeah, it'll, I, as far as I know, it'll be posted later. Um, Let's see. I put you at 36, man, man, you guys are like, I like freaked you guys out about like me being older. You're, you're, you're all guessing, you're guessing geezer ages, not the 36. Sorry for everyone who's 36. I just called you a geezer. Uh, what's your take on lights on carry guns, a must or unnecessary? If you can do it, there's no reason to not have it, to have that option on you at all times. Cause you might find yourself, you know, out at night 
under a street lamp and you hear someone yell out, I'm going to kill you. And then you see a muzzle flash. Be really nice to have a weapon light in that situation. <laughs> I'm just saying like, you know, there are weird situations like that. That'd be good to have a weapon light. I use the same philosophy for weapon lights as I do for carrying a gun. I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But understand that, I mean, John Korea from Active Self Protection has done so much work on this, collected so much data. Most people who run weapon lights and have been in a defensive shooting didn't activate it, didn't have time. That's understandable. But imagine if you did have time, have time and it would have benefited you. Uh, I personally like it because it adds more leverage below the belt line and makes it easier for me to conceal larger guns uh, with longer grips. And it's just more comfortable for me. So uh, it's one of those things, rather have it, not need it. FN MRD, yeah, nothing wrong with it. FN stuff is just expensive for what it is. How about top 10 firearms in anime? You may need multiple categories such as handguns, rifles, other. Yeah, my, you know what? If if you guys want to see this, see like a video like this, go back to my top five gun anime video and just upload the heck out of it and add a bunch of comments to it and share it with everybody you know, share it with the world. Uh, Cause it just didn't do very well. So it's, it's hard for me to justify something like that, that that's basically me taking time. Uh, I mean, it, and it was like the longest I've ever spent on a video. It's me taking just like tens of hours to do a video just for, you know, shits and gigs. So if, if that one, if you guys want to see it, go over and give that video some love. And if I see a little bring boost in that video, yeah, absolutely. I'll do more stuff like that. I'd, I'd love to do more stuff like that. Radian said they changed their design due to carbon lock. Yep. That is, that is very interesting. I, I don't know. It's one of those things. I got mine. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm good. I've been running it. Haven't seen any issues. So I didn't even know. I always carry a pocket light and a weapon light. I'm scared of the dark. So am I, I carry both as well. And I think that's an important uh, distinction, right? Is if you're going to carry a weapon light, that does not excuse you from, you should probably carry a handheld light as well, because whatever you're pointing that, I mean, uh, you know, hopefully everybody knows this by now you're pointing a weapon light at someone you're pointing lethal force at them and you're escalating to lethal force. And if they shoot you, then they're justified. So handheld light, absolutely critical to have whether or not you run a weapon light. Uh, what do you think of the Timmy alpha trigger for locks? I've heard good things and bad. I've, I've shot good ones and bad ones. I've seen a couple that had really terrible, awful resets that didn't even work all the time. My hesitation is, why are you buying a Glock? I I think that a big pro of Glock is its built-in safety features being a uh, partially cocked design, right? So you pull the trigger, it finishes cocking it, and then drops the striker. The Timmy Alpha, uh, I believe, is a pre-cocked design. So it's always cocked, ready to, ready to go. And in that case, I feel like you could probably get just a completely different gun with the pre-cocked design. Uh, so yeah, I, I've heard... I've heard good and bad, and I've experienced good and bad. Uh, it, I will say when it works, it feels very nice. Never use WD-40 or any oil around your dot mounting plate. It will seep in and negate the Loctite. Had it happen if you... Yep, that's good advice. Uh, you're questioning a gun defense attorney. So you are a gun defense attorney, okay? Uh, which one of your clients has gone to prison because of an aftermarket trigger? Uh, EDC, red dot, or iron sights for a self-defense situation? Either. I'm going to be honest with you either, whichever one you want, do your research. I did a couple of videos on the topic. Should you like, do you really need a red dot for concealed carry? You'll probably find the most value out of that one. And you should have a red dot for concealed carry. Check out those videos. Um, either, either are good, Bought new. So you bought it back in what would you say? 1991. Interesting. Uh, then yeah, I, I mean, it should be fine. I, I don't see, I don't see any problems with that. And you know, these companies roll out changes like crazy. And, and it's not uncommon to get an instruction manual with a firearm that is for different firearms in the same family, or like it, it encompasses the whole family. So yeah, they could just be that they ran out of the you know full-size manuals and put that in there. I wouldn't be too worried. It's bad if you're an attorney that doesn't know the difference between your and your junior. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I listen, I enjoy being a grammar Nazi, but you know, it's, I don't beat people up too bad over that kind of stuff. It's the internet. People type fast. It is what it is. Uh, but yeah, now you, I, I feel your sentiment though. I have about 500 rounds of 40 year old, 38 special reloaded ammunition ammunition. I got from friends. Not sure I want to trust it. How do you dispose of ammo? You don't trust. Uh, God, again, I'm live. I need to be careful what I say. Uh, basically go to, uh, I don't know, like downtown St. Louis and leave it on a street corner. Uh, no, I, I that, that's probably, I, I want to be careful about talking about how to like dispose of ammo. 
because animals have a dispose of ammo on YouTube. Uh, I'd say Google it, Google how to dispose of old ammo. You'll probably find what you're looking for. We're not in court. Yeah, I, I, again, let's not get snippy in the comments, folks. Uh, the new 507 comp is nice. Just got it. Hope it is somewhat tough. It is somewhat tough. I think you'll find that. Okay, he's 33. Ah, Pistol Pete, interesting guess. Also incorrect. Uh, I dispose of old ammo in my fireplace. That's the way to do it, folks. Uh, just wait till your in-laws are over. Uh, 29, interesting choice. Interesting choice. Also incorrect. I think the Young Jedi is 28. Man, you guys are you guys are going to town, but you're all wrong. How do you feel about the vertex about vertex bag carry? I prefer not to carry in bags at all. Uh, the only time I carry in a bag is when I'm also carrying on my person. That being said, it's better than not carrying a gun at all. I, I would rather off body carry than not carry at all. Uh, vertex bag carry oh, seems fine. I actually have a premier body armor insert coming with a um, Victos upscale that I'm interested to test out because they recently changed the the panel insert on that to Velcro so that you can like Velcro a holster to it. Pretty interesting. Uh, what's wrong with an old fashioned 1911 with iron sights? Uh, sorry, I'm getting like messages. want to make sure no one's like, Oh my God, your audio is not working. Uh, what's wrong with an old fashioned 1911 with iron sights Two world wars. It'll get a lot of jobs done. That's for sure. Nothing wrong with that. As long as you vet it for reliability and use quality magazines, which you prefer G19 or G45. Man, it's hard. Depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, I like... Ooh, I like the... Oh, man, that's tough. That's really tough. That's like saying, you know... Oh, man. I'm, I can't even think of an analogy. That's how close they are. Both. I'd say it's, I'd say it's equal. Depends on, on what you want to do with it. My usual answer. I do, like the, I do like having more leverage on the G45 grip. I will say that. Glock is doo-doo. Uh, careful, man. You're going to irritate some people and they're going to come after you. I just removed my weapon light. Nice to pack as light as possible for EDC. Hey, if that's what works best for you, absolutely. I carry heavy, heavy stuff. Uh, did you ever carry a 40? Yes, I did. Interesting question. You see, it's questions like these that I love. Yes, I did. My very first carry gun. Well, that's not true. My very, no, that's also not true. The first gun that I carried very frequently, like for a long time, was uh, Glock 27. Yep. When they were all the rage, I carried G27. Won a 38 special defensive round with some punch, but most seem half the strength of 357. Too weak. Any suggested rounds? I'm shooting a Colt King Cobra. That works better than yours did. I'm glad to hear that your King Cobra is running. Because uh, mine, who doggy? Talk about manufacturers that couldn't fix my problem. So 38 special defensive round with some punch. Uh, so go to luckygunner.com. And you'd be careful about like, like saying these links on YouTube. Uh, and you can Google, they, they did a bunch of ammo tests comparing different ammo. And I, the 38 special ammo I run is the, um, Winchester Ranger 38 special plus P. I forget the grain weight. I think it's a heavier grain. I don't remember, but that one performed really well. And it's what I could find at the time. So basically go to that list, look for a nice balance between penetration that is acceptable and expansion in the projectile. And go with whichever one you can find, because honestly, that revolver ammo is getting harder and harder to find. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 mine is the Winchester Ranger 38 plus P. I forget, like I said, I forget the bullet weight. I'd have to go look. Um, what do you think of the Sneaky Pete holster pouches? Uh, I, I haven't tested them, but they seem interesting. They seem fine. I, I personally don't see myself using one, but roast this law boy. <laughs> Law boy is probably just a paralegal. Ooh, that man, man, we're getting, we're getting rough here. Street corner. Uh, I vote 24 years old and just has smart, cool parents. You were right about the smart, cool. Well, I don't know about cool. I don't know. One of them's cool. Oh, uh, Smith. Oh my God. I'm catching up the comments again. This is so exciting. Smith and Weston performance center for EDC. Uh, M and P series or revolvers. Let me know. Uh, specify your question from that standpoint. And I'll let you know. You're definitely 28. Nope. Oh, we got this one. What are you? 31? Jeez, man, you guys. I uh, Interesting choice, but no. Glock 40 is my problem solver. Okay, let's very quickly not get, not get taken down. You ready? Glock 40 problem solver. 
thoughts on Walter PDP Pro. Man, it has a really, really lightweight frame and a very, very heavy, well, not heavy, but chunky slide. Uh, and it also has a stepped chamber that increases the muzzle velocity by just, I don't know, like 20 feet per second. But either way, it makes it kind of on the snappy side. It returns to zero, but you really have to ride the lightning when shooting that thing fast. Uh, also, I had magazine issues on mine, had to send it back to Walter. I'm assuming mag issues. They never told me what the problem was. It was just failing to feed. Um, yeah, I don't know. You could do worse than a PDP Pro. I can tell you that. If you have any specific questions about it, let me know. I, like I said, I have kind of an ongoing review of it. For real, Glock can't even make a rifle, PCC, etc. They can't even get pistols right. <laughs> yeah, fighting words with the Glock boys. But I definitely see your point of view. Don't completely disagree. Uh, where are the Steyr GBs? Any good or still worth it, though heavy? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, don't, I don't really know enough about them to say... He's 12, final answer. <laughs> yeah, man, again, there are things that I want to say about people who like people that age and things that I would do to them, but I need to be careful on YouTube. I have a very specific treatment method for people who like people that age. Not saying you are Pistol Pete. I'm just saying that I'm tempted to, to talk about things that I can't talk about on YouTube, uh, hurting people that hurt others. Just means I need to comment more, I suppose. Uh, thoughts on the Kimber KD S9 with rail. Yeah. So I talked about this in my, uh, industry day at the range video. Uh, I mean, obviously the thing is loaded with MIM parts, right? Metal injection molded. So be aware of what you're getting into with that. That being said, it felt good in the hand. It looks really cool. It was just really snappy. Uh, I don't know how they have that thing sprung, but the aluminum frame was really lightweight. I just met, like, I kind of had to, I had to hold that sucker down. It was a little on the snappier side. Uh, I don't know. It's fine. What's your profession outside of YouTube? Yeah. I, I discussed that earlier, probably before you were here. Uh, but I worked in, uh, brand naming and market research for a long time. Uh, other than that, I just do like a million things outside of work. Uh, firearm instruction, obviously YouTube is now doing well enough for me that, that it's nice. Um, I firearm instruction has been, I, I love my students and my clients. They're awesome. Uh, also a writer, obviously. So that's, that's really neat chasing my first publishing deal with an actual publisher right now. So if anybody knows any editors at major publications, let me know because who, you know, definitely helps. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I do like three more things. Uh, only fans still waiting for someone to find, find my only fans. Uh, being clean shaven, you were 19 reality. You got to be 30 ish. <laughs> that is as sound logic. Uh, HK USP is my favorite handgun. My HK USP is my favorite handgun ever made long live the 40. I just don't like the ergo of the USP compact, but love the looks. So I put the compact slide on my P2000 lower. I made the same expression as your little monkey emoji. Uh, but yeah, HK USP is it's, uh, it's goaded. What rifle sling do you prefer? Oh God, what do I, I've literally used the same rifle sling for, oh God, over a decade. What is it? Of, of, of oh God. Is it Viking tactics? VTAC. It's one of those that you like, you know, you can like pull it tight, and loosen it up, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's one of those that I probably need to get. There are probably better slings out there now. Just that's the one I've used forever. And I have a, like a bunch of them, had them on my rifles forever. Knew I would like your channel when I saw Dio and Jill in the background. You and Paul Harrell have helped me the most when shooting. That is, man, that is humbling to be put in the same sentence as Paul Harrell. But uh, I'm so glad that the channel has been helpful. That is awesome. And yes, we got Dio, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It's an S-tier villain right there. And uh, Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. Good stuff. You have excellent taste, my friend. Uh, thanks, thanks for the comments. I appreciate you. Blue force for slings. Yeah, blue. I've heard, I mean, blue force is kind of, it seems the go-to for everyone now. Don't get mad, but I think you're closer to 40 bags under your eyes. Give you weight. No, I just didn't sleep last night, homie. I did not sleep last night. LOL. Uh, yeah, no, it was funny, funny, funny. Uh, the problem with aftermarket triggers is that you're more likely to AD. Why? This is why departments don't use them on either pistols or rifles. Uh, all contract guns can't have trigger mods. 
I think departments probably don't use them on pistols or rifles because for the same reason that, that some departments don't allow red dots and like some departments don't allow, uh, you know, different kinds of like personal guns. Uh, basically departments are just like, I don't know, a lot of them 10, some of them 20 and 30 years behind. Uh, and I, there, there's also a lot, some liability and in installation, right? Like, like does your officer install it correctly? Does the armor install it correctly? If there is an issue with it, um, it, you know, police officers are under a different kind of, you know, microscope, uh, like, look at the big deal that was made over the, like, you know, send it, uh, was it dust cover on that one cop's AR when he probably wrongfully shot that guy. Uh, but again, I'm still waiting for an example of somebody who has been, uh, convicted after a good shoot with an aftermarket trigger. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, I mean, you know how police departments are like, are you really arguing that the, that the government is being run smartly? Uh, Fruity Pebbles or Cap'n Crunch? Do, I don't know. I, I have not eaten garbage in years. I stopped eating garbage a long time ago. That being said, if some woman was offering me one right now, I haven't had one since I was a kid. Uh, normally I did enjoy Cap'n Crunch, but right now I'm really, uh, maybe it's cause I'm thirsty. I'm really craving Fruity Pebbles. Speaking of being thirsty, it's been like three hours and I haven't had any water. There we go. I'm good for another three hours now. Um, what else we have? Have you played with the lead and steel PB3? Thoughts on the Acro P2? No, I've not played with the lead and steel PB3, although certainly getting a lot of, uh, a lot of hype right now. Thoughts on the Acro P2? I think it's super dope. Uh, I think the, my issue with it after running it for a long time is it has a really thick housing. And so it's like the height on the window is good. Window has like not much width at all. Uh, but I mean, as long as your presentation is good, you can manage it. I mean, you can keep that dot under recoil. The height is, is good enough on that. But the housing is so big that it's hard, at least for me and the way that I shoot, uh, for my eye not to be drawn to the housing. It, it takes more effort for me to target focus with the P2. That being said, it seems, I mean, it is, has been mine. I have two of them. Extremely well-made, durable, and reliable like electronics. So, <clears throat> so happy to hear YouTube is working out well enough for you. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, I, last year was pretty much my, my break, my breakthrough year. So I'm doing, I'm doing very, very well. Luckily, uh, you know, two income household, right? No kids and you know, like no, like, like super healthy. So no, like, like health concerns or anything like that. I have, I have no outstanding debt or loans. Everything is paid off. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. Um, I'm just, I want YouTube to be doing so well for me between ad revenue and partnerships that I can bring you guys the hype is stuff. You guys are asking about the LTT PX4. I'm just like, yeah, boom, let's go. It's like, you know, it's like having a, a Patreon the size of one of those bigger channels. I do currently have a Patreon. I'm going to be revamping it this year as well, offering more incentives right now. It's pretty much just general support. Um, but I'm hoping to be doing well enough with sponsors and stuff like that, that when it's like, yeah, LTT PX4, I'm like two grand, let's go done. So that, that's my goal with this channel is I, I, I want it to essentially be a form of, of passive income, doing something that I love talking about things that I love being able to bring you guys the stuff you want to see while I am writing. And, uh, cause like self-publishing is awesome. I, I, I make good money off of my self-published books. Uh, that being said, it pales in comparison to, you know, getting a publishing deal for a book. So this is basically just feeding my, uh, my writing. I really, really truly want to be a, a best-selling author. Um, so if you haven't checked out my books, definitely check them out. They're on Amazon. Links are like all over my, uh, my channel and all my videos, but yeah, right now, two short novels, armed instinct, uh, super awesome. Uh, that was my very first short novel. It, it is very good. Is very good. It's a good, fast-paced read. Uh, some great gun action in there. And then there is Countdown to Dawn. This is extremely good. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but it's like, for a short novel, it's like 10 out of 10 status. You got to get the first one, very good. Second one, legendary. Let's go. Be sure to check them out. Excellent gun action. Oh, man. I. It's one of those things I write the stuff that I like to read. So, uh if you like, if you like that kind of action, go for it, go, don't hesitate. Uh, HK VP nine SK. I was surprised how well it shoots and wonder why it isn't more popular. It's fat. It's a, it's a, it's a thick boy. 
uh, or a, uh, a Steiner MPS. Forgot about that one. Steiner seems to be okay. I think it's built up enough of a reputation now that it's fine. Uh, again, huge housing, same issue I have with the P2. Uh, yeah, the VTAC sling is awesome. I use the LaRue version of the, okay. So yeah, yep. I'm glad my sling is still not, not terrible. Sorry, MP Performance Center for EDC. Oh, MP Performance Center. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. The problem that I have with the performance centers from with MP is that I would still put an Apex trigger in them anyways. Like that's kind of, that's my thing is I would still <laughs> put an apex in there. So I'm like, I don't, I'm not really sure what I'm gaining from it outside of it looks cooler because I'm still going to apex it. Uh, but yeah, no, that I, I recommend it. Absolutely. If you have the money to go performance center, go for it. Your recoil control is great. I noticed that your arm position is relatively low compared to where your pistol is being held. Is this something that you learned or were taught? Uh, so I've learned and have been taught like a million things. And it's just a matter of me putting everything together to figure out what works best for me, my body, my strength level, my grip strength and grip technique and that kind of stuff. And that works really well for me being able to shoot fast out of the holster and transition between targets. Um, it, it's that that's not going to be best for everybody, but basically I think what he's talking about is like my arms are like this when I shoot like boom, 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 that my, I bend my elbows to act as like shock absorbers, right? So that if they're straight, it's like pushing two two by fours back and it's going to rock you, but bringing it short, they kind of act as, uh, as shock absorbers. Um, but honestly you could be all the way out to like here with bent arms. The most important part, I mean, like the elbows thing, as long as they're not locked is, uh, not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is your support hand grip strength. Got to have really strong support hand grip strength and just clamp it down. Don't move it. Um, cause it's when you clamp your support hand down and you start doing this movement with this finger and the gun is going bang and making a loud noise, it's really easy to loosen it even 1%. And then you get sympathetic movement, squeezing your support hand while you're shooting rank, 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 and it cranks your shots. So I don't know. I, that's the best I got for that question. It's responding to what's his name? 38 special hundred grain plus B travel 1300 feet per second benefit of the bullet. Yeah. I mean, Underwood's good. Uh, extreme defender. I I'm not sure. Uh, the fluid transfer model. I, yeah. Those, the, um, the monolithic rounds, I'm not sold on them yet. I, I would need to test them myself. I go tried and true personally. What's a great first AR 15. I don't have one and I'm looking for my first, honestly, uh, other than getting something really, really cheap, it's hard to make a bad choice. They're all made pretty much using the same parts, right? So, uh, I, the people in the comments, let this guy know what, a, what the best first AR 15 is. Uh, cause my first AR 15 was a rock river arms. Uh, I think it was, what is it? The elite operator elite or elite operator. Uh, and I got that when I was 18, I turned 18 years old. That was the first one I bought. So that was my first one. And since then rock river arms has betrayed the entire second amendment community. So I can't recommend that one anymore. Um, police performance have to train to the lowest common denominator. And that's why pistol mods are usually not allowed. Another great point. I was looking for Ronnie James Dio in the pick. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to know why, uh, one of the reasons Dio is named Dio, um, lots of references like that in Jojo's bizarre adventure. I like keeping all of my carry guns stock. I'm all about reliability when it comes to my life or my family's life. That is a great philosophy. The only mods I make, I put about a thousand rounds or more through those mods before I trust them. And not only that, I see how those mods are performing in other consumers' hands. I look for issues. So that is a great philosophy. That's honestly the blanket philosophy, right? Like you can't go wrong with that. Uh, the only thing aftermarket I do to some carry guns is getting a cool Cerakote job done. Careful that, because that can, that can have problems too if it's put on too thick or improperly. But let's talk about mods really quick. Mods on carry guns, um, they have to be worth the squeeze. Don't put something on your gun that you're not getting performance out of. So something like a better trigger, something like a compensator, stuff like that can improve performance in defensive shooting, which requires fast follow-up shots placed precisely. So it can be worth it, but better. To, I mean, it's it's like if, you, if you're not willing to put in the work and spend the money to vet the stuff yourself, your particular gun, your particular compensator, your particular trigger, then keep it stock. People's lives are on the line. You run with a three pound trigger. Good luck with that adrenaline dump. Okay. Uh, I am now changing out all of my triggers to 50 pound triggers, just like in my nightmares. 
Uh, if your self-defense court battle is boiling down to aftermarket trigger springs and punisher back plates, and it probably wasn't a good shot or you don't have a good lawyer. That's the truth. That's the truth. I, I, I will say, and again, I'm not a lawyer, no legal advice here. I'm going to just tell you the choices that I make and you can decide if you want to make the same choices as me. Um, that being said, uh, be able to articulate to your attorney because even gun lawyers or, you know, gun attorneys, uh, defensive use attorneys, all that, all, everybody in that, in that circle, right. Even second amendment law, that kind of stuff. Not all of them are gun people. Not only of them are gun nerds. Like we are be able to articulate to your attorney why you made the modifications that you made and why it improved your defensive shoot should be able to put that to bed immediately. Um, <laughs> that's my train. Yeah, exactly. Uh, seriously, exactly. Literally all I shoot are, well, not all I shoot. Most, I mostly shoot 2011s. So that's the trigger that I'm used to. Uh, loving the channel. You and Humble Marksman are huge for actual content lately and not commercials. Yeah. Humble Marksman is good. I enjoy his content. Uh, nothing wrong with a dump as long as you hit your intended target. That is true. That's, uh, I think it's a good skill to be able to mag dump into an A zone at seven yards. I think it's a great skill to have. Uh, even better if you can do it on a moving target. My agency requires us to purchase our own handgun from an approved list and allows red dots if you can qualify with it. A neighboring agency starting this year requires dots for new officers. I, yep, that's the direction that I've been seeing departments move in. Um, man, what, what's on the approved list? You got staccatos on there? I was sold on you after seeing the Berserk shirt. Yeah, today I have the Yu Yu Hakusho shirt on. And going to get kicked off again. Um, but yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho today, Berserk shirt, Berserk is dope. I actually have, uh, which side is it on? Nope, other side. The entire uh, Berserk Deluxe Edition collection. Uh, I read it online. That's why they're all still uh, in their uh, packaging. But yeah, I read Berserk online and then I wanted to support. So I bought the entire deluxe edition. I'm gonna when I reread it a second time, I'm gonna go through the deluxe edition. Haven't heard back from that low dog. Sinestro for the win. Uh, kids are worth it, man, but not for everyone. Hey, didn't say it wasn't ever gonna happen. Just not not right this second. Uh, just found you through your USP compact video. Quick question: Have you had the chance to test out the HK 45C? Been thinking about picking one up. I have shot a 40 uh, 45C in the past. I think it's a super cool looking gun. And it shoots well. If if it gets you excited, no reason not to get it. Um, just think about you know what what you want to use it for and consider capacity and caliber. But it's a it's a great gun. Uh, you're related to Lean Beef Patty, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man, two A Advocate, love your videos, brother. Keep up the good world. We're keep up the good Zawardo. Keep up the good work. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Uh, I'm th this live is going really well. I think this is something that I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing. So definitely appreciate you guys appreciate the support. Uh, because it's, it's hard justifying a live when I could put the same amount of time into a video. And then that video is going to get, I like, I know how much money a video is going to make if it doesn't get demonetized. Uh, but seeing you guys support the live like this, uh, it's, it's, it's seems like it's worth my while. So definitely appreciate you to a advocate. You're awesome. Keep being a two a advocate. That's uh, honestly, people, people should be donating to you for being a 2A advocate. You're awesome. Appreciate you, man. Have you ever experienced light primer strikes with an MNP apex trigger? No, I have not. Um, I think it also depends on the combo of springs that you're using and the ammo that you're shooting, but in all the combinations I've done no. for 20 meters, EDC bull SAS two, 3.25 comp or 4.25. I prefer the 4.25 mostly just because I prefer the TAC series. Um, I, I prefer the TAC series to the, to the ultralight. Personally, I like the way that they're built and I like the grip texture. Is there any real difference between a 19 X and a 45? They are the same, just different colors. And you, you could argue that like 19 X has the, uh, lanyard lanyard loop on it. Uh, all depends on your budget. Yep. Uh, guys leave for first AR 15. Just get a blem. Good advice. Uh, Radical Stag, IWI, all great AR-15s. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard that before. BCM, I vote BCM also. Uh, that's probably, uh, any of those, you're good to go for your first AR-15. Uh, you guys out there, 
that have two to three pound triggers have to understand you're going to carry that every day for 40 to 50 years. You do what you want, but time is not on your side. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I'd also like to say that my two to three pound triggers are all stock from the factory on 2011s. So I don't, what's the argument there? It was literally designed. In fact, I have screenshots from Staccato's website with the Staccato XC saying that it's a great option uh, for everything, including self-defense uh, and personal defense. And that has a two and a half pound trigger. So uh, Mr. Attorney, how would that hold up in court? Thanks guys. I'll check those out. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad those guys were helpful to you. Uh, not smart. Uh, I have yet to shoot a comp pistol. Just recently used a red dot sight for the first time, man. You're getting into the world. Get ready to, uh, to dive into the red dot and comp pistol world, man. It's hard to go back. One, once you've got the dot and you got your gun shooting a lot flatter than usual and softer than usual, it, uh, it takes some persuasion to shoot a stock gun again. Best live stream ever. Thanks for your time. I'm, I'm just trying to do the live stream that I would like to watch. So I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. Thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. Gun lawyers on a bad shoot will test your trigger weight and use department issue five to eight pound weight as a standard. Now I have to defend that. Good luck. But like I said, what if I have literature from the manufacturer's website that says that that uh, firearm that comes with a two and a half pound trigger is great for self-defense? I think that's probably fine. Yes, Takato's on the approved list. Yeah, all you have to do is uh, ask for a raise <laughs> and you can get one. I stopped watching the gun channels that become shills and start making more commercials for the free product products they receive uh, rather than genuine gun content. I won't name the channels that shill. You won't name the channels that shill because uh, you would have about 500 comments. Um, I, the, I, again, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but my time at SHOT Show and these manufacturers that have big mouths took a look at my YouTube channel and saw my subscriber count that I wasn't just some, you know, someone with like hundred subscribers. There are a lot more shills than you realize. There are a lot of channels that you think aren't that are, um, there now granted there are some great non shill, um, channels out there, but just know that not every channel is perfect. And sometimes those channels get a gun for free and they, they don't tell you the truth. Uh, and it, and it is what it is because they don't want to hurt their brand. So just take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, U S marshals are carrying G 19, but their SWAT team were approved for this. Ticato. Yeah. Uh, man, that I, I love to see it. I grew up shooting 1911s and I, uh, when I was a teenager, I competed with 2011s. They just, I, I always said I'd carry a 1911 if it had a higher capacity and I'd carry a 2011 if it was more reliable. And we have that now. And I put my money where my mouth was. So I'm, I'm so glad to see that happening. I mean, SWAT teams were carrying 1911s anyways, but now they get higher capacity. Uh, heard you mention MP 2.0 and see you run a lot of Glocks. What's your preference between the two? I typically recommend Glock because of their great customer service. Uh, I, and more consistent quality control. That being said, between the two, I really like the M&P 2.0. It boils down to grip texture. That's what it boils down to. And uh, I love the Apex trigger. Shinji versus Guts, who you got? Uh, first of all, there are lots of Shinjis. I'm going to go with Neon Genesis Evangelion Shinji. And uh, if so, is he in the robot or not? Not that it matters because Guts would cut that in half. 31. Incorrect, but a good guess, my friend. Have you tried G9 ammo? No, I haven't. Not really interested in it. Hi from Tucson. Hi from the Phoenix Scottsdale area, North Phoenix. What's up? Uh, what's your go-to nine millimeter ammo and grain for practice and or competition? Uh, I've been shooting a lot of 124 grain recently, but I get 115 or 124 for training. Uh, whatever I can get my hands on that is cheapest, but I carry 124. So I try to practice with 124 as much as possible. Uh, my face when I have a four pound trigger. 99% are <laughs> shills. It's true. How do you think they get paid? Uh, that's true. Uh, and not even just paid, right? Like there, there are so many dudes that will get like a free gun from a company. And it's, I, God, I, I want to be really careful with what I say. I don't want to, a lot of these people are so great overall for the two A community and normalizing the second amendment. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Uh, and I, I don't want, I don't like drama. I don't want to start anything, but just kind of an awareness of 
not that it would necessarily sway somebody who was honest, but if somebody sent a gun for free, you know, they do a few videos with it, then they can sell it. You know, it's like, even if there's no money exchanging hands and I'm going to be honest, that's something that even I would be open to. Right. But the thing is you have to disclose it. And if you don't disclose it, it's sketchy. And I learned about so many people that don't disclose it. And, and it really sketches me out. People I thought were hundred percent honest. The fact that they didn't disclose it sketches me out. Um, I just got my AZCCW permit. Well, I'm sure you know that you didn't need one, but it does come in handy for reciprocity in other states. Uh, I don't know, just in case you get Terry stopped. It's a get out of jail free card. Uh, I have, oh, and you can walk out of any gun store with a gun same day. Uh, they can't, they can't delay you for three days. Uh, I have an, an MNP to MNP 2.0 compact in my carry rotation and it's phenomenal. I have, it has never jammed. It's very accurate and the recoil is low. I agree. That was an excellent choice. Good job. Uh, I was very disappointed when you find the issue with the live free armory 1911 double stack. I hope they fix the issue ASAP can pull the trigger without engaging the grip safety. Yeah. That was the thing that sketched me out about them is there were two of them on the table and I like, not everybody's a 1911 or a 2011 guy, especially now. Uh, it's like a lot of these channels, they shoot their guns and they're like, everybody wants to see the 2011. So here it is. And they don't really understand how to shoot a 2011. Whereas that was my, that and double action revolvers were like my, my go-to growing up. And I hated clocks. So striker guns in general, I hated them. It was 1911s or revolvers get out of my face with anything else. Uh, and then, so uh, anyways, what was I saying? Right. So I test everything and I know what to look for. And if you pull the trigger back to the wall, so grip safety in, trigger back to the wall, release the grip safety so it catches and release the trigger, the grip safety stays depressed and you can just pull the trigger. It's poor fitment. The guns poorly fit together. I really hope. And again, they're really interesting. I would recommend everybody check out Blue Gene Operator's video on this because he had a great experience with his until he put hollow points into it. So I'd love to see them figure out the angle of the feed ramp or polish the feed ramp, whatever it takes to get hollow points working. And I would love to see them square away that fitment issue that I saw. Uh, thanks, man. I run a X macro Tacoma right now. Absolutely. Uh, have you ever considered reloading? Unfortunately, it's not much of a cost savings anymore. Yeah, that's why I haven't. Uh, if it was as much of a cost saving as it was back in the day, I would be doing it. Absolutely. Uh, but right now, I just, I don't know. I don't see a point, especially now that my channel is big enough. I'm getting ammo sponsors and um, people are sending me ammo. So, uh, what was the comp pistol you were most impressed with at shot show? It looked like a 365 XL. Yes. Yeah, so the P365 Radian Ramjet afterburner, hands down the best. I, I couldn't believe it. So they went bigger on the chambers, on the compensator, on the ports. That thing ran insane. I've never fired a lightweight tiny gun like that, that shot that flat blows my mind. And so you can put it on any standard 365 slide. Uh, so put it on X macro grip frame, XL grip frame, standard grip frame, anything you want. There's so much versatility and it's really loud, but holy crap, it shoots fast. So yeah, keep an eye on Radian weapons. Uh, damn it. I got to say it. Such is the biggest shill. I've never heard him say a free gun was bad. I, okay. So here's the thing. Shill, maybe. Maybe, right? Like, I, I don't know if he's, he's like, you know, getting paid by gun manufacturers. That being said, I feel like his philosophy is the philosophy of the gun magazine and not like gun magazine. I'm talking like gun magazine. I feel like a lot of people, so I've been into firearms since I was five years old. So literally before the internet took off like crazy and everything changed. And back then the only real media that you had were gun magazines and a lot of people would read these articles in the gun magazines that were gun reviews, like, oh, this new gun, this great, does this, shot well, all that kind of stuff. But what people don't realize is those gun manufacturers are the ones buying ads in those magazines, right? So it's, but people also enjoy reading good things about upcoming guns. People like getting excited. And I just think that's his philosophy is, and I think he he's great for normalizing the second amendment. That's why I don't want to like crap on anybody too much. These are all pro-gun, gun-loving people that are patriotic Americans and they, they're doing their part to bring entertainment to us free of charge, bring gun content free of charge to us uh, to enjoy. And the more it's on the internet, the more it is normalized. So I don't want to crap on anyone too much. Sometimes it's fun to sit down and just hear all the good stuff about a gun. And that's what I appreciate him for. He's, it's the gun magazine philosophy. 
This was awesome. Please do this again. Appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Absolutely. Like I said, I mean, enough of you, you know, tossed a, tossed a thanks my way. And it's like, yeah, okay. But clearly you guys are, are enjoying it. So I will do this again. Uh, I own a CZ P10C, been looking for a striker control device for a long while and just recently seen one from Danworth, Danforth Design. Never heard of them and don't want to put something I don't trust on my EDC. I think that's a, I think, I think that's a smart choice. Uh, thanks, man. I run an X macro and want something bigger to get better at shooting. Compact MP 2.0 is a little shorter than I like in the grip. Wondering if the Floyd's Magwell would help or get a full, I'd get a full. If, if the grip length is a potential issue for you, I would get the, I would just get the full length grip unless you can't conceal that. So I don't know pros and cons. Everything's a trade-off. Just figure out what trade-off you want. Floyd's Magwell is great. I love the Floyd's Magwell. Uh, it just, it might not be enough of a lip for you. Uh, like I found on, like I putting a Magwell on my G19 did not work for me. It, it took up too much real estate. So all of a sudden I couldn't, it, it was like, uh, my finger was grinding the sharpest point of the lip of the Magwell and moving the gun around. But on my G45, it actually improved my grip. It, it encouraged my grip to be higher. So I wouldn't count on a Magwell making a shorter grip better. Um, I'm thinking about getting upper silencer co compatible DB 1500 AAC diamond series 10. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm, I'm always here to support quality purchases. Yeah, I agree. The Floyd's Magwell is awesome. Just don't know if it would solve his problem. Uh, bro just broke my heart. I was about ready to order LFA compact size. Hey, if you're getting it for a range toy, then I don't see anything wrong with it. I really don't. Uh, if you want something to defend your life with, or, you know, it's like someday you might use it. I would you know, buy once, cry once when it comes to your life. MMP compact is a hair smaller than a G19. If you want a little longer grip, I suggest a CZ P10C. Yeah. Again, it's like helping someone pick out a pair of shoes, right? Yeah. CZ P10C is solid though. Crazy how guns just refuse to work with hollow points. It's just another reason why I like 40 Smith Wesson so much because the cartridge is designed to be a hollow point. Most modern guns are running with hollow points just fine. Just the every once in a while you run into one that doesn't. Uh, I've missed the live. I missed the live, but what is your recommendation for the DPM spring setup for the Sig Macro? And let's not get confused. DPM S manufactures AR-15s, and they have a panther head as their logo. Um, DPM spring setup for the Sig Macro. It depends on what you're running. You running it stock? Are you running it with the integral compensator in the slide or without? Uh, I usually you know, start, I start from one end and work back, right? So I'll get the adjustable kit and I'll start from one end and work back. Uh, and what I recommend when tuning a DPM kit is shoot a bill drill. Or more importantly, I actually like the five by five drill because it's uh, more demanding, a smaller target and five shots as fast as you can see what your group looks like, see what you are on the timer, do it a few times with each spring and see how it changes your shooting experience on the timer in your hand and on target. That's how I, that's how I tune my guns. Uh, and what load you plan on using. If it's a carry gun, I do it with my carry ammo. Um, what else we got? Hop and brass facts just released a big, Hey, lots of shills out there video. Everything I've seen on your channel. I've been able to reproduce myself. I don't know how the afterburner is that good, but it is absolutely. I, I appreciate the vote of confidence. Uh, I'm going to have to check out that video again. Like I said, I don't spend much time watching gun tube because it's what I, it's like, I do it. Um, but I'll check that video out, but yes, there are lots and lots and lots and lots, lots of shills out there. Uh, you also can't go wrong with the HK VP nine. True. Can't go wrong with that. Good gun. You can always run a full mag in your MP 2.0 compact and use one of those sleeves. Best of both worlds. Also an option. Uh, is anybody on here with real life experience, police or combat served military? I'm sure there are. Uh, and I'm sure they are just rolling their eyes at you and literally don't care. Um, like I said, have you, have any of your clients been convicted in a good shoot for uh, having an aftermarket trigger? Uh, I've had a 4.25 prodigy that has been uber reliable and super accurate. Guess I've been lucky. Well, my friend, I just got one and I'll be putting about 500 rounds through it tomorrow. I will, <laughs> you know, you're going to see what happens on my channel. That's what I thought. Uh, first of all, man, what does an attorney, dude, like, aren't you busy? Like no shade or hate. I'm just like genuinely curious. Like I got nothing against pro 2A people uh, exercising their freedom of speech, but like, man, I think that you, you would be like defending someone against having an aftermarket trigger. Uh, 
you guys, I mean, no wonder that you're losing those cases on aftermarket triggers. You're so busy commenting on YouTube. You guys are the best. Thanks. I'll keep training and figure out what's best. Yeah. You know what? Thanks for saying thank you to all those guys that I love this attitude. This is the attitude that I want in the community. Like this is one of the reasons I wanted to start the channel. I wanted to build a community of, of strong, nice people, uh, and knowledgeable people. I'm a new big fan. Keep up the good work. You are the next big gun runner star. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Shot time is next. Yes. Getting a shot timer is the single biggest thing that you can do for your shooting performance period. Are you a build versus buy gun guy? Build a custom G19 2011 buy versus buying one, building AR-15 or buying one. Uh, I do not build handguns. I uh, honestly, I don't really have the time to build anything. So I don't do that either way, but I would have less reservations about building an AR um, or like building like a P80, like a Glock, something that's, that you can just do for, as a range toy. Right. And then you can fine tune it and vet it, make sure it's reliable. Uh, but no, I mostly just buy stuff. It's I, I like my enjoyment is in running it. Uh, not in crafting it. Although that can also be fun. I, I've certainly done it. I just prefer to buy because the guns that I keep with the exception of the dollar bill high point, um, I keep the stuff that I could use if I ever had to and trust it. I don't keep problem guns or questionable guns. Springfield Prodigy, did they fix the issues? I don't know, let you know when the video goes live. Uh, rent different guns at the range and see what fits your hands the best and what you shoot the best. See what gets you the most excited. When you shoot it, which one were you like, yeah, and was reliable? Your thoughts on Oracle Arms? First impressions are good. First impressions are good. Um, reach out to them and tell them to send me one of those pro 2311s because <laughs> man, they are, uh, they're, they're clutching pearls a little bit over there. Um, but I good first impressions when I saw it shot was good. That isn't always a representation of what production looks like. G9 have merit grant them shot through ballistics gel dummy and the damage is pretty significant. Yeah. Again, let's wait until a bunch of people put it through human tissue and then we'll see what to go with classic 1911 or tactical rail front serrations. Uh, I'm a tactical rail guy. I like the option of putting a light on it. But like I said, the guns that I keep are ones that I could, that I could use. Um, so yeah, I like the tactical rail personally, uh, but I do appreciate a good classic 1911. Solid. Me too. You mentioned earlier when buying a gun, choose your caliber and mag size for what you need from it. I know this is different for everyone, but what is the minimum round count for you to EDC? As much as I can. As I, nobody has ever been in a gunfight in history and said, man, I wish I would have had less ammo. Honestly, I, I didn't, I didn't need all this ammo. I, I, I wish I would have had less. There are people who have run dry. So as much as you can, uh, I don't know. I kind of defer to John Korea on that one because that dude has watched hundreds of thousands at this point, probably creeping up on a million, uh, shootings. And he collects a lot of data and he says minimum 10. Three servings per bad guy for three bad guys, nine rounds plus one. Uh, that being said, I feel more comfortable. The more I have, the more that's in the gun, the more I am happy with. Never trust a man with a woman's name. I'm going to have to think about that for a while to see if there's actually credence to that. Do you think the TTI Sand Viper competes in the Nighthawk Atlas class or is it just fashionable? It competes. It's legit good. Uh, oh man, people be blacking people. Uh, I have a Breda Vertec and the trigger reach grip is too short for me to comfortably shoot. I feel that. Anyone have replacement grip recommendations to bring back to hump lock grips, L O K grips. That's going to be, that's going to be your jam. Uh, what is your creative process? Like, do you typically start with a script or do you let the experience concept of what you're focusing on take priority? Well, I don't know if you're talking about YouTube or writing. I'm sure it was clear in your head when you typed it. Um, for doing a video, I just, I, a free ball it. Um, yeah, I just, I, I might write down some important points that I don't want to forget about. It doesn't always work. Sometimes I still forget it and I finish the video and I upload it and someone asks a question. I'm like, oh no, I totally should have said that. Um, making videos is hard. Uh, but as far as like writing go, oh yeah, you said script. So probably videos, right? As far as writing goes, I'm very much the same way. I just like, I jump, I just jump into the fire and see what happens. 
Uh, where does your Glock 45 with Radiant rank on your list of guns you own? Okay, so I did my video of top five best pistols. And that Glock with the Radiant Ramjet Afterburner was number four. Uh, but I, like as far as all of the... I, I did that list because I wanted a nice, diverse list. I didn't want it to just be like 2011, 2011, 2011, Beretta, Shadow 2, right? Like I, I wanted a nice, diverse list. So uh, yeah, I would say based on that list, like number four among pistols at least Sam. uh how many shot shows have you been to in the past never been able to actually go but i know i will eventually this was my first one that's why it was so insane like i did not intend on doing a video every day but i did that first industry day at the range video i don't know i did industry day at the range i was my, my goal was to do all of those videos or i not all those videos but like to get all the footage and then go home and do one video like a recap shot show video but then when I saw everybody else out there with like a million cameras and lights and microphones and, and crew and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, I might be able to get a leg up on people if I get a video out same day. So I just, oh, worked myself so hard. I, that was like a 20 hour day, uh, getting that video out. And then it did so well. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this every day. And, uh, a lot of you found me from that shot show coverage. So it was my first one. So it's obviously I made mistakes, right? My first one, all the same day coverage while making connections, all that. Oh my God. It was, it was rough, but it was, uh, I wouldn't trade the experience for anything. Uh, it was, uh, it was really good. And I'm looking forward to next year. Uh, five, seven is great for shots on target and follow-up shots. It is good for both of those things. Uh, the match trigger increases reach for me. It's less curve. That's good advice. Grow. What does he need to grow up about? Did I miss it? Oh, the, the blocked dude. Yeah, he blocked the guy. All right. I'll be anxiously waiting for your review on the Prodigy now that the LFA is out of the question. Yep. Prodigy sitting right next to me. Uh, it Right off the bat, just like a sneak preview of the review. Uh, it's got some fitment issues that I don't like. Yeah, like the uh, the mainspring housing, when you grip it tight, like creaks and clicks. And I'm like, I don't know if I like that. And the safety is poorly fit. That being said, if the thing runs reliably, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, I could at least recommend mine if you do your research on what, I'm one data point. Look at what happened to everyone else too. Thanks for the recommendation, Edison. I was also thinking about a trigger upgrades. Yeah, again, that was a good recommendation. Sweet. I love seeing the engagement. You guys are awesome. You guys are so friendly. A bunch of friendly people here. Who is your favorite person to meet at SHOT? Um. I met Dana Lash and the reason that was fun wasn't because of like any, I know she hangs out with like Tim Kennedy and stuff like that, but, uh, she, her boys really got her into anime and manga. So I basically talked to her and her family, her entire family about anime and manga for like 30 minutes. Uh, we didn't even talk about guns at all. She was just like relieved to find another gun person that was into that stuff at shot show. So that was cool. That being said, uh, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Hunter Constantine. Dude's an absolute bro. We had talked before, you know, online, uh, but we had never, uh, never actually met. Really cool guy. He, uh, yeah, solid, hundred percent, honest dude. Salt of the earth, good guy. Great sense of humor too. Uh, top three DASA pistols: Shadow One, Shadow Two, Shadow Two. <laughs> I'll be more diverse in my next life. That's funny. Uh, Eternity's probably on the clock right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he's been sitting in the crapper for three hours. Uh, looking forward to the Mac 1911DS by SDS Imports TSS. Yes, I will be getting one for the channel as soon as it hits the consumer market uh, and I can get my hands on one. My local shop, Bear Arms in Scottsdale, is really good about getting the new stuff in. So it's always like really sketch whenever I see people posting about it online, like, oh yeah, just picked up this Mac. And I'm like, dude, my shop hasn't gotten that in yet. And they're like on it. So I always, it's like kind of a red flag whenever I see that, but I will be getting that for the channel and running it. There's enough demand for it. And I'm curious myself. I want to give them an honest shot. My prodigy safety walked off just from basic use out of the box after I got it back from its first warranty trip. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that story. Like I either you're one dude with like a hundred accounts or this has literally happened to a hundred people that I've seen. Uh, Hunter Constantine makes actual great belts. He also runs around with the gun thoughts, dude. Yeah, absolutely. 
His belt is awesome. One of my favorite belts. He's getting one for the champ. Okay, <laughs> for that big. Can't damn wait. Yeah, me neither. I'm a, I, I really genuinely want to test it. I'm excited to see. Have you tried the DWX full size? I did shoot it at Industry Day. Bull, so, okay, so I shot the DWX and the compact. I didn't like the compact. That full size was super cool, though. I loved that thing. That thing ran. I, I mean, it's, it pretty much shot like a TS2, but with a 1911 trigger setup. So yeah, it was really cool. Oh yeah. People are getting into comments from a while ago. Yep. Honestly, probably know more about it than I do. Oh man. Caught up with comments again. Excited about anything coming from the peeps over at PSA. Uh, yeah. Excited about everything coming from them. I mean, they, they had the best booth at shot show. Like, I don't think anybody competed with them booth wise. They just knocked it out of the park, but, um, th I think that uh, they have a lot of cool stuff. Right. And, and you know that I'm, I'm, I'm really nerdy about handguns. That's like what I get really excited about. Like all their rifles that are coming out are super cool. They're a uh, little five, seven MP seven clone that they quickly 3d printed and cobbled together 30 minutes before the show. Uh, neat concept. Excited for that. I think that looks cool. But the coolest thing I held was that saber dagger that had the like um, the Lucky Seven style ports in the top. It was like a polished gold tin barrel uh, with like with like slide cuts and just holding that thing. I I held that. And I'm like, yeah. So the saber dagger. Looking forward to that. Uh, Gerson, 2311 witnesses. Yeah, guys at my local shop were telling me about that. Nothing but problems so far. And I think I saw, I, I scrubbed through Honest Outlaws review of that. And I think they sent him one and he even showed it choking at the end. So I would personally steer clear so far, although I would be interesting to interested to test it for myself. Back with the poopy hits the doopy. Uh, thoughts on LASIK eye surgery. Nothing scares me more than losing glasses, contacts in that situation. Currently saving for that over any other prep stuff. Yes, I have thoughts about that. My sister is an optometrist. Uh, she has as bad of eyesight as I have. She is much older than I am. She refuses to get LASIK and she wears glasses. Not only that, Every eye doctor in her practice that has bad eyesight also wears glasses and doesn't get LASIK. When you, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you see those videos where it's like the things that this retired FBI agent would never do. And he's like telling you all the things that it's like, I would do this. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. When you have those eye doctors that went through school and were, you know, free clinics and they saw, you know, LASIK and all that kind of stuff. When they're like, I'm not doing it, then I'm not doing it. Luckily, since she runs her own practice, I get a lot of frames and glasses. Uh, so I have in a, in a dookie hits the fan scenario, I have a lot of glasses and I always bend them to be glued to my head. Uh, but yeah, I personally wouldn't do LASIK. Uh, and I, I know a couple of my friends have done it and they regretted it. It was like starbursts, sorry, starbursts and uh, dry eye. Like you wouldn't believe and their vision, you know, after a few years goes back to not being great. Six M away for CCW all the way. Yeah, like like I said, uh, if anybody didn't see earlier on when I was talking about it, talk about the pros and cons of of the bigger dots. Uh, have you tried the XR1, XR2 Surefires? Yeah, I don't know. These don't really interest me, but yeah, they're fine. What do you think of the new TTI Canic gun coming out? Uh, this is going to be my first Canic and first Compted gun. Uh, yeah, it seemed fine. We'll see how it runs. I bet it runs well. I bet it's going to be good. Uh, I really hope they expand that line with the compensators. Like someone mentioned earlier, they should do a rival S set up like the TTI. 100% agree. But yeah, should be fine. I held it at shot. Didn't get to shoot it. Seemed okay. I can't really vouch for it. I can tell you that Century Arms and Canic customer service is terrible. If you ever have a problem, it's awful. Uh, but the gun itself seemed good. I've seen a lot of your vids, but I'm drawing a blank. Do you have something regarding holding a pistol to control recoil? You shoot so flat. Uh, no, I've never done that. The main reason for that is because I feel like I can't communicate in a, like a, in a YouTube video, everything that goes into it. I, and I don't know, I, 
those videos also don't really do well. They don't perform well. And people love the gear. They don't like the training. So it's like, you are like, man, get me in. But then there's like 10,000 people other than you that are like, shut up. I'm a great shot, which they're not. But that's something that you see when you've been an instructor for a really long time is the number one most common thing is people greatly and gravely overestimating their ability with a pistol or any firearm. Uh, so they, people think they're squared away. They want to see the gear. If a video is not going to perform well, with the way that the YouTube algorithm is now after the last update, which I think was like a year ago now, a video has to be a home run or it's not going to go anywhere. If a video doesn't go anywhere, then I'm literally wasting my time uploading, not necessarily into an abyss, but like, you know, 8,000 people will see it instead of 80,000 people. Uh, and I, two things, one, like if I'm putting that much time into a video, it feels like crap getting paid pennies for it. Uh, and number two, I want to make sure that as many people as possible are exposed to the information. So when it comes to that, I mentioned earlier that I'm going to be doing an online course. I did my live beta launch, uh, in the last quarter of last year, went super well, got some excellent feedback. Everyone loved it and enjoyed it. And I'm going to be doing a more streamlined version of it probably in the next three months. So look forward to that. It's going to be an accessible way, uh, for you to get some, some good shooting instruction. Uh, but short answer, get a really, really strong support hand grip train support hand grip strength. That doesn't go over the technique, but at the very least that will get you somewhere. Uh, thoughts on shadow system V2 V G19. I've heard some reliability issues with shadow, but like the grip angle. Yeah. Sh uh, shadow systems hit or miss. Uh, like I, most of them run great. Some of them don't. That's the, basically what I can say about shadow systems is if you get a shadow systems, vet your particular gun for reliability as you should be doing anyways. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't have anything against shadow systems. I, I love the guys that are, you know, running shadow systems. That being said, that's my, that's my view on it. Do you shoot IDPA or USPSA? I used to, I used to, uh, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't lighting my fire. You know, it's just not what I enjoyed. I actually grew up competing very heavily, uh, in the, in like shotgun sports. So like skeet, sporting clays, trap, that kind of stuff. Like it was my life and just absorbed my entire adolescence. Uh, so I think I got kind of like a burnout and then I moved on and I was thinking that I could move on to IDPA, USPSA, IPSC, that kind of stuff. And, uh, like steel challenge kind of stuff. I tried all of those disciplines. I did it for maybe, oh, I don't know, a few years at least uh, you know, like, like a once a week kind of thing for, for like, like three or four years. Uh, and it was fine. I, I don't know, man. It just, it's the typical crap. I, I'm fairly introverted. Like I'm like, if I meet one of you guys, like if one of you sees me in public, come over and say hi to me. Like, I love meeting people. I love, I love being friendly. Uh, I'm, I'm like the nicest person that you'll ever meet. As long as I'm not hungry. If I'm, if I'm hungry, then I might be a little short, but, um, I'm kind of introverted. And with those competitions, there's just fucking drama. Like people get so upset, like your toe was on the line kind of thing. And uh, it's not like I was shooting. It's not like it's like state or like national championships. I was doing that in the shotgun sports um, and people just losing their stuff. And I don't know, just the typical drama that comes along at any club. It just kind of was killing it for me. So I kind of moved like, you know, Eagles don't flock kind of thing of just training on my own. And honestly, I saw a lot of improvement when I started dedicated, using my time to train on my own and push myself on my own. I would like to get back into USPSA maybe in the next, I'll give myself another like three years to get over the childhood trauma burnout of competing. What classes have you took or what instructors would you want to take classes with and why? Um, I, I'm going to address instruct cause I've, I've gotten a lot of instruction from people. I'm really grateful to have gotten instruction from them. Um, but I'm going to address the instructors I want to take classes with, uh, pretty much one right off the top of my head is uh point one tactics. Um, what's his name? Donovan Moore. I think he is just like a, an, an animal. It's one of those things where, you know, I'm, I'm getting good. 
I'm getting really good. And then I see him, he's making me look really bad. And it's like, uh, that's the person that I look for. I look for the person that makes me look like I'm awful. Uh, so yeah, he's probably someone I would, I would like to take a class with. It used to be modern samurai project. I, I would have liked to have taken a class with him. Uh, it just seems like he's gotten kind of, kind of big. It's getting kind of streamlined. So yeah, Donovan more point one tactics has my, has my eye right now for my next, my next class. Um, I also like to get uh range master certified. Uh, I'm a cross dominant shooter. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no. Uh, wanted to get my first air 15. Do you think I should get a regular lower with ambi controls or get a lower made for lefties open to recommendations for brands, man, you're going to have to commit to how you're going to shoot. It's like, if you don't already have an air 15 and because of that, you're not sure then, you know, you can get an ambi and figure it out. But if you can, I'd figure it out before you commit, figure out how, like you need to commit to a hand whatever you decide to do, whether you're going to close one eye uh, or shoot both eyes open, depending on which hand you're in, you, you just commit to it and then figure it out from there. Whistling Diesel has a good story about LASIK. Spoiler, I won't get LASIK either. Exactly. I was this close to getting LASIK and uh, I didn't chicken out. I just, I decided not to. Uh, your argument on human tissue is a good one, but there is a video of people dropping a large deer at 50 yards with a Glock. Yeah, that's the interesting thing, right? Is people shooting the large deer. Uh, that's, that's different than people and, uh, it depends on their load, right? So like the example that I always use is you'll take something like the example that I use is 44 Magnum. So you get a lot of 44 Magnum, Magnum hollow point ammunition. Cause believe it or not, there's some people who every day carry a 44 Magnum, the hollow point ammunition you will buy from the store shelf is typically made for hunting. What that means is, is it's made to get ideal penetration and expansion in a larger animal at distance. So the bullet is traveling further, losing steam, entering a large animal, penetrating and expanding in that animal. If you take that round and you shoot bipedal tissue with it, it could just zip through. Like it's not optimally designed to travel a short distance and start expanding on contact with reaching an appropriate penetration for a person. So it depends on their, they probably had a really good load or excellent shot placement with a Glock. So whether it was 10 millimeter or 45, um, uh, it, you know, it, it kind of boils down to that is, is you need to select the best ammo for the job, which I think just kind of reinforces my point is you need to pick the right ammo for the application. Do you feel that switching back and forth between a red dot and irons on a pistol hurts your performance in any way? Nope. Because if you use the front sight, as you do a dot, shoot target focused and use the front sight as a dot, you're shooting the same both ways. Streamlight mentioned high candela replacement front cap for TLR7. Man, that, I didn't see that. That's cool. Uh, super happy that I don't have to get new holsters and keep running this epic light. TLR7 was a great start and I knew that. I have I, I have, uh, I have secret service buddies who you know, were issued the TLR7s and had complaints. And... So I knew it was a good start for them and I was excited to see what they were going to do with it. So I'm excited to see that we're getting a, a high candela replacement front cap. That's a step in the right direction of improving the design, uh, trying to find the best grip. I'm practicing the MSP wave grip recently. Yeah. The wave grip has uh, credence for those of you who don't know, that's uh, when you are putting your support hand on the gun from the draw, you kind of hit the trigger guard with your knuckle. And then you wave your hand over and apply pressure and, it to and you torque your hand forward. So it looks like a wave when you do it. Yeah, that's an effective way to get your hand on it from the holster. Um, as long as you have the fundamentals right of a, a very hard and consistent placement of your support hand, you're good to go. But that's certainly a technique that you can use. Um, it's one that I did for a long time and I kind of do a modified, modified version of that now. Uh, have you seen the Grantham video on five, seven terrible on gel or the FUD busters oxide? He shows it fails at the design purpose of penetrating Soviet body armor. Yeah, absolutely. This is why I recommend everybody does a research five, seven. I would never use it defensively unless you were somebody who, again, older person, arthritis, you're getting high capacity, you're getting the low recoil, all that kind of stuff. And you're poking holes. So, yep. But, and again, ammo selection is very important when it comes to five, seven, would you rather carry a sky or a brick? I'd, rather, I'd take a sky. I'll take anything that gives me the advantage of distance, no matter how bad it is. Um, 
Very interesting with the LASIK stuff. Apparently my eyes are borderline too bad for it. I'd have to get, oh yeah, I wouldn't do that. I would not get that ICL surgery. I think I'll stock up on glasses too. Thanks for your take on that. Absolutely. And my biggest recommendations for a glasses wearer is, um, you know, when you're getting your glasses fitted, uh, uh, do I have another pair around here somewhere? Yes. When you're getting your glasses fitted, I always have them rank bend the ears and have them, you'll see it's kind of like rounded in like this. I have them do that. So under any kind of extreme movement, they don't go flying off my face. Uh, so, I mean, you have to, it's a, it's a careful balance. Cause you go too tight, you know, start giving you headaches. But once you find that sweet spot, you're good to go. Also for my, uh, bad eyesight bros, not sponsored by them, but pit vipers, you see me wearing them in my videos, pit viper RX inserts. It's my favorite eye protection. And I just have one insert and can change it between pairs. So if you're, if you're, if you have bad eyesight, I highly recommend the pit viper RX with RX inserts. Um, you can get whatever pairs you like and just move the inserts between the pairs. Just one insert. You're a cowboy bebop man. Have you checked out Outlaw Star? Yes, I have. Same animation company. Very, is it? I, uh, I have same production company, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. This is where I would need like Google. Uh, very similar feel and cool as F. I feel like it's a bit of a sleeper, but more people should know it's killer. Yeah, Outlaw Star is super good. I mean, any Toonami kid in the 90s, absolutely. Uh, hopefully saw at least some Outlaw Star. But yeah, so Cowboy Bebop, I think hands down is better, right? But Outlaw Star, um, super cool intro, very stylish. It's a... Um, it requires patience. It's a little, it's a little slower paced. Uh, animation's not as refined, right? Uh, maybe it was the same animation studio. I think uh, you might be right. Um, what was it? Outlaw Star. Right. And one of the best finales ever. I love how they all split off and they're all fighting like individual villains. Such a cool finale. And uh, probably one of the best fan service episodes of any anime ever. Uh, why do we get those nightmares where your Glock trigger is gritty and 50 pounds when you need it the most? Yeah. So I was joking. The one who gets that nightmare is my wife. She'll have the like thousand pound trigger that just won't pull no matter how hard it is. I've actually, have I, I don't think I've had a like defensive encounter nightmare or dream at all since I like first started carrying so a long time ago. Um, how much dry fire do you do a day, a week? And what specifically are you doing? What's giving you results and what is a waste of time? I Man, that's a very good question. That's a very, see, you're taking it. You're, you're taking full advantage of my time being on here. And that's, that's very good. I applaud you. Um, so dry fire, I dry fire every day. I don't put on my mantis and sit, like, I, like, I don't do that kind of stuff. I, I legitimately just dry fire like a normal human being, uh, snap caps, depending on the gun. Um, on a Beretta, I'll put like a foamy earplug in between the firing pin and the hammer. Um, cause those seem, Berettas seem to be a little more sensitive to long, long, long term dry fire. Uh, but I dry fire every single day. I don't even really make a thing out of it. I just make sure that my technique is purposeful and I make sure that I, I'm not just a, applying, I'm not just dry firing and going click, right? I'm making sure that my grip is a hundred percent as if I was shooting I'm making sure what I'm looking at is exactly what I would be looking at. A lot of people, they'll get the bad habit from looking at the dot instead of at the target um, from dry fire because they're pointing at a wall looking at the dot. So I make sure that I'm being very purposeful with my eyesight, being very purposeful with my grip. And I practice dry firing with my finger from different positions. So off the trigger, slamming it down, uh, you know, at the beginning of the trigger, through the slack, through the wall and, and, and pressing the trigger from the wall and pressing the trigger um, and mimicking the reset. I mean, it's, I could go really, really in depth with this. This is one of the things that I actually covered in my uh, live online pistol instruction class. I go really, really in depth with, with meaningful dry fire, but um, basically just making sure that it's as if I were shooting. So I'm building good habits, good muscle memory and uh, a nice variety of things as well. So yeah, make sure you, my one piece of advice is make sure your grip pressure is 1000% clamped down with your support hand. And another bad habit that pops up is when you're doing that and you dry fire, what do you do? You cycle the slide and go back to it, right? 
Well, essentially what you can be training yourself to do, and it's not this way for everyone, but it's this way for enough people that you should mention it, um, is you're training yourself that when it goes click, you loosen your support hand. You loosen your support hand to rack the slide. So make sure that you dry fire, mimic a reset instantly. A lot of people will go click, cycle it, reset the trigger, click. That's that's not helping you as much as you think it is. Strong grip pressure and then click, mimic a reset. So click, mimic a reset while maintaining your grip pressure. Like you can't, That's the thing is some people go click and they'll loosen up. Nope. Click, mimic a reset, hold for like one, two, three, then cycle it and build your grip and go again. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be training yourself to get squeezy with your support hand and you uh, will be training yourself to trigger freeze by not mimicking a reset instantly. There are gimmicks out there like, you know, dry fire ma mags and stuff like that that will give you the reset feeling um, or like the cool fire trainer, but you can mimic it on your own. Uh, what else do we have? See many vids of that caliber and gel and the penetration was very good. Yeah. 27. Yeah. Nope. I know it takes me a long time to make videos. I kind of admire the folks that shoot a short video in one take and call it good. I can't do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I, I know I make it sound easy, but it's not like it's, it's a lot of brain power and, um, I do mess up in videos. It's like, I obviously I'm winging it, but I'll mess up at the end. I'll be like, Oh, I forgot to say that. And I'll say it at the end. And then I have to edit it all together. So it's just like, do you want to spend your time in pre-production or in post-production? That's kind of the, the reality of it. Uh, you mentioned getting a PDP match for testing with the price increases from the upgrades in the steel frame version getting close to 2011 territory. Is it even in the same class of pistol? I think it's an alternative. I think if you don't like 2011s, I think that it's a decent alternative. The steel frame PDPs. I think it's a, if you're just like, man, I just don't like 2011s, but I want a really nice gun that performs well. It's an alternative. I have a couple of pistols from Bolt Armory and they've been solid. Absolutely, man. Uh, hey, Brett, where did you get your Model 66? I love the Old Smiths. I've been looking for a 66 or a 66-1 snub. Got it from my local shop, Bear Arms Firearms in Scottsdale. Uh, I got really lucky because a dude brought in that Model 66 no-dash and that 629 no-dash, and I scooped them both up. So, but obviously, and I, again, I need to be careful on YouTube, right? G Broker uh, is going to be the easiest way to find it. You're just going to pay a bit of a premium so yeah, I wish you luck on your search, man. Like that's, I love that 66. If you can find the dash one, I would go dash one uh, because they moved the um, gas ring. Uh, and I've noticed that mine under a lot of shooting, it won't lock up, but it gets a little sluggy. I gotta, I gotta remove the cylinder and clean it after like a thousand rounds. Uh, I understand that training videos do poorly. I'll see if I can get into your online course once launched. Physical fitness and training seems to be very important. Yeah. Yep. You nailed it. Buffman range does a lot of vids on five, seven. I have to check them out. Anyone who wants five, seven over the line. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, that's exactly what it's like uh, when you're shooting competition at the local level. Video showed quite, uh, I mean, we did more damage to the gel. Yeah. Yeah. You can really dig into that, into that stuff to see how everything performs. Speaking of training, do you have any recommendations in the Phoenix area willing to drive all over the Valley for quality training? Um, I, I'm just trying to like, like who, oh, it's tough, man. It's tough. Um, Phoenix area dynamic combative solutions run by a guy named David Laird, really good guy. And, uh, the, so he's actually the guy who certified me for like all my instructor creds. Uh, he's, a, he's just a all around amazing dude. Uh, he may like, the reason I'm hesitant is because I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't teach all, he doesn't touch this, teach the stuff that I teach, right? Like I keep cutting edge of this red dot appendix carry stuff. And also, you know, it's like, basically I, I keep up to date on all that stuff. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm just saying that, uh, he goes with, he has a balance of the updated stuff and the tried and true. That being said, if you want to have a good time training dynamic combative solutions, if you can get a class with him, uh, I know, I know he has other instructors, but he is just such a cool guy that I dynamic combative solutions. Uh, and he said, Hey, if you got the money, go train with Haley, Haley strategic. Um, going to cut out. Thank you again for this Q and A last week. Hobby needs more stuff like this. Awesome. I'm really glad that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I can't wait for now. Uh, one's bigger and slower. 
yeah, they, it's hard to compare the two. That's not program being less than ideal for humans. Also extremely true for 10 millimeter. Hence by defensive 10 millimeter hull points are just 40 Smith and Wesson speed solution. Just carry 40 Smith and Wesson. Duh. I see your emoji. I see your emoji because I'm, I'm slightly triggered. No, uh, there is, there is a balance, right? It's, you can get a good 10 millimeter load that has more punch than 40 Smith and Wesson that is still good in bipedal tissue. It's, when you start, I mean, you can dive down the rabbit hole. I'm not saying 40 Smith & Wesson is bad. 40 Smith & Wesson is a good cartridge for a semi-automatic pistol. Can your sister hook me up with more glasses? LOL, man. I, the amount of times that people ask me that. Um, do you, Johnny Glock trigger vid, your Johnny Glock trigger vid is probably one of the most popular vids about that product. Do you feel that it's safe to carry? I do. Uh, you just have to be confident in your installation of the trigger or be confident in the person or gunsmith who installs it. Um, yeah, it boils down to installation and mistakes happen, right? So I would vet your individual Johnny Glock's trigger for any issues from my, well, not my experience, but from what I've heard from other people, it seems like Johnny Glock's is really good about taking care of the very few that slip through the cracks. They, they make it right. If any, that slip through the cracks, I've heard of very few issues. Um, but the one thing that I do want to mention is in the full size Johnny Glocks, like I mentioned in my video, that uh, over 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 travel stop screw in there, right? Uh, that can start to to back out. And so I was talking to him. I was actually DMing him about this, and he said that it's the polymers settling. So you have the polymer trigger pack, you have the polymer frame, and like everything kind of settles after a few hundred rounds and is in a different pos position just by, we're talking a tiny, tiny bit than it was when you first installed it. So I would wait to adjust that over travel screw to where you like it until you have a few hundred rounds through it. And it, and it has, everything has settled because mine has not backed out since. Uh, and I've, I'm now 3000 rounds, maybe a little more. Uh, and since that first 300, when it backed out a little bit, it has not backed out since. So I do genuinely think that he knows his stuff um, and I think he might, he was talking about including it in the literature with the Johnny Glock's trigger. So um, hopefully he started doing that. Trump 2024, uh, obviously I have my reservations about, uh, Trump and his two way history. That being said, yes, let's, yeah, let's get political in the live stream. That's going to be fun. Uh, I dry fire at the range before and after shooting. I think that's smart. I think even during shooting can be smart, depending on if you find yourself developing shot anticipation or flinching, just stop and take a second and iron it out with dry fire. Um, I think that's, I think that's great. Dry fire before and after, uh, just don't forget to dry fire, you know, from the holster too. I think that's, I think that's equally important. Um, I have a new Beretta 92X Performance Carry Optic with a fiber optic front sight that was dull right out of the box. Is it defective or are those generally fairly dull? What do you think? Defective? It's hard to say. I mean, there could be bad batches. It could have been exposed to heat in shipping or something like that. If it really bothers you, you can always give them a call. Uh, I don't know. I personally, I wouldn't bug out over it myself. But then again, I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of jaded at this point, foamy earplug between hammer and pin on 1911 2011s as is with Beretta during dry fire. Not really. Uh, the weight that the 1911 and 2011 was designed, uh, was, I think the, the best way to decock it is actually to, I mean, obviously not <laughs> live fire, right. But dropping the hammer, uh, might actually be better for the overall health of the gun, the long-term health of the gun. So yeah, I'd say drop it all day. I would, however, use snap caps if you're doing it like thousands and thousands and thousands of reps. When you mimic a reset on a Beretta, do you go all the way out to DA or keep it SA? I go back to where my next shot is going to be. Uh, so I will, you know, like start with a double action. Boom. And then mimic to single action. And then I'll mimic from single action from there. And then I'll, so, and then I'll, you know, when I feel like it'll go back to double action. New shooters ask me how much to squeeze with your support hand. I tell them as much as you would if you had to shake a guy's hand that you caught clapping your wife's cheeks. That's it. I don't know. It depends on the guy. Might get a fish handshake out of that one. Uh, you're four times more likely to get shot with your own firearm accidentally than using it to defend yourself. Have a damn good holster with a minimum five pound trigger. PA out mic drop from the internet attorney. Um, 
I do want to say that this, I don't know, they, them, I don't want to, I don't want to assume June, uh, Fayfair, Zim. I don't think Zim, uh, is wrong. I think Zim is a hundred percent correct. Uh, you are statistically significantly more likely to shoot yourself with your own firearm on accident than, uh, using it to defend yourself. It's hundred percent true. I don't think a pound and trigger weight is going to make that difference. I think being disciplined with training and being responsible is going to save the day there. Let's practice proper gun safety, folks. Uh, yeah, whatever you say, maybe in the hood. Now, actually, yet you'd be surprised, my dude. Now, let's not beat up on June. June is pro Second Amendment. It's okay to have a different opinion, but it's also okay to have your own opinion. Staccato P or wait for the new C debating. Ah, okay. So here's the deal. You are going to want to think about what magazine ecosystem you want to be in. So, so the 2011 ecosystem, right? You can upgrade to Atlas Gunworks, to Infinity, to... Uh, I'm blanking on every other person that makes 2011s, but you know what I mean? You can get like the, the cheaper T sauce for a range toy. Uh, you can get all of these different guns and your magazines are all going to work together. Right. Uh, you can also get magazines a little bit cheaper directly from the maker of the OEM staccato magazines, checkmate. And you can even get the cheaper like prodigy mags, right. To play with, uh, do some malfunction training drills, but the C just feels like a 1911 in the hand with a 2011 capacity. And that's really, really hard to pass up. My only reservation about the C is that it has X macro disease, which is the base plate is so big on the bottom of that magazine that it ruins what would otherwise be a perfect grip. Uh, so hopefully they have a flush fit model soon. I am also going to tell you that the staccato was not running 100% at the staccato shill day is what I heard. So I would wait now they said they're not going to release it until it's hundred percent, but I might get batch two or batch three of the staccato C if that's the way you want to go. Just know you're getting into a proprietary magazine ecosystem that is a fairly new magazine ecosystem. So think about pros and cons, which way you want to go. Uh, it just depends on what you want to do with it. End of story. Uh, do you cover your dot when training or shooting? No, but if you're struggling with target focus, if you're struggling with not looking at the dot, if you're struggling with your eyesight in any way around the dot, absolutely. Including the dot can be extremely valuable. I do recommend it as uh, and recommend it for training. Uh, if the dookie hits the fan and I needed to pick a sidearm out of my collection, I would pick my M9 A4. Change my mind. You could do much worse than that, my friend. You could do much worse. Right on. Oh, boy. Uh, it's better to be hurt by someone you know accidentally than by a stranger on purpose. Dwight Schrute. Words to live by. Tell me you have a law degree from a liberal school without telling me. Dyed hair, perhaps? I, I mean, the thing is, like, he's not wrong. Statistically speaking you are more likely to injure yourself than to use it defensively. And I think that we need to take a moment, humbly think about that. There are some people out there. I mean, does does anybody remember when Such planted around in his desk light, like on camera? What was it, like a CZ PL1 or a CZ75 compact or something? I mean, talk about, I mean, I know y'all make fun of him for being a shill, but this dude's around guns all the time. Um, say what you want about him. But he's not somebody who you'd be like, yeah, that, you know, he had a channel for how many years before that happened? So just like, let's take a moment. Uh, there are some people out there very experienced that have, uh, they've taken around courtesy of their own trigger finger. So he's not wrong, but I just don't think a heavy trigger is the solution as we've seen in New York city. Uh, I think, I think discipline, training, responsibility, uh, and having a trigger that you can run fast defensively and accurately is, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, irons before red dot, or should I just bite the bullet and stick one on my range toy and carry and my carry it's getting very political in here. Can't wait for your future uploads. Peace, dude. Blessings. Peace right back at you. I appreciate you. Uh, I'd start with a dot. 
it is easier to start with a dot and go back to irons than it is to start with irons and go back to a dot. End of story. For the Duke, he hits the fan. I'm grabbing my MP9 medal. MP9. Yeah, another good choice. Office pop. Yep. Try not to leave your finger on the trigger challenge. Impossible, right? Uh, June said four times. Four times more likely, though. Yeah, I don't know the exact statistic, right? Um, but I've, I've definitely heard that. I've heard it. I've heard, not heard, but I've seen that statistic backed up. Uh, not necessarily the four times more likely, but it's significantly more likely, at least. His point, his point remains. Uh, so car manufacturers or drivers get sued for chipping or modifying their vehicles. Exactly. Nothing is going to trump regular, tr regularly training. Now I will do a preface that regularly, uh, purposeful training, right? Let's be purposeful with our, with our training. Uh, let's make sure we're, we're doing it right. My dude, I know you're huge on grip texture. Have you gripped the Steyr M9A2 Cyber Gun or any of its variants? The grip is insane in the membrane. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's very good grip texture. They did a good job, both placement and texture. Um, I super dig it. I just don't trust the gun for hard use. At least yet. I don't know. I'll get one and put 10,000 rounds through it and then let you know. All right, man. I'm surprised this many of you have stuck around this out. What, what are we at? Creeping up on four hours? Uh, brr, brr, brr. All caught up on comments. Anybody have anything else? Now is your chance. Oh, because other than that, I don't know. What, what was some of the other filibustering stuff so I can give you guys an opportunity to come up with some last minute comments? I know that uh, like so many of you followed me on Instagram from this live, which is cool. I'm like super shadow banned on Instagram. Uh, so I guess this is the only way I can get followers now. Um, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So as, as we wrap up here, unless like everybody gets done with dinner and like 500 people come in here, um, I can talk about some upcoming videos. Uh, is your live stream a weekly thing? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think it's going to be weekly. I think I'll do it occasionally. This was really good. I really enjoyed talking to you all. So I will definitely do it again. Um, I might experiment and try it on a weekday evening to see how that goes, kind of compare how many people showed up on the weekend versus uh, a weekday evening. Um, ba -ba -ba. All right. This was your question. Just want to give you full credit for asking a good question. Great Q&A, man. We, uh, we keep it up. We're going to end up talking about video games, right? Yes. Feel free. Bring up video games. I'm here for it. Uh, your thoughts on the Holosun SCS optics. I've become a huge fan. I think they're awesome. I would love to see them put bigger windows on them. That's, those are my thoughts. I think they're awesome. I want to see bigger windows. Hit me with the bigger windows. I have returned. Suh, dude. Suh. Good to have you back. Came back. What looks like it's probably going to be winding down unless somebody can come up with some, some really good questions. I'm just going to go over some upcoming videos on the channel, kind of give you guys a sneak peek. Uh, thanks for your time and hard work. Keep it up. Appreciate it, man. Uh, how are you on cleaning guns? Every range tip, every one K never just oil and go. Honestly, the more guns I get, the more it's just kind of oil and go. That being said, guns that I, I might need to use, uh, in a serious role. If it's staged for defense, it's clean. Um, for the most part, at least oiled, right? At least low round count and oiled. Uh, but I like to keep stuff at around a thousand, clean it 1500 maybe. Uh, but either way, like, you know, I, you know, I love 2011s. I keep that oiled. It's one of those things. I oil that every 500 rounds. I, I did see how I tried to see how long my XC would go. I kept that thing going to, uh, fifth, almost 1500 rounds without cleaning or oiling. It never malfunctioned but it started chugging. It was like bang, chug, chug, bang, chug, chug, bang, chug, chug. Uh, so I figured it was probably time to clean it and oil it. Never malfunctioned, but uh, yeah. So I try to, try to every 1K. That's short answer. Short t TLDR, every 1K. Thanks for your time. Yeah, yeah. I just, I love seeing the, the positive feedback twice. Have you played RoboCop? Rouge City. Uh, yes, I played Rogue City. Uh, I, th I thought it was a lot of fun. Obviously, it wasn't the best game ever. Obviously, it was low budget. If you're somebody who likes RoboCop, 
you're going to like that game. It was fun. I enjoyed my time with it. Uh, what video games are you into? Where do I start? <laughs> I, I'm into a lot of video games. Um, it's like one of those things. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't party. I don't gamble. I'm not a car guy. Uh, I basically, I like guns. I like movies. I'm a huge movie buff. I like video games. Huge video game buff. And uh, later in life, I got into anime and manga. Like a lot of people think that like, I'm like, this, I've been this hyper nerd forever. No, man, I hid my nerdiness for a long, long time. And then I was like, you know what? I think it's just time to normalize that gun dudes don't just have to be like bearded tacta bros. Um, it's like, we can be just like dudes who have other interests who still can slay on the range and know a lot about guns and support, you know, the second amendment gun ownership, uh, getting rid of the NFA abolishing the ATF and the FBI. But yeah, what video games am I into? Uh, like high, high answer. I like, uh, like the dark souls franchise. I know someone asked about Elden ring. I'll get to you. Uh, so like the dark soul from soft games. So like dark souls, demon souls, uh, all of them, Sekiro, uh, like I've, I've gotten all the trophies in all of those games. Uh, I really like uh, kind of off the beaten path. The Yakuza franchise, uh, like a dragon RGG, whatever you know it as that I'm a huge fan of that franchise. Mass Effect is one of the more popular things that I, I adore. Mass Effect 1 through 3. Um, on the same Bioware vein, you know, like Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, uh, uh, Dragon Age Origins, Jade Empire, like all, all of all of the, the good years of Bioware, right? Uh, Metal Gear Solid, huge Metal Gear Solid fan. Uh, I, li I love all of them, uh, except for Phantom Pain. I thought it was okay. Uh, is unfinished is what it is. Huge Resident Evil fan. So much Resident Evil. Um, uh, Final Fantasy VII is one of my favorite things of all time. Really looking forward. Rebirth comes out at the end of the month. Um, yeah, I can't believe I didn't mention Bloodborne when talking about Dark Souls games. Uh, Near Automata, another one of my big, big time favorites. Uh, let's see what other people are saying. Uh, all of my carry guns are clean after every range session because I don't want my Frank and beans smelling like gunpowder. Women aren't turned on by that. Yeah, maybe not yours. Uh, not a car guy. Boo this man. I'm sorry, dude. I just never got into it. Now, here's the thing. I do appreciate a nice car. I just don't know a lot about them. Um, well, I should say, you know, like, not like a car nerd, like I am a gun nerd. Um, have you seen the holdovers yet? Paul Giamatti is going to beat Cillian Murphy for the best actor Oscar. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. I don't really like movies anymore. Like, like I'm, I shouldn't say movie. I don't like modern movie. I struggle to enjoy modern films. Call of Duty, I used to a lot. Uh, so, like, uh, Modern Warfare, or original. Don't don't get me started. Uh, OG Modern Warfare, uh, World at War, uh, Modern Warfare Two, definitely Black Ops, OG. Um, yeah, I used to I used to play Call of Duty all the time now i don't i got kind of burned out and plus i like the older games better uh my current gaming addictions are warhammer 40k dark tide and halo infinite Ew. uh but warhammer 40k dark tide is something that i i've been intending to do um but yeah halo infinite man i've i granted i have firefight pve probably the least bad thing to like in that game a good product for lubing and cleaning pistols okay do you want something that does both i mean clp is kind of the go-to for that i use two separate products I use a non-toxic gun cleaner because I, it's like my wife can't stand the smell. Like I don't want to give her a migraine. Uh, I also have pets. So I, I just prefer to keep things non-toxic, uh, which is M Pro 7 gun cleaner. And then I oil with, not for corrosion resistance, but for function, uh, Lucas gun oil. Th that's what I, that's what I personally do. One, Bloodborne. Two, Elden Ring. Three, Dark Souls. One, four, Dark Souls. Three, five, Sekiro. Six, Dark Souls. Two, AC6 was a great time, great game. And I loved it. Yeah, I also loved AC6. Um, it was my second favorite game of last year, but yeah, Bloodborne goaded, right? Dark Souls one, um, just has a special place in my heart. I put that at number one, just purely like nostalgia factor, right? Um, I mean, it's your top three. It does still hold up, but yeah, Bloodborne, Dark Souls one, Elden Ring is interesting because there were like, I'm so sick of open world games. Uh, but it was cool to experience it at least once. I, I don't know. I prefer the more, 
uh, thought out and structured versions like Bloodborne, Dark Souls, that kind of stuff. Um, DS3, like you said, number four is good. Sekiro is awesome, although I dread ever replaying it. Oh my God, I, getting the Platinum Trophy in that was uh, probably one of the hardest Platinums I've gotten. Uh, DS2, definitely, it's underrated though. Like the more you play it, the better it gets. Um, yeah, AC6, super dope. I think they did a great job with characters in that game. Thoughts on Star Wars next movie being a Ray continuation. Uh, wish I could bleach my eyeballs after reading your comment. Halo, yeah, dude. Oh my God. Halo 1, 2, 3, even Reach. Legendary. No Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, I played Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I, I'm excited for what Baldur's Gate 3 is going to become. Uh, it was, I mean, my playthrough of it was super buggy, super frustrating. Well, not super frustrating, but frustrating. Um, also, and I, I, I hope my lefty friends don't roast me too hard over this, but there were too many, I'm not saying the whole thing was woke, right? But they had so many writers and so many creative people on there that some of the woke stuff crept through. And that, that kind of irritated me too, but I'm excited to see what Baldur's Gate 3 definitive, definitive edition looks like. Cause looking at Divinity Original Sin 2 versus the definitive edition, much better experience. So Baldur's Gate 3, I enjoyed my time with it. Looking forward to more hype for Dune Part 2. I don't know, kind of, like I said, it's kind of hard for me to get excited about modern movies, but I mean, you know, Dune was one of the better ones. Uh, you rock any lever guns? 4570 seems like it's becoming a thing. I have a Taurus, well not Taurus, a Rossi Rio Grande. 4570 as my lever gun that I've had forever. And that thing runs. I, they discontinued it. I, I hope it wasn't for a bad reason. But yeah, I do have that. And I've been wanting to get obviously like the Marlin, right? But I just can't justify it because I have one that works and I don't shoot it very often because it's like $180 a shot. Top three favorite pistols. I did a top five best pistols video. A uh, quick recap for my top three. It would be one Staccato XC, two Beretta 92G Elite. Langdon Tactical, and three, the CZ Shadow 2. Uh, Shepard. Yeah, my Mass Effect homie. Fallout 4, but I have to run mods to add real guns, preferably lore-friendly guns. I don't know, man. I was such a New Vegas fan. I just... Because I played Fallout 3, and it was fine. Uh, I mean, I played Fallout 1 and 2 back in the day, right? But I played Fallout 3. It was fine. I enjoyed myself. Uh, don't think I never replayed it. Uh, played New Vegas a bunch. I just couldn't get into 4. Four was just like, I, I, I couldn't do it. It was just too much of the same. Uh, Obsidian did a great job with New Vegas. Empro 7 is my my go-to gun cleaner as that protective coat makes subsequent cleanings a breeze. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Lucas Gun Oil stays in my range back. That's a great idea. Great advice. I feel validated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I hear you on the woke stuff with BG3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I said, it wasn't every writer. I feel like a lot of like the Larian dudes were fine. I feel like a lot of the writers were fine, but you just get a couple of these self-inserting wokesters that cannot help themselves. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm seeing people, enough people leave that I'm going to start winding this down. Uh, if a few of you want to like stick around and talk video games, that's fine. But if you're like watching this replay, um, I'm going to start winding it down a little bit. Uh, really glad to hear that you guys enjoyed. I will definitely be doing more. Uh, so yeah, unless you guys, uh, toss a few more comments in there, uh, while I'm talking about upcoming videos, uh, we're going to start bringing this to a close, but if you want to hear about upcoming videos, stick around, come on, the last of us and Tarkov fans, LOL. Yeah. That's uh, was from young Beretta. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The last of OG, the last of us, uh, that's, that's something special, but man, did that, that franchise took a dive. Uh, and yeah, Tarkov. And that's, is there a better time killer than Tarkov? Love New Vegas, my man. You know what's good. You know what's good. Surprise, your favorite game isn't Watch Dogs. Uh, so some upcoming videos that I have on the channel. Uh, bloop, bloop. Uh, obviously, Springfield Prodigy. Flash that earlier. Hopefully the video stays up. Um, what else? Uh, MNP Shield Plus coming up. That's going to be good. Smith & Wesson Performance Center 586L Comp. So I'm getting a modern production Smith on there. Uh, model 629, no dash, 44 Magnum. So getting some classic wheel guns. Uh, my The rarest gun I own, one of 300 Lou Horton model 681-4 quad ported, uh, just absolute seven shot mega blaster of a, of a, of a revolver. Man, say that five times fast. Uh, that's awesome. Also, uh, I'm going to be trying out that Jacob Gray 2011 from SHOT Show. Stealth Arms Platypus, hands down, just waiting for the new changes to drop. Um, and uh, soon, in the next probably month or so, I'm going to be doing 
my actual everyday carry like pocket dump video. I've never done one of those. And a lot of people have been wanting to see like, what exactly do you carry on your body? So yeah, those are kind of the, that's the upcoming future. Although I don't know, I'm kind of, uh, I fly by the seat of my pants and you like something shiny will come across my way. And I'll do a video on that instead. instead. So definitely expect some surprises on the channel as well. That's just a sneak peek. I'm really glad you said this thoughts on Zev's OZ nine, because I forgot about that one. I have an upcoming video on the Zev as well. Um, that one's going to be a ways out. I be, I have all these videos stacked up and it's like a nightmare looking at all of it. So I'm just kind of trying to take it uh, one bite at a time, but my thoughts on the Zev OZ nine, I've heard people having problems with them and struggling with customer service. That being said, I also know people who adore and love them. So I'm kind of reserving judgment for myself. Definitely picking up a Zev. I was playing with them at shot show and I was like, yeah, I got to give these a try. Ever played watchdogs. My name comes from my old CB radio handle. I'm dating myself with that guy. Oh boy. Yeah. Good old CB, uh, talking to, talking to rubber ducky 69. Uh, but yeah, watchdogs, uh, first two are, are, are okay. They're time killers. Uh, they're, it's fun, you know, hacking people and seeing what their private life is like and deciding what you want to do about it. When you see it, I really want to like the prodigy for its price, but something about it keeps me from buying one. I know that's where I was too. Local shop had a used one. So I figured like, you know, how could, how could I go? When I say used, I mean like the dude bought it, didn't fire it and then like traded it back in. So we'll see how it goes. I, I really had nothing to lose picking it up. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have gotten one. Bro, the wheel gun is so broken looking in The Last of Us Part 2. The trigger's in double action position when the character cocks the hammer back. Yes, okay. Really nice running into another gun nerd gamer here. Yeah, that bothers me too. Stuff like that bothers me. And, and it bothers me more in stuff that's going for realism, right? And like The Last of Us, it's like Neil Cuckman, Druckmann uh, was uh, priding himself in, in the realism of, of the violence, all that kind of stuff. And that just really irritates me. It takes me out of it immediately. It, it's almost worse than seeing a movie with like, you know, like a 1911 with a hammer down or something. It's almost worse because I'm like immersed. I'm playing the experience. So yeah. Um, yes, I am still live. Listen, I told the people I'd be here for as long as they are. So although I, enough people are leaving now, like I'm not going to stay here for like five people, but yep, still here. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Favorite music. Oh man. It's I, that's the thing is I, I just love good music. If I had to pick kind of like a, a genre, I'd say like classic rock, classic rock being like seventies rock. I also enjoy eighties rock. I also enjoy, uh, I don't, very, there's very little modern rock. I like, I like the warning. Uh, I feel like they're kind of bringing back good rock. Um, but I mean like, you know, nineties hip hop and rap, always good stuff. Uh, I, like I said, I just like good music. I dip into every genre. Uh, like if you look at my phone, it's a mess from, you know, rap, like, you know, classic rap to like anime openings. It is, it is absolutely insane, but my favorite is definitely going to be the classic rock seventies rock hands down. Thanks for ask, ask, answering all the questions. Love the fact that you're not the normal gun tuber with your other nerdy interests. I, I appreciate that. That's, I was just tired of kind of hiding uh, my interest. Have you seen Dread 2012? Yes. Just watched it, la rewatched it last night. Dude, that one of the last like super good movies that was made. And it's it was so weird that it came out around the same time as The Raid Redemption because they were both kind of the same movie. But I love Dread 2012. Knocked it out of the park. How do people leave when we finally get to pick your brain? All right, hey, if you ask some good questions, like I said, I'm just starting to wind things down. We're winding it down. Uh, I'm not leaving like right now. Uh, Steely Dan versus the Eagles. Uh, how do you make that? How do you make that decision? Uh, I'm going to default to Steely Dan because, uh, Lebowski hates the, uh, I hate the fucking Eagles, man. Uh, <laughs> love me some digital underground. Yeah. Eagles. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Dread is a raid redemption on post-apocalyptic steroids and on a higher budget. Yeah, this the slow mo stuff in that movie was so good. And I just love God, Carl Urban knocked it out of the park. Just on the, the whole movie was just an absolute slam dunk. So yeah. Anybody who hasn't seen Dread, 2012 Dread, watch it. Highly recommend it. And if you watched that and liked it, you would love my books. Very similar kind of uh kind of vibe going on. Ah, uh, so. Carl, Carl Urban is a national treasure. 
Yes, he is. Can't concur. Brett's books good. Yep. Speaking of Urban, did you like the boys? Actually, I'm like embarrassed to admit I haven't watched the boys. Um, I, I will say the best thing from the boys that I saw is when he was, when Carl Urban was walking into, was it like a, like a shot show or an NRA convention kind of thing. And it's like, we don't know. And he like walks to a metal detector and it beeps and he like pulls out his gun and he's like here. And the security guard's like, nice piece. Welcome in. And then he just like reholsters it and walks in. Like, I, I wish that's how those events were. Uh, but no, I, I still need to watch the boys. I've just been, I've been hesitant because I read the comic and I'm like, I don't know. I, I just don't want them to ruin it enjoyed a lot, but I'm out, dude. Great having you here. Thanks for stopping by. Let me play Morrowind. Yes. I need to replay Morrowind. It's been a minute. Uh, you got to watch. Okay. All right. Uh, he's playing Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Carl Urban is playing Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat too. Uh, if any, he isn't the person that I would have cast, but he's a nerd. Like he can, I feel like he can, he can pull it off. Absolutely. Yeah, that's how, that's how, well, shot show minus the metal detectors. Um, honestly, I think it's so different from the comic, more inspired by the comic, but in a good way. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. I just, like I said, I'm worried about the comic being ruined. Carl Urban is Wolverine. I could see it. He could do that. I'm i I'm in the camp. Daniel Radcliffe as Wolverine. Let's go. Harry Potter, Wolverine crossover. All right, I'll give you guys like another, I don't know, like a minute to come up with anything good for me to answer. Good long show. Yeah, it's honestly very rare that I have like a weekend day just open to do this kind of stuff. So uh, I'm not sure if it was the best use of my time, but I'm, it was, like I said, it was so great getting to know you all and it was great being able to chat with you. Uh, nice being able to meet a lot of you, talk to you live, talk to a lot of you in the comments uh, the best I can be cool, but I'd prefer Henry Cavill. I mean, wouldn't we all prefer Henry Cavill as everybody though? Like shouldn't Henry Cavill just play every male protagonist? Uh, first time I've ever heard that. I think he's too good looking for that. I mean, I don't know. Have you seen the trailer for the, oh God, the ungentlemanly warfare that new Guy Ritchie movie is? Yeah, he got gruff in, in this. Look, watch the trailer for the ungentlemanly warfare. I think he, I think he could do it. I think he could do it. Donkey defense counterpoint. Hugh Jackman is a very handsome stud. Reacher, I mean, I've seen the movies, haven't seen the show. I don't know. Show kind of cringes me a little bit. A little cringy. Books are okay. I just, it's, I don't know. It's got, it's got some anti-gun stuff in there that, uh, yes. That's a better way to articulate me saying it cringes me out a little bit. Yep. All right, guys, the, the chat is now devolving. We're, we're, we're losing it. So I don't know. I'll watch a I'll watch a clock for thirty seconds. If anyone comes up with anything good, I'll answer it and keep going. If not, we'll uh, we'll we'll call it a close and I'll go eat some food. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Um, yeah. So definitely shooting the prodigy Sunday should be interesting. I'll I'll keep y'all posted. That video should go live because I'm putting five hundred rounds through it on Sunday, and then later on in the week I'm putting another five hundred through it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, you are so welcome. Thank you for your engagement. I'm really glad that you enjoyed. That's awesome. Uh, man, six stream. I've literally, I don't think I've ever really watched many live streams before. Uh, I just kind of like, okay, well, I'll just do this the way I would want to watch it. So I'm glad, glad it was sick, brah. Great live. Thanks for your time. You are welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm really glad you enjoyed. All right, everyone. That is it for me. Look, I mean, donkey defense's opinion is the only one that matters. All right, guys, really appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoyed this live. Uh, yeah, young Beretta, I would love to chat video games more with you, man. So yeah, I don't know. If you ever want to, if you ever want to BS about, about gaming and the, and the crappy job they do with guns, <laughs> I'm around. Hashtag definitely not a shill. 
Truth, truth. All right. It was great seeing you guys. Hope you enjoyed the live and uh, I will be sure to announce in advance when the next live will be. I'm not sure how frequently I'll do these, but I'll do them often enough that you guys get to uh, get to hang out with me for a bit. So enjoy your weekend. I'll be out shooting tomorrow. Uh, you need your own discord channel. Yeah. Just don't, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Um, hope you all enjoyed the live as per the usual. It was great seeing you guys again and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Brett and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out. I, don't know, I thought I'd do the same clap that I normally do, but it doesn't like end immediately. Donkey Defense, make that Discord happen. Do it. All right, guys. Peace out. See you in the next one. If I can end it. <laughs>